Much love, everyone. <clears throat> Hope everyone's well today. I'm really excited for this uh, stream, guys. So um, fasten your seatbelt. It's going to get interesting. That's all I got to say right now. But uh, let's go into the chat. Say what's up real quick. Let's get this off the screen. All right. Let's pull this up. Let's see what's going on in the chat room. And we're going to take our time here. Much to talk about. Um, I've been changing the title around. So we're officially at, the, at this title here. NPCs, the mind wipe is Earth, a soul recycling center. So we're going to be getting into this, my friends. We got a lot of different videos and obviously we got our own damn minds. So and we're going to speak on what we think about all this. And uh, we're going to crack the code, people. All right. It's time to really wake up. So check it out. Let's go into the chat. Take our time. We got, well, we got um, Jay Phillips with us right now. We're going to say what's up to all you guys and we're going to get started. And um, I got I got as much time as this is going to take. So um, big shout out to Badfish Bear. Hope we're sound loud and clear. We should be clear. All right. Drop the link. Yeah, don't click the, just for now, uh, just um, Christos, click the link just for now, and then we're going to open it up. I just want to take our time, ease into this. So um, much love, everyone. All right, so let, let's, let's get this all queued up, you know. All right. So let's say what's up to you guys, and then we're going to get started with this. Much love. Thanks for joining. I'm really excited about this one. I don't know why, but I'm really excited. Uh, Vividness, big shout out. Vividness, Sherry Ives. Burgos is in the house. Big shout out to Burgos. All right, we're good. Let me uh, let me do this. Oh, we got a new little overlay here for the NPC stream. Okay, so let's do this. Shout out to Christos. Okay, this might be getting in the way. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. Okay, you know what? It might work once we have the panel going. We'll pull this up. Badfish Bear, Malcolm. What's up, Malcolm and Lizo? Sunkist is in the house. Much love, everyone. Hey, we're going to lift each other up. You know, this is good news. We're waking up, and um, we're really asking the right questions, you know? And I think that what we're getting into now is going to be really important, to be honest. You know, these are the things that I've been thinking about my entire life since I was a child. And um, I know it's important. So this is what this is what we do. OK, hold on a second. OK. So shout out to Lizzo, Malcolm, Queen of Swords, Sunkissed. OTW, Three Fingers. Gretchen's in the house. Much love. Jimmy's in the house. Let's share this. Let's share this stream out, guys. Let's get as many people in here as we can. Come on. Let's break our let's break the record uh today and let's have the most watched stream. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be powerful as usual. Big shout out to Jimmy and Eyes of Jade and Lost Geographic. Much love, bro. Good to see you. Hey, everyone goes up to Lost Geographic. This guy. Does the geographic Mandela effects? He came on the last Mandela effect thing. It was epic. And uh, we'll be doing a part two on Wednesday as of now. Shout out to Dean. And we're going to go at this list. We don't want to end the stream until we have 500 Mandela effects on the list. Christos, Dean. Big shout out. GT Mustang. Nathan Sanders. Good to see you. Jeff Hyatt. So, okay, so I missed some. Sorry, guys. Mary, Debbie, I'm a little, uh, little like, I got a lot of energy. The real question is, can a full NPC be rehabilitated? Well, first of all, big shout out to gaming and GT1982. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, what is your perception of an NPC? 
And so we're all going to have a different answer. So we got to put that out on the table first. So that'd be the first question I would ask anybody up here. And we're going to ask ourselves that in a second. Shout out to Truden. What's up, Brian Stavely's in the house. Okay, so I missed some chat. I'm sorry, guys. Mary, call for zero. Big shout out to Brian's in the house. Nathan, everyone, much love. Ralph Russell. So sorry if I missed you. We're going to go ahead and get started. Let's drop a bomb for everybody here, and let's drop a bomb for Christos and Jay Phillips. Oh, it's a little low. Let's let's do that. <clears throat> What's up, guys? So you guys, in the description box, the first two links is Jay Phillips and Christos' uh, channel. So make sure you guys sub over there. Christos activated his channel in the last week. So, um, and Jay Phillips already been doing streams and things like that. Like I said, we're going to be making a network, you know, of people and communities um, coming together. And, you know, so we're, we're doing it. So sub to their channels. And if the mods out there can post the link every once in a while to their channels, I would really appreciate that. So uh, what's up, guys? Peace. Yeah, brother, Thank man. you. Thank you for having me again. It's a beautiful fucking night. Sorry to drop profanity first thing, but I can see the stars. It's not all overcast with a bunch of fake clouds and nonsense. It feels so much better when I can look up and I can see the night sky truly as it is. True that. Shout out to Jay Phillips. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know where to begin, guys. I really don't. But uh, well, let's, let's get our background. Yeah, go ahead. Can we begin with, uh, are you going to become lucid now, J. Phil? Can we start calling you lucid? Since that's yeah, a handle that's that I've, I've started to see. Oh, you're muted, Jay. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, what I'm transitioning to. I'm trying to get off my uh, uh, my government name. <laughs> <laughs> but... uh. Yeah, lucid uh, means to be uh, intelligible or very clear understanding um, because that's what we need in this world is some clear understanding because uh, a lot of us are kind of confused out here and just floating out here, you know, and come on, guys, let's light the fire under the ass and get it on. I feel the power. I feel the energy, guys, of the tr wanting the truth, asking the right questions, and really trying to figure out what the fuck this place is and who the fuck we are, and who the fuck all these people are. You know, what's really going on here? You know, these are the questions I asked my entire life, and you know, this NPC uh, is a fascinating topic for me, and I think we all have a different perspective. But some notes I have over here, you know. Um, First of all, nothing I say is medical advice or any type of advice. Um, so if you want medical advice, seek your whatever, you know, they've been doing a good job. The medical people taking care of us the last three years. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you don't need medical advice from me. They've been letting us know what's right. Right. Exactly. Anyways, going into the light, this whole narrative, there's, there's a, a big kind of a lot going on with different content creators and the thing about this Saturn moon matrix and this soul trap matrix and following the light is some deception, um, having your family members there and, and whatever God you, whoever you call your God, you know, this and that it's going to appear, whatever you're going to be most comfortable with. You know what I mean? Think about that. And, and so is this some deception is, is, you know what I mean? Can we really look at the light subjectively when we die? Is there some, are we, you know, one thing I w really resonates with me lately is that, um, and I've been saying it um, a lot lately, is that obviously the good guys aren't in charge of this world. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, fuck all the bullshit. Let's, what type of vibe do you get? The good guys aren't in control. And when we leave these bodies, how do we know that we're just going to be floating around with God and we're going to be in streets of gold? Everything's going to be hunky dory. You know what I mean? So. How do we know that these guys aren't in control of that? There's like their layers to shatter through to really get out of this um, reality. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to sound negative like I want to get out and I hate this place and 
blah, blah, blah. Like we're trying to make the best of it. Right. But at the same time, these are the type of questions I ask myself and I want the answers to. And I know in my heart and soul that these are the questions we need answered. Right, guys? Exactly. Why do we have a memory wipe? You know? Um, so we're going to get started with this, guys. Um, I have some notes over here, some different points. And um, so when we're talking about NPCs, we have some videos. I mean, maybe you want to give our perspective on what an NPC is. I don't know. Like, the question is, like, do some people don't have souls and things like that? Are some people on autopilot? You know what I mean? Like, I guess I'll give mine. I don't really have really a perspective on it. It's like water, you know? It's like my perspective on things is like water. It goes from solid to liquid to steam. And you know what I mean? You never know what my perspective is going to be on something. So right now it's, um, you know, do some of these people don't have souls like we do? I don't think so. I think that there could be multiple levels of um, your spiritual level here. I think it's a big clusterfuck of people on different levels. I, I'm going to tell you guys this. I think that um, a lot of us come here just to make connections with souls that we are familiar with and that we connect with in these realms. And I think that some people that have given up in this reality, um, I think that some of them, you know, when you make a decision to come here and you want to make it at the same time, we have free will. So I think some people have come here like so I was in San Francisco and I was like looking in the at bird's eye view of everything. I was like, you know, I think that some people are, you know, like I come to this world. I want to make a connection with my soulmate. But during that process, we all have free will. And in that process, something happened to my soulmate. But I don't know. But subconsciously, I do. And so, like, I've kind of given up. So I think that in this reality, a lot of people have have missed that connection with why they came here. And it kind of makes them give up in a way. So it's like a big clusterfuck of things. But um, with the NPC thing, um, I don't know. So that's why we're here. I want to hear everyone's perspective on it. And I think that um, a non-player characters, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to look at. You know, we might look at people as some nine player characters and they're just the backdrop people and the extras to fill in these spaces. But if you were actually with them in their lives and went home with them and hung out with them and their families, you probably think different. You know what I mean? So my perspective is changing. You guys want to um, talk about the NPCs? What do you guys where, where are you guys sitting with this right now? Go ahead, Christos. OK, well. I've said before and I'll say it again. Let's make it simple. Let's make it a dichotomy. There's two types of NPCs. There's the soulless NPC, the soulless backdrop NPC. It's the same thing, not two different ones. And then you have the NPC that has a soul. So there's, there's the soulless and there's the one with the soul. The soulless one is the backdrop. It's the one that you think of the whole simulation theory to go along with. Can you mute? Uh, can you mute up, Jay? Uh, there's a little feedback. My you're bad, good. Bro. No, no, no worries. You're fine. Um, so there's the soulless, and there's the one with the soul. And the one that is soulless is what we would think of as the backdrop NPC, like the fluff of reality. But there's the NPC with the soul. That is someone that has a soul and is sentient. They're they're a conscious being. They're a real person. They're not. a backdrop they're not fluff but their mentality is that of an npc because what they do is they fall in line uh they they go based off of programming and propaganda and basically sure they they think about what they want to eat for lunch and so on but let's say let's say they're a pawn for a political party or a religious group you see, that's that's the programming, that's the propaganda. They they're running off of scripts, like literal scripts. So they are an NPC. You might as well call them almost the backdrop. But we have to remember they do have a soul. There are real people that are NPCs in the sense that they play out how they're programmed to. They don't have independent thought, discernment, critical thinking. They don't think for themselves. They follow the scripts that are given to them and they're unaware of that. So that makes them an NPC, but that doesn't mean they don't have a soul. See these people, uh, at, at one point you could say we were NPCs. Um, 
uh, people like that, they can be retrieved. They can wake up. They can see the error of their ways. Um, and we need to remember that because to label everyone on the outside that maybe is not fully sentient as like a backdrop, soulless NPC, like not even real, I think that's uh, disingenuous. And uh, we could debate like what the ratio is of these backdrop NPCs to the real people that are NPCs and they don't think for themselves type. So I, I hope I made it clear what I was saying there. There's people that are real. They just don't think for themselves. And there's the people that aren't real and they probably don't think at all, if we could put it that way. Um, so there's a, <laughs> there's a dichotomy and uh, you could say there's a level of importance as well. Uh, some would argue that the backdrop is more important. I think it's less important. I think what's more important is the people that we can get back awake, uh, get them back to reality, get them to actually be more conscious of themselves and do think for themselves. So uh, we need to make this differentiation because it's there. And maybe you could even make multiple differentiations and not just the two, but for utility's sake, for simplicity's sake, we should go with the whole two thing in my opinion. Uh, I know other people have their their views on it, and I'll hand it to Jay in a second. But uh, again, I just I feel it's very important to acknowledge what's real and what's not. And I think some of us write off what is real as not real because we we're not being honest with ourselves, and we're just we're too quick not to trust the reality around us. There are real people out there. Sure, they're pawns. Sure, they're sheep. Sure, they're zombies, and they teeter on the edge of being soulless you can you can lose your soul let's not forget that you can go from an npc with a soul to an npc without a soul this is a real thing we you know we see plenty of these people on on tv on the internet so i'll land it there but this is going to be great man i, I got a lot of things flowing tonight and uh we're gonna have to get back to that saturn moon matrix in a little bit uh i got, I got some I, it's gonna be banging Oh, we got a lot to talk about, people, and uh, we're going to be sharing the link shortly. Uh, I'm going to let Jay Phillips go on the NPCs, and I actually want to respond to some of the things that you were saying to give me some more thoughts that I've been thinking about this, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I wrote it down to make sure I remember, so shout out to Jay Phillips. That was good, what you said, man. Appreciate hey, it. shout out. To, sorry for the dogs in, in advance. Uh, they're, they're, they're playing. Um, no worries. Uh but as for NPCs, you know, I, I really don't like bunching up people people as being soulless um, because I know that I would be uh, very offended if somebody would say that I didn't have a soul, that I don't have desires in my feelings. So I, I really like to uh, give people their humanity and uh, their beingness because we're all here. And so, you know, much love to all the people, you know, whether you're doing right or wrong, love you, you know, uh, and, and, and hope, hopefully, you know, humans, not humans, living souls because the living souls we're all here living souls are intrinsically part of this world there is no, there is no way i would let anybody call my daughter soulless there's no way i would let anybody call my son soulless there's no, there's no way I would let anybody call Ian Solis or Christos because there is a part of you that nobody else in the world has. And I'm going to land right there. Much love. Great. I love what you guys said. Um, you know, yeah, someone just mentioned uh, Forever Conscious channel. I just discovered that channel the other day. Definitely some very interesting guy. And I definitely like his channel. 
I drive about 80% of it, but some of the, some of the perspective is just way too negative for me with things. You know what I mean? He kind of leans towards everything's a trap and coming here is a pure deception. And, you know, they, they, they lie. You know, I do agree with some of it though. You know what I mean? I do agree. We're going to be getting into that. We're on the NPCs right now. We have some videos to show. We're going to show some videos with a few different videos of people's perspective. One of them is extremely interesting. We're going to show that first and give live commentary. Um, and, um, you know, you never know. Some people, maybe that, you know, if there's some type of contract or agreement, maybe these people that don't wake up and they don't want to hear it and they just seem lost, maybe that's their path. Maybe that's that's the path that they chose and they're just on autopilot, you know, and maybe some of us are more connected with our subconscious, you know. You never know, like, not everyone's on the same level or has the same thing, you know, the same same goal here. So, um, yeah, it's it's I don't go with the soulless thing. But then again, there are some things that's just like, is there really eight billion souls here? Is there some hive mind souls where souls, you know, um, you know, like spread out to multiple different bodies? You know, like once you're so once you give yourself up, we're all programmed in some way and a certain percent of us is just is programmed. And some of these people are 90 percent, 80 percent programmed, you know, where they don't even think for themselves. So I would just say they're on just a lower level spiritually and um, not connected with their subconscious. And I think that that's our biggest goal here is to connect with that, our true self, you know, who I don't give a shit about this body. I mean, I care, but what I care about is what entered the body and what's leaving the body. And one thing that's fascinating to me is where was I, what was I doing before I entered this body? What type of agreement did I make? Was I tricked? You know, why did I come here? And when I leave this body, what's going to happen? Is there going to be some light and I got to make a decision? You know, I think there's a lot of programming. You got to question yourself when the government and these guys, they tell you what the name of your God is. They tell you this and that while they're poisoning your food, air and water, while they're doing all this shit, giving us fake history and miseducating everybody. And I mean, we can go on and on what these people are doing. These archons, whatever you want to call them, are doing. But one thing that they didn't program us with is you need to follow the light and all this stuff. Now, should we trust them? If they don't give a fuck about our bodies, just like Sunkis always says, they don't give a fuck about our bodies and our health. Um, then why would they think you why would you think that they care about your soul for one bit? You know, so we got to figure this shit out on our own, my friends. So we have some um, starred comments over here. Queen of Swords, what about the ones that sold their soul? They have one, but it's not theirs. Uh, yeah, exact. Hive mind. And we got to remember what we're entering is a, is a total era of NPCs because we're getting into the AI consciousness where we're going to be have a Google search engine in our minds and download information. So they're basically creating a world of NPCs, you know? So this is an important topic. So again, yep. we we all have a different perception, but it's just it's it's a word that you know it's something that's going around. People are talking about it, so we're gonna we're gonna um, entertain these topics. I believe we are soul beings having a human experience. Shout out to Kimba. Kimba NP, NPC share consciousness. They are are either clones or operate on the same wavelength. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I just think that when there's there's a vehicle to experience souls come to experience no matter what the vehicle is no matter what who made the vehicle no matter what right. happened in being no matter what what color the vehicle was first or any of that you know what i mean like none of this matters once we have a vehicle to experience we're gonna do it you know and once we see our people on earth fucking going through shit like i'm going down there too you know what i mean like this is war my friends we came here to fight a war, and it's not the, your typical war, you know? It's a war for our minds, our consciousness, to get out of here. But, you know, when I say get out, it's not just get out of here, but it's also get out of all this tyranny, all this nonsense, all this fake bullshit, all these lies. I, you know? So. Yeah, man, I've been here real quick. Yeah. All I just wanted to clarify, I'm definitely of the mindset of Jay Phillips, Lucid. Um, 
with what he was saying about uh, souls and humanity. See, I know, I know, no one was asserting this about me, but I want to make it clear for the record. I don't. Um, I might have opinions on who I think might not have a soul that might be like a big celebrity or something, but definitely not one to say you know who has a soul and who doesn't. I just know that there's people that don't have souls, uh, but certainly. You know, treat it, treat everyone as human. You know, just like you, no doubt. It's it's the golden order, it's the golden rule. It's uh, it's something that's transcendental, and uh, it's, yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to say that real quick. I'm not calling people soulless or anything, but uh, there are NPCs of a certain stature different than others. I agree, but I'm gonna add on to that and say I agree and slightly disagree in a way because. Um, these NPCs, let's call them, let's call the people that's been going along with things that are obviously not for their own benefit and their families. Yeah. You know, we have these people also um, working jobs and involved with things that affect us in our everyday lives and our loved ones. And they're, they're openly involved with the whole bullshit of, you know, I don't want to say certain things, but you know what I mean? the the nice person next door to you and you think he's cool you know like you know i'm gonna be nice to him well he probably work, he might be working at the water uh plant dumping fluoride in your water for the whole community you know what i mean so do some of these people really deserve our you know our good energy in a way i don't know guys um we carry our own light i am following a sheep back to the pinhole i respect everybody though you know what i mean i'm just saying that you know i don't know i, I still have a lot of bottled up energy for um what's going on with all the, these innocent people out here and and our loved ones and to go the, to with all that's happened in the last two years and to be here you know going into 2023 and and for information to be out there and obvious things going on and for everyone to just act like it's normal and and not be in a big uproar i tell you what with what's been happening if people aren't in an uproar now then we never will then we got to do this on our own people there's not going to be any you know what i mean we got to start our own fucking revolution uh for what's going on guys npcs are a colony they can barely for a coherent sins yet they have a house and newer car usually don't have a job they're using folks as their slaves. So let's get into a video, guys. How about that? Let's get into a video. Big shout yes. out to the chat. Yeah, thanks for posting the links, guys. And we're gonna let let's start this video, and then we're gonna open up the, the link to anybody. One second, let me pull this up. OTW, you better get your ass up here, OTW. Once you yeah, the OTW, link. click the link. I got, I got smoke for you, OTW. Um, let's see here. Sorry, guys. Let me go to my... Okay, here it is. We're just getting started, everyone. Like and share, please. Like and share the video. And uh, anybody's welcome to come up here and give their perspective. And like I said, we're going to be getting into the... Um, we're talking about NPCs, then we're going to move on to this matrix following the light earth recycle center trap thing so um and i'm excited to talk about that and we're gonna try to stay on topic today as much as we can okay we got this video queued up all right let's get into this all right so i found this video yesterday and it's not easy finding finding like a real npc video you got to do the little filters and stuff but we got this right here and we're gonna queue this up and I'll share the link to this video. Shout out to Rye Russ. All right, everybody. All right. Okay, so hold on a second. So we have a few, maybe we'll only watch one. I have a feeling we're only going to watch one of these. Okay. There we go. Let's cue this up, guys. One second. Sorry, guys. Bear with me for a second. Uh, where are we at here? Okay. There we go. All right, everyone. Here we go. 
you exist within a sea of artificial all right this is from flat earth paradise didn't know about his channel but i found this yesterday and then if we need to pause this video guys just let me know and we're gonna play this is called soulless beings of the matrix the truth about real npcs all right let's check this out consciousness temporary things of time let me explain when you cast a movie you must cast extras filler characters background people essentially this artificial consciousness is not here to hurt you or to trick you it serves mainly two functions the first function is to show us who we aren't by acting out and exhibiting inverted aspects of unity consciousness the second function of the soulless beings or backdrop people has been to sustain the third dimensional illusion externally allowing us the one-way ticket towards internal work we have been existing in a construct this is not a metaphor or an exaggeration earth as we know it has been what i term a purgatorial dumping ground earth is essentially a giant net that is here to catch our dualistic purges thus we are displayed every aspect of consciousness that is opposite of our true divine nature this is the only reason why this realm seems so backwards it's not because evil reigns or because we are being held captive quite the contrary all around us are beings who seem like us but they are not of us many are awakening this is headed towards the grand exit portal but most remain asleep unconscious performing the same destructive patterns actions and emotions without a true desire to train themselves this is because most of what we term the masses are not even real i know you might say but i see people everywhere i can talk to them ask them about pasts so isn't it judgmental to write off the majority of people as soulless no it is not this construct is designed for the game players those who are awakening actually have eternal forms that are sleeping dreaming of this state and i have many videos on this topic if you have not seen them yet those who aren't quote waking up can't wake up because their temporary consciousness a part of this overlay akin to beings we project in our dreams a mechanism of a sub and unconscious even yeah as you can talk to them you can hang out with them you might not even realize you're having a dream there are a finite number of us and the rest are simply empty shells acting as let's stop, drop a bomb for gretchen uh, let, me get, let me get let me get this queued up guys sorry i need to fix this we're just getting started here she said i don't agree with this because what's to learn if we don't remember why the mind wipe is like westworld wiping robots to be messed with yeah i have to agree with you and i'm on the fence on that um that's something that that people are really talking about you know but i mean think about this even when i was a kid and we play video games and stuff we were all gamers when we were kids right and we wanted to be in the game right didn't we all like man i wish i could be in this game you know and like but what would be the ultimate game is playing a game such as life some sims life some experience but when you get into the game you don't even know you forget everything so it can make sense both ways but there is something with this mind wipe and um it could be a programming that they put us here and this is a part of the layers we got to shatter maybe it's not supposed to be a mind wipe maybe there's something else going on here you know imagine if we didn't have it how different would our lives be it'd be completely different we live in a completely different world maybe it's not supposed to be like that maybe it's not so bad maybe you know these people are making it sound negative and it's huge deception maybe it's not you know but at the same time like i'm leaning towards something really dark is going on here you know and it's gone too far you know and there's some deception with outside of this when we leave this realm when we're done with these bodies i believe that there's another war to fight 
And I feel like that's what we need to get ready for. We got a lot of things to do here, this and that. I get it. But something tells me that there's something more. And um, these these archons that's in charge, they're in charge of this other realm after we shed this layer, you know? And um, it seems obvious to me, all these stories of near-death experiences and all these things, past life regression, you know? I see a lot of dots connecting with this. So we're going to be getting into this a lot, guys. For sure, this is going to be our new, our new investigation over here. Yeah, no, I hear you, Badfish Bear. I'm with you guys. So anyone could click the link and come up. Let me pin this. Hold on. Anyone could click the link and come up here. Let's replace the pin message. Again, Jay Phillips and Crystals is in the description. Whenever you guys want to say something, just uh, say something. I'll, I'll pause it. Much love filler just like any video game or movie we inhabit similar looking avatars but only a few contain true heart essence we must have non-player characters background people to display to us everything that love is not played out in culture politics in social dynamics and by the way when we play these videos of people and we share perspectives don't take it too serious like oh my god you believe this we're just talking about these things and just free thought and thinking like what's going on here you know why entertaining different perspectives but don't let one that you don't jive with bother you to where we can't you know build together you know exactly like like you said Ian, it's an investigation you know it's like it's like damn ghost hunters right now ghost adventures this is an investigation, so we're not, you know, we're not speaking in absolutes, and we're not claiming these are these are all the facts. Like you said, it's an investigation. We're figuring it out. So this is part of the process of even the people from the chat weighing in, you know, with, with what they have to say, so we can all figure this out maybe a little better by the end of the stream. This could be a big movement uh, going on here, guys. Of people really. Oh no! Go ahead. Uh... Lucid. I, I just I just want to say, uh, you know, people got to be able to change this from the comfort of home. And this is going to sound regurgitated once you guys actually get into the information. Um, stop. Um, but literally, grandma's got to be able to do this from the comfort of home. She's got to be able to change the world from the comfort of home. Mm. Um, what once once more information is is acquired, you'll understand. And I'm just gonna say I stand in truth with my brethren, straight up. And uh, and I'm gonna land on that. That's what I'm saying, people. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, bro, that was powerful. We're going to continue. Check Jay, out shout out to Mary. Right before we, right before we uh, uh, hit play, I just want to say, Jay, you're definitely a sage. And not that I'm like the ultimate judge of who's a sage or not. I know I've called other people sages uh, here in the community. But uh, you're, you're, on, you're definitely on another level. And uh, I really appreciate that about you, man, for sure. Um, this yep. definitely is not my information. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Jesus. Um, this definitely is not my information, and I just, I just agree with, I, I agree with this, and I've, I've done exactly what's about to be unfurled. Um, so. Much love, y'all. Uh, make your own decision, but the truth doesn't fear investigation. The truth does not fear investigation. Mm. And now I'm going to stand in truth with my brethren. Damn, bro. You're powerful. You guys are powerful, man. I'm glad you guys are here for this. Hey, the link's open, guys. Anyone could come up, click the link, and we can, you know, I want to hear what you think about the NPC and stuff. We're going to continue this video, but I hope some people are inspired to come up here, no matter what perspective you have, and let's build together on this. I think this is a really important, you know? 
Like it could be the most crucial information that we can gain here, you know, is, is this type of stuff. So um, anyways, big shout out to the chat. I had 3.5 mind wipes. Last one didn't take properly. Interesting. Might not be a mind wipe per se. Maybe getting out back into a baby's body when the brain hasn't probably developed. We're not able to take all our memories with us. Nah, bro. So, um, yeah, let's continue this. In art, the proclamations that people are so asleep or why won't anybody realize what I'm realizing are very important. The observation that you are expanding in a sea of consciousness that has no intention of expansion should tell you what is actually happening. You are a player in a temporary realm. Not only is the scenery, the cities, the landscapes temporary, but the people are also temporary. Without these filler characters around us, the game players would be the only ones in this construct, and the game couldn't be performed. If we are the main actors, the soulless beings are who we'd term the extras. Are extras important to movies? Yes, yes they are. They are more important... For sure, I'm sorry, I know, you, I know you just started like go right back into it. We don't have to pause too long. I just wanted to say the, the lady in red, uh, the lady in red is an archetype. Uh, and it, it's it's also known as the 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 scarlet whore of Babylon, if we want to go that deep with it. But we don't need to get into all that. I just wanted to point that out. And I'm sure a lot of other people noticed. Uh, you know, there's, a lot, there's a lot of heavy, there's a lot of heavy energy and information that's held with the archetype of the lady in red. If you want to expand on that out. a little bit, you can. If you, if you like, I'm interested. What do you mean, uh, the archetype of Babylon? What what's the symbology with that? Well, I'm curious. Well, well, okay. So let's let's just approach this simply and, and with an imagination here. When we see the lady in red. Um, I mean, what what comes to mind? I mean, we, we got to look at the color red itself. You know, it's the root chakra. It's it's uh, it's enticing to the eye. It's eye catching. You know, there's there's science to prove behind. You know, uh, if you want to look more attractive, or whatever, on your date, wear some red tie, red suit, whatever. Like, the color red has a lot of energy associated with it. And then put it in the form of a dress, and put it with a lady. And, and notice it's it's not super specific. It's just a couple things: red dress, lady. Now, th this archetype is simple. And it, it goes as far back to Babylon, the Scarlet Horror of Babylon that's spoken about. And I, I gets into some strange occult esoteric realms that I have brushed shoulders with. Um, I think Jay Phil probably could actually expand more maybe on the, the, the Scarlet Lady of Babylon. But we'll focus on the Matrix here because they're showing the Matrix. You notice that everyone is in black and white, basically, in the suits and everything like business people everyone looked like npcs and she was an npc too but she looked a lot different than the other npcs and this goes to what i was saying earlier about npc the, the different degrees of npcs that there are see the, the lady in red's on a different tier um uh than the other npcs she has color to her her stride she's going against the grain but she's still part of the system as a whole. And you can look at it in many different senses. There's two sides of the coin. There's the alluring Venus succubus energy, um, but there's also, also the divine, uh, like powerful, you know, getting back into the root chakra, um, woman of fantasy, woman of passion, woman of power, you know, red is blood. So, you know, let me get on camera for this. So there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of different associations with the, the woman in red. But, you know, one of the most basic interpretations, which is still a good interpretation and, and important, is the distraction aspect. NPCs can be distractions, you know? She looked like Marilyn Monroe in a red dress, walking amidst the crowd of NPCs. You know, to, to, to an NPC, like, to, to a certain person's mind, at first, it's like she's not an NPC, but she is an NPC as well. And she's one to watch out for more than the, the others. But there's a there's a divine form of the lady in red and there's also a a corrupted inverted you know scarlet whore of babylon as they call it 
I mean, this gets into stuff with Aleister Crowley and birthing the moon child. Uh, things that are very weird. It's almost like why even talk about it to some degree with some of these things. But uh, th there's a lot of deep significance that can be unpacked. And I only, I only, you know, um, did a little justice with what I was even saying here. But there's a lot of strange things. In fact, I think OTW might actually be uh, one to talk more about that sometime. Not necessarily now. But I think we should continue with the video. I just wanted to point out that there's definitely some quote unquote esoteric uh, occultic significance to the lady in red, her appearance in the matrix, as well as uh, mm. an ancient script and, yeah. and occultist, uh, occultist magicians, just they get into a lot of weird different mythologies, stories, pantheons of gods and goddesses from different times and different cultures. It's a lie. It's it's very deep. It's it's too much right now. But I just wanted to point it out to people. Well, she was <laughs> the was distraction, weird. right? She was the distraction, right? For Neo to turn around and have the agent right up in his face, right? Well, notice how I paused. Notice how I even paused. She, exactly. She was the distraction. You could say she detracted almost from the video and, and what we were, yeah. the NPC thing. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't say anything valuable, but like, uh, you can almost look oh, at no, it. No, 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 no. I'm just like, agreeing with you, bro. Yeah. You can look at it in that trippy sense that the fact that I took the time to stop and acknowledge her and observe her, just like Neo in the Matrix, he stops for a second and he looks at her. Right. Right. Shout out to the chat. We're just getting started, guys. Almost an hour in. We're trust me, we got this gonna be a great show today, everyone. Um, I appreciate if everyone likes and shares. Click the link. Um, anybody's welcome, and but we'll be here a while, so no pressure. But um definitely want more people up here as we move forward in the show. Got a lot of videos. A lot of times we don't get to these and I have a lot of things planned, but we definitely want to smash through these videos. So we're gonna continue this than we think. A movie without extras wouldn't be believable. Likewise, this simulation of consciousness couldn't be sustained without non-player characters moving in the background and even interacting with us in our day-to-day -day lives. These extras act out scripts to project our shadows onto external events and personal dramas, even playing out in our lives to teach us that which remains hidden within ourselves. This is where we get the idea that friends, family, neighbors, coworkers involve us in specific scenarios in order to help release what we aren't releasing ourselves. In these cases, the extras take on the roles of being great mirrors and reflections. After all, extras in a movie are there to support the main characters. These scripts can be personal, but they can also act out in mainstream current events. Everything is here to guide us into an inwards process of divine reclamation. It might not seem that way when we're stuck in the third dimensional perspective in which we think everything is based in master slave think or oppressor victim scenarios. But I implore you to have an open mind about this, an open heart to this. We call these beings artificial consciousness they virtual reality of consciousness and the binary schematic we've been trying to resolve is reflected back to us in full in culture in the unawakened masses we've talked about this in prior videos duality is a binary type of consciousness good and evil is akin to ones and zeros so we are collectively dreaming up this state in order to get rid of duality and in order to get rid of something, it must be reflected in the external, as within, so without. So duality has projected this construct, and therefore the majority of people are built in with the same consciousness and are built in within the construct. Like the living souls exist outside the NPCs. They're a part of this dream state. I'm not saying that NPCs are evil or bad that's not the point of this video. They come in all shapes and sizes. But ultimately, the question is, 
is one going through a process of divine reclamation? And has one been going through this process? After all, that's what this experience is. That's what this construct is here for. It's here so we can resolve ourselves and go home. So if one has not been actively transforming through transmutation, then they are a non-player character. What are they? Sentient programs. That was a bomb drop right there, guys. <clears throat> That's the goal of the system to turn us into the NPCs. Because if you're not getting anything done here on a, on a spiritual level and you're going to be disappointed in yourself, you know, you don't get nothing done, then you're you're now an an npc you know that's their that's their whole goal to have us distracted and, and doing pointless things that really don't matter and and on a spiritual level it we didn't gain really much so with that it's filling you with regret after this life you know give you that guilt to make you cycle back here you know it's a big trap there's many mechanisms to their trap you know so it's multifaceted. Yeah, it's not. It's it's, yeah. it's multifaceted for sure. It, you know, if you had more to say, please go ahead. I was only going to say something short. No, no, no. I was. No. Uh, yeah, I was just wanted to say real quick. I think you know, with what that guy just said in the video, which by the way, I think he's a cool, dude. Like, I, I like the vibe I'm getting from this this guy and his channel. Um, I think some people would probably be kind of quick to judge and say he's on some new age crap or whatever, but. Again, a lot of people will call stuff new age that is just like actual real legit information objectively and uh, or, or just has some value spiritually. They'll say it's new age and a lot of the times it's even more like older stuff and like more ancient stuff being brought back to the surface. So like uh, I just know there's probably not anyone here in our community or communities uh, and especially not in the chat, uh, but I think there's probably some people that might say, oh, uh, what this guy is saying. You can disagree with what he's saying, but to say what he is saying is new age crap. Like, I think there's I think there's substance to what he's saying. I don't think he's just one of these people that is an NPC himself because there's certain NPCs that we could call, quote unquote, new age people that they get too into the rainbow and unicorns. And they're not willing to talk about the spiritual traps and the spiritual warfare like we talk about mm. here with what you're bringing up ian so like um i i appreciate the vibe that this guy is giving but i could see how some people would think that it's it's too um i don't know like airy fairy uh type well some of, of it i, I wasn't you, resonating with I, so, but that was just I'm, dropping a bomb for that last song but some yeah, of the yeah. things um i don't resonate with the me neither you no know, this is i like you know, it like, but i don't resonate with all of me yeah. and you know what i mean like no yeah I'm see that the, individual yeah. That type of stuff, I agree. I agree exactly. That stuff, I was like, okay, I see where people could kind of pin them with the new age thing. But uh, the other stuff he was saying, exactly, I think we need to give credit where credit is due with you know these individuals and this content, and this knowledge. Well, they got to stop calling it new age. So if you, it's like, this is old stuff, a lot of this stuff. This is old before religions. All this stuff is, you know, people have picked up these practices. This predates religion. I might talk about with this guy, but what people call new age and technically the religion that the enemy has gave us is the new age stuff, guys, because a lot of this stuff that we get into predates the religion. So what's technically new age? Yeah, some of this little alien stuff and <clears throat> the star, you know what I mean? All that weird stuff. Yeah, that, that's new age stuff to me. Guy, I, I kind of take it personal when I, I have a practice or something that I jive with that predates the religion, and you're gonna call it new age. That's ridiculous. My bad, bro. You're good. I was just saying, I know what you're talking about that alien stuff, Gaia, Gaia TV, or whatever the hell it's called. And they talk about the Palladians, and they got all these little goofy animations. And it's just like, oh my goodness, this is there is new age crap out there for sure, but like. You know, when people talk when people talk shit on yoga or like astrology and say that's new age, that's when it's just like, man, you you your people are tripping. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You've been fed this indoctrination by pop culture of all oh, the people that read your palms or the crazy girl that's into astrology and thinks everything happens for the wrong reasons and all that crap. Like people get the mm -hmm. wrong idea of what new age is for sure. But yeah, no, I I'm definitely on the same page. Uh I, I liked what he's saying at the end, but what some of the whole, 
some the manner in which he's speaking, I don't like some of it. But overall, mm. the, the content of what he's saying about NPCs and there's different levels of NPCs and like them waking up. He's calling it like a process of finding their divine or whatever, however he's saying it. I think it's a little extra, but the content of what it is at the core, the meat and potatoes is good. And I think I can agree with well, uh, some of it, yeah. Yeah, sometimes just people aren't on our frequency. They might be saying something amazing. I mean, is this just me? But someone might be saying something just perfectly fine and loving and nothing wrong with what they said, but it still bothers me. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are people like that, let's be real. So we're not gonna all agree on you know, sometimes people, I'm going to rub people the wrong way. You're going to rub people the wrong way. You know, I'm going to show somebody talking about something and some people are like, no, nah, this guy's trash. But, you know, just take it all in and and make up our own damn minds, you know. Spit out the bones. Spit out the bones. Yep. Let's drop a bomb for Raven. All right. They can move in and out of. Wow. Let's check. Wait. They can move. In and out of any let's, software. Let's, let's rewind this a little bit. Okay, check it out. They are a non-player character. What are they? Sentient programs. They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are... So we got our NPCs, we got us, and then we got kind of like the Agent Smiths in the program, these hive mind little agents, you know? Because when we look at these different people, we're seeing, you know, Klaus to the swab, Bill to the gates, all these guys. Like, for me, it's some like hive mind system. These aren't like one of us, you know? I really don't think so. So we're, de we're dealing with many levels of of types of souls here, you know, or whatever you want to call it. Are everyone and they are no one. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. This may be difficult to digest. To say most people are dead would mean many of your loved ones, friends, family, teachers, favorite musicians are not organic forces like you thought, but are a part of a complex AI consciousness. A soulless being appears as full of life as anyone, but we're dealing not with a complete person as we think of on all levels. We're dealing with something that suggests a constructed reflex machine, which can mimic a true being. An organic portal can seem to have creative ideas, moments they hold dear to their heart. But at the end of the day, their function is to consent to and sustain the energy extraction matrix. Their AI software dictates that their life will be focused on material, monetary, personal, and fleshly interest. The 20th century Russian esoteric author Boris Maraviv wrote in his work Gnosis that there are two types of humans, Adamic man and pre-Adamic man. This is how he classified the organic portals, or soulless beings, and the living souls. Moravif writes, the scriptures contain more than one reference to the coexistence of these two humanities, which are now alike in form, but unlike in essence. The anthropoid race are the descendants of pre-Adamic humanity. The principal difference between contemporary pre-Adamic man and Adamic man a difference which is not perceived by the senses is that the former does not possess <clears throat> the developed higher centers that exist in the latter, which although they have been cut off from his waking consciousness since the fall, offer him a real possibility of esoteric evolution. When we're in a dream at night, the environments and the people are all manifested through our unresolved inner that is playing out in a dream. That's what dream time is for at night. That which we haven't solved during the day, it ends up projecting outside of us. So sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's scary or disheartening. But when you wake up, the environments and even the characters in those dreams, they're nowhere to be found. So in a dream, 
your inner tension, turmoil, excitement, all of the polarity, the ones and zeros of your own consciousness, it manifests as people you can interact with. And unless we become lucid in the dream, we'll just accept that they are the same thing that we are. And there's really no separation. So you mentioned, you know, it, this concept may feel as if I'm separating myself from others because I always see others as a part of myself. And hey, you know what, guys? We're going to jump to another video right now. We're going to come back to this one. I actually want to go to open your reality. I should have opened with this one. We're going to come, we're going to focus on the NPC thing. Let's get to this 10 minute video. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. I just Yo, feel like we need to jump. That I sounds like a it. vibe. I'm feeling the vibes. So let's I, get into I, this. Yep. This actually, this guy is how I discovered Brian Stavely. I don't do archaics anymore, but I discovered him through that. And a new guy the other day, I like his channel, um, Open Your Reality. I the, What I like his channel, I don't really jive with him a lot on a lot of things, but he interviews some really interesting characters um, all the time that I really like a lot, you know, or open my mind to a lot of things. Or talk about things that I like to, you know, hear people talk about. So be sure to open your reality. I'll share the link to this. Let's start this one. This one's called Who are the NPC in our world? Non-player characters explained via simulation theory. This is from 2019. This is a good one. And right before uh, you start, right before you start, Ian. Yeah. Good. I just wanted to point out something funny real quick. I, I hope someone else noticed, other than me, what that guy was wearing in the video we were just watching. <laughs> no, I didn't. Or whatever with with the lady. I that, that was killing me. I was just like, man, like this dude should be appearing on a magic carpet or something. Like, yeah, it, Devin. Yeah. Devin's kind of. My bad, guys. I honestly, I you're, listened you're to the video good. at at work, and I was like, okay, we'll check this one out. It wasn't I don't know, bad. Maybe, no, no, it no, wasn't it, bad. It, it actually just, gets better, but yeah, no, I, I feel oh, you yeah. on that. I, I wasn't, I would, no, I didn't like dislike the video or the content. I, I liked it. It was just the character. He, he was a character. I'm not hating. I'm not yeah. hating on him. It's just I, I like. No, the, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, Devin yeah, Magic. Kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah, you feel, <laughs> you feel me? Thank you, Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah, I'm not feeling I it. Get you. I'm not feeling the outfit either. <laughs> I'm joking. We'll continue. <laughs> We love all this sort of done, you know? Welcome to Open Your Reality. A lot of you have been commenting about non-player characters, also known as NPC. In the gaming world, NPC is a character that is played by the... This character does not have free will and is not conscious in the same way an avatar is when being played by a human. As an example, in World of Warcraft, if we are playing alone, then our avatar is the only character in the game being played by an actual consciousness. Sorry, but the NPC conversation feels like spiritual narcissism at its core to me. I got smoke we? for that. Come yeah, up here, come up here and talk too. to us. Yeah, yeah I want you to click yeah, the link and come up that. here, you know? What do you mean? Elaborate a little bit more. I disagree. And you know, well, let's, let's, let's people, let's not get hung up on a three letter abbreviation in the, um, you know, let's not get hung up on these little things in the titles and, and little pieces in the videos that we show and, and, uh, you know, entertaining a perspective and, and just stick on that and let that affect the whole vibe. Let's take the whole package, really collect the data that's going on here, and then make it. We're not being narcissists and all that. No, 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 no. You're wrong. But uh, definitely click the link, come up here, and maybe elaborate on what you're saying. He, he was probably not saying that we are, you know, acting like narcissists, but, like, I think the sentiment, nonetheless, yeah, I'd like to hear more because I understand, I think, where he's coming from, but I would definitely still have some smoke for it, so... Yeah, hit the link, please. Out only exists within the, the game, haters. but our consciousness is making all the choices for it. All the other characters in the game are being played by the computer and are thus NPC. Another example can be seen in the Matrix movies. All of the agents, including Agent Smith, are actually NPCs that were created by the AI running the Matrix. 
their specific purpose. We're going to come back to that. I don't like the thought of thinking ourselves as better than others, but I'll be open and listen. Nobody did any, no one even said that we're better than others. You know, no one's, no one's even saying that, you know, but we see the world, we see people. And obviously a lot of people are programmed and they're lost and they're dangerous. A lot of them. So making a obvious, um, collecting the data on people and making an obvious assumption of, you know, where they're at spiritually, mentally, and all that um, is that's what we do. You know what I mean? And a lot of these people are dangerous. Let's that you know what I mean? They've turned our own people, our own family against us. So I'm not saying I'm better than you. That's not what we're doing here. So you're jumping to the conclusions when you don't even you haven't even really watched what we're doing here. We haven't even came with that perspective or that vibe at all. We're just entertaining a popular topic right now in PCs. Is you know what I mean, and we're gonna throw in our perspectives, what we're thinking about it, and talk about a lot of things. Like, if if this is probably the most important thing to talk about out there right now, topic. If the if the people that are in charge of this realm are in, are then again in charge of the other realm when we leave this body, there's some deception trap thing there or something. Things that we need to be aware of. What more important thing can I tell you? You know. So. We're not coming from that perspective. So um, I'm not going to entertain a lot of the, the negative stuff and trying to paint a certain light. No, I don't. I don't. I'm it's, not with that. It's, so. just, it's just food for thought, guys. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, for me, there's a lot of content created. You know, you sometimes you got to throw that. Not, not that that's my thing, but you got to throw certain titles. Don't get hung up on the title. Don't get hung up on certain things, people. You know, uh, take a, the whole package, you know, or come up here and bring something to the table. This is to hunt down and terminate any rogue programs within the simulation. They are guardians of the matrix, protecting it from anyone or anything that could be. Then again, with the NPC thing, we're going to rewind. We're going to start this over with the NPC thing. Everyone has a, their own perception on it. You know what I mean? Did you listen to mine? Did you listen to theirs? And then if you ask everyone in the chat, what's your perception of an NPC? Everyone's going to have a different answer. So it's one of those, you never know what someone's answer is going to be. For me, I don't think necessarily some of them don't have souls or I'm better than them. I'm not coming from that perspective, but some of us are more advanced spiritually and more in touch with our consciousness and more aware of the good, bad, and ugly in this world. That doesn't make me better than them. It just you know, call it what you want to call it. Some people would call it that. I don't call it that. But if I did, I wouldn't be wrong too. If I said, you know, I wouldn't use that word. I'm better than, but I could say I'm more in touch with my spirit. I'm more aware, but I'm not going to use the words. I'm better. But then again, I could use those words. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that word. That's like bullshit to me. So we were all there at some point, you know, we were all, we've all been there. But these people are, a lot of these people are dangerous. Come on, guys. All right, let's continue this video. Let me rewind a little bit. Agent Smith are actually NPCs that were created by the AI running the Matrix. Their specific purpose is to hunt down and terminate any rogue programs within the simulation. They are guardians of the Matrix, protecting it from anyone or anything that could reveal it as the false reality it is. Even without knowing the agents are NPC, we can guess by their behavior, dress, and singular objective that they lack consciousness. They are sentient programs, but they do not have consciousness, a soul, or free will. But how about our world? Our world is a simulated reality, kind of like the Matrix, do we have non-player characters in our world? The answer is yes, but it may not be in the way you think. I know a lot of you wonder if a sizable percentage of the population are NPC. I have to tell you, I don't believe this is the case. Even if I was wrong, to my knowledge, there's really no way of proving whether someone is NPC or not. So, uh, wait, hold on a second. Let me organize this. So to um, 
the perilous. It's all good. Um, but I'll say what I was. No, I, I'm. I don't think it was an accusation. I accept your apology. I'm glad you said it because then I can elaborate on this to people that are thinking that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I was gonna say something, but I'm gonna wait. Tell you, I don't believe this is the case. Even if I was wrong, to my knowledge, there's really no way of proving whether someone is NPC or not, despite the claims that there are tests for it. I've heard it said that if someone does not have internal dialogue, they're definitely a non-player character. Okay, but consider that some people think in images and some... So that's an interesting thing. If they don't have internal dialogue, they're an NPC. So we don't know, you know, like in some of these people that are super programmed and like just seem like they're lost, you know what I mean? But maybe they're on the right track for them. You never know, people. Maybe people are on, on a specific journey here and they chose not to wake up. Like us waking up them up to everything that we're aware of is actually doing them a disservice. Maybe that's why when we try to wake some people up, they're just like, they have this governor in their minds and they freak out and they don't want to hear it. You know, we see it with our own family members, friends, people around us. We see it with a lot of people. Maybe it's just not their path. Maybe they're on a timeline that they can't break. And if we were to affect that timeline, that would affect their spiritual journey. So I'm like, I would never judge someone's journey like, oh, you're doing the wrong thing spiritually. You know what I mean? Because you never know. So. Some don't have internal dialogue going on in their heads, but that doesn't conclusively prove they are non-player characters. I've also heard it said that most famous people and celebrities are NPC, even Donald Trump. Again, I'm not on board with that. Although the one politician I'm sure is an NPC is Dick Cheney. Have you ever seen that guy? He's the former vice president of the United States. Or at the same time, entertaining all perspectives, or this is a whole game. This is a whole program being played and all these program people. It's not their journey and they're stuck in some karmic cycle here. You know what I mean? Powering the system. You know, that's more of the vibe I'm getting from this stuff. You know what I mean? And that's their goal is to have us not do anything spiritually, like really for us to be really satisfied with our life here and being so unsatisfied. Hence, uh reborn 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 we don't know how many times we've been here it might be our first life it might be our thousandth life and we just stuck in some matrix you know it's possible i'm not gonna lie that's the vibe i get in a way you know um sometimes uh, yeah. it's not always i firm but sometimes oh yeah you got it bro yeah um you know Think of all the dreams you've had, everybody. I mean, how many dreams have you had since you were growing up? Ian, how, how's the, how's the uh, dream dreaming thing going? Have you tried the uh, the uh, water thing, and the cinnamon? And what was I got to try one? that. What was that again? Uh, we were talking it. about oh, some cinnamon with water before I go to bed. Yeah, maybe even some nutmeg too. But, uh, but I was, you know, you, like I've had dreams since I was a kid, man, about all these different lives. Stop. I've had dreams about all these, all these different lives that I've had. And like, you know, there's gotta be something to it. The astral realm is your mind realm. So what's the connection Hmm. These are the questions I've been asking since I was a child. You know, this is the question, the things that I want to wonder about. Like, yeah, great. You know, I can get a job. I can do this and that. But like, why am I really here? You know what I mean? Am I here to just do that and just collect this material objects? Like, I never jived with that stuff. You know, I was thinking outside the box. Shout out to Lizzo. Let's drop a bomb for. You. Good evening. How are you doing today? Thanks for coming up here. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, yep. I have, I have a, I have a confusion with the NPC thing. Is um, if I saw a bus load go, a bus crash, yeah, 
I've got to save everybody on there, NPC or not. So NPCs will be with us right till the end game, right till the very end when the rapture comes, right? Everybody together. Is, so it, the NPC kind of gives me the impression that we're, are we out for ourselves? Because we've got, how would you distinguish at that last moment who is NPC? I hope that's coming across all right. I couldn't type it. It's too complex for my little brain. Well, I, I think... Get that? I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a good way to approach it would be is just to have a rule of thumb to to kind of a rule of thumb where you just... You regard basically everyone as also being just as human and as... Because we've all got souls, as Lucid said. Yeah, we've all got I, souls. and they're... The, the, the beings that quote-unquote don't have souls, like ultimately we... We can't truly know that. We can wonder maybe about some of the celebrities and there's the evidence of them doing messed up things, you know, but like ultimately, yeah, it's when talking about NPCs, it doesn't mean that we need to start valuing less the people around us, you know, because ultimately we're not making the judgments of who's an NPC, but we're just discussing what is an NPC. Yeah. It's not like we're going to go look for people and say that's an NPC more of just and we gotta remember you're talking about like backdrop npcs you're talking about like fake people no soul there are npcs there are people we call npcs that do have souls they just don't think for themselves but I uh, felt they're, so, they're very programmed i i'm sorry to interrupt uh i felt soulless i mean as i said the other week i i felt i woke up by default i was playing that scarlet woman for a long time in my life um occult stuff as well very dark extremely dark and mm -hmm. i i the, another thing i wanted to type was uh could there pe be people like me that have been woken up um to disrupt yeah that's why i'm glad i'm asked i'm saying this live because it re redefines to me that i am i really must be kosher if that's a proper word to use in this uh, awake and not an npc but i do have doubts that i am i being used by some dark magic somewhere you know i hope i hope, I hope i'm not you know but i have to question it live here to back myself up and say go for the courage of that at least saying it because i would hate to be being used you know i hope i haven't put myself in a doghouse or the naughty step for that but i had to say it you know well no, to elaborate no. on on my NPC thing, I think that we're all an NPC to a certain extent. Is what percentage are you? I'm probably eight percent NPC. You know what I mean? Some people okay. are ninety-five percent. So yeah. when you're not thinking for yourself and you're just kind of on autopilot in a way, and yeah. um, so I don't know. For I think we're all programmed in some way. We all are connected with this system in some way and a certain extent. Even us here. And it's just how much are you, you know? And sometimes when you're too connected to that, when you're when you're really not in tune with your true self, you actually become a danger. And you're now you're a, a, a you're you're standing with the enemy as well. So yeah. we, we can't lose sight. Like some people are great, just like like I said, the person that lives next to you, oh, they have kids, they're so nice and cuddly, but then maybe one of them works at the water plant, they're throwing fluoride in your water, mm. or one of them works for the C to the D to the C, or it's uh, you know, whatever, Bill Gates' daughter or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's Look, as here. I say, I I I'd love to help anyone get out of here. I might not make it myself because of my sins, but I would love to help anyone get out of this this game. And I, 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 I meet my maker and have my word with him. He'll tell me if I'm bad or, or good, you know. But I, I mean good. I mean well. You know, I just got confused for many years as you know, I'm trying to clear I, up now. Yeah. You know, ultimately, ultimately, we are the ones to judge ourselves. And it's such a powerful realization when you get there. Um, you know, I, 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 I've done some things in my past which I don't even associate with myself anymore. But like I have, I have past selves that were like very, very devious, and like I didn't know at the time how dark I was going, how dark the path was that I was going down. Like I, I've done things that I've now forgiven myself, and I've, I've, I've changed who I am. But I, I've definitely had past versions of myself, and that's a good way to look at it. Like it's a past version of yourself. It's not your, it's not even your past self. It's a version. 
Um, and it, it's not it's not who you are, it, who is who you were at one point, and that's not going to define us ultimately, unless you let it define you. Because there are some people that have very heavy guilt with certain things they've done that they take to the grave. You know, it's 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 a heavy topic, but you know, ultimately it goes down to like if you forgive yourself or not. But yeah, I don't, I, I know what you're saying, but yeah, you, what what you're coming up here with and contributing, yeah, like you. You have not sinned. We, we have not sinned. I sin. Maybe sin's not the right word. I know what you meant with sin. I don't know I have quote unquote sinned. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but I, nothing. I don't oh. think anything drastic. Sorry to talk over you. Mm-hmm. Nothing drastic. You know. Mm-hmm. Can I say right. one thing? Just a talk. <laughs> Can I say one thing? Yeah. yeah. Um. You, got it. you cannot be self-loving and God-fearing at the same time. Thank you. Okay. That's why the Lucif- the Luciferian vibe is also important. I'm not about trying to be like extreme or, or hyperbole right here, but like it's is literally it's just the, you have to self worship to a certain degree. That's what occultism gets into. But it, you know, people go a direction with it where it becomes bad. You're hurting others for self gain and such. So like, I'm not one of those people. But uh, I really like that you said that because a lot of these religious types, you know, they're quote unquote God fearing. If you really look at that phrase for what it's even saying, it's like a horrible phrase, and it should tell you right there what's going on. It's just not, not, cold, not pure. I mean, what type of goodness. God is going to want to put the worst feeling inside of you? Fear, fear me. Come on, guys, please. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, and 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 spirit, you know, I've said this before, spirit is the the breath that you have so to say someone has spirit is to say they're alive you know what i mean but uh you know there's 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 certain things that are going on with this society that that don't jive with me um you know blacks blacks law book and ballantines everybody Go go research that. Um, and anything you hear in the in this stream, don't take our word for it. Don't take my word for it. Go research it for yourself and make your own decision. Fear does not. Uh, it's not fear that. Nice one. Yeah. There you go, bro. I've asked my. I've, you've answered my question. Thank you very much. I'll bail out. Let someone else come in. You know, I hope oh, you're welcome to in. hang out all you want. You all, yeah, you can stay here. Okay. Much love. Back to yeah, the video and I'll, I'll, well, I'll stay up, but I hope some more people come up. You know, it's, uh, yeah. At, Where's at, everyone you, at? Where's like OTW yeah, and everyone else? Weird. I was a pussy when I first come up. I was scared, and it's very calming. Yeah. You're, made, you're made welcome. Yeah. Shout out to Fulcrum Goddess of Integrity and everyone in the chat. Much love. Um, we're going to continue the video, guys. In case you didn't know, in any event, the reason I don't believe there are a sizable number of non player characters walking around in the world is because it defeats the purpose of this virtual reality. The point of it is to allow our consciousness to evolve. If the computer that simulates our reality was playing millions of people, what purpose would that serve? This virtual reality was specifically set up for billions of different individuated units of consciousness to log into an avatar and play the game. By interacting with each other, it increases the quality of the game and forces us to make choices that either evolve or de-evolve our level of consciousness. One more thing about this. We've all met people who appear soulless. It seems like they have no feelings or personality. Well, a lot of people don't show you their true selves and like to appear as mundane as possible. The perfect example of this is anyone who works at the DMV. (laughs) Just joking. The main point is that we can easily be fooled. So that's my reasoning why I believe the world is not filled with non-player characters. Now, I said earlier that NPC do exist in our world but they often show up in a way you wouldn't expect. Almost all NPC exist as a result of extreme trauma, pain, or imminent death. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to let Tom Campbell explain it in more detail. If you watch my videos, you know who he is. 
But to give I a minute of background, this, Tom is a scientist, consciousness researcher, and has formulated an entire theory on reality. Uh, this guy here right now. Okay. You'll see. What he called MBT, or My Big Toe, with toe an acronym for Theory of Everything. He devised his theory after four decades of exploring the simulation, what he calls the greater consciousness system, by you using this his guy? intent to travel around it. What's up? You mean this guy that he's t that he's talking about, not the not the channel uh, owner? You're talking about the this Campbell guy? He's yeah, I don't agree or... with a lot of the channel owner guy says too. Um, <clears throat> but I just like um, you know some of the stuff. But um, the okay. this Tom uh, Campbell guy, what he says about. Um, You'll see when, you know, the creator is going to be re replaces us with the NPC character when we're going through oh. certain things. So we don't experience it. I don't agree with that. I'll, 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 I'll we'll react to it after they present it. Real this quick. is the same Definitely. thing that the Buddha was Definitely. capable of as our super advanced Indian yogis and other beings who have reached the highest level of spiritual attainment. Tom is unique, though, because he's combined his knowledge of science and physics with his inner explorations. So here's Tom on when the simulation decides to create non-player characters. If there are children or animals or any consciousness that is suffering some kind of a, um, a horrible experience that is just going to end probably in their death or at least uh, is going to uh, create a lot of fear in them, a lot of trauma in them. So the system, in order to minimize that, tends to step in and replace those characters with an NPC, often just temporarily. Okay. In other words, uh, I, I think I that. made that comment first when there was some parents who had like five or six children and they tortured all their children. They burn them with their cigarettes. They, uh, you know, they wouldn't feed them. They just did all kinds of horrible things to these kids. Okay, and somebody asked me, how could the system, you know, allow that to go on? Well, one, the system isn't playing with these pet people and arranging them and making them think and do what he wants them to do. There's free will. Some people are just ugly people, and it doesn't interfere with people's free will. Your free will is sacred. If the system doesn't like what you're doing, it's not going to come in and just run over you. Okay? And it's not going to run over them either. You have to let those kinds of ugly choices play out the way the people are making the choices with their free will. At all. But what the system can do is take those particular and so that's children. that's the whole thing. The whole point of even being here, well, the whole point of even talking about these topics and even showing something I disagree with is to spark a conversation, you know? These conversations that we get into and connect, it works in mysterious ways, you know? So sometimes people are just hung up on the NPC thing and then they, they lose everything else that's going on. But sometimes, you know, we got to show this to, it's all about sparking up a conversation. I don't want to sit here and just watch these guys. I want to get into a conversation about this with everybody and hear other people's, that's why we're here, you know? So anyways, we'll to, we're to let him explain his bullshit theory real quick. Children who were in pain and suffering and replace those with an NPC. In other words, he plays those children themselves. So that IUOC, that individuated unit of consciousness that is playing that child doesn't have to experience all of that pain that is prolonged that those kids, I think were suffering for, for years. So, Right. They didn't have to suffer all that. Otherwise, you'd end up with a damaged consciousness that might take another 20 you know, lifetimes just trying to get over that trauma. You see? So that's not profitable for the system. And it'll do that just the same for a, you know, for a groundhog or a, or a fox or a cow as it would for a person. So what about all the people that I know that went through severe trauma in their life and they had to live through it? They didn't replace them with the NPC people all over the world. So he's saying that once you're going through severe trauma, the the creator, the simulation um, cares about you. So it's going to replace you with an NPC character. I don't agree with that. That's ridiculous. It's just not productive 
to allow that sort of suffering that would cause that kind of damage to a consciousness to go on. So those children were really not there. Their bodies were there. They may have spoken and, and reacted and so on, but the consciousness, their IUOC, was not being traumatized. That's just the general way that the system will work in order to help the whole system grow up. That way, the nasty things that negative things do don't cause damage that goes on for a very long time. That doesn't mean they can't cause any damage. It's just that it, it's when it gets to this point of being excessive, then the system tends to step in in those cases. Okay, and it's that's true of any consciousness. It's also true if you fall off a high building, you know, or if you jump off a ten-story building, you will lose consciousness before you hit the ground. I don't like this. You guy. will not experience splatting and uh, you know the excruciating uh, you know pain or impact or whatever. You'll just lose consciousness before you hit, because in that situation, the situation's terminal, and there is no advantage to the system in helping you grow up to have you experience the splat. So you exit before that happens, and that's true of all horrific things. Be that animals in a, in a fight, you know, if you get a, a small critter cornered by a bunch of uh, angry wolves, the same thing happens. When you get to the end game, that entity just disappears before it gets- Yeah, that dehumanizes everybody. Yeah. What's that? Majority of Oh, painful, really ugly. They disappear. About what? What he just said? <clears throat> well, that dehumanizes everybody. That I mean, that takes everybody out of the game, and that's bullshit. Because I know I've suffered. I know I've experienced trauma, and I know mm -hmm. everybody here has experienced trauma and suffered. So that's total bullshit. Yeah, I think right? it's total BS too. Am I yeah, understanding I that right? Disagree. Yeah, I know you're 100% right. That's my point is I've suffered trauma too. And a lot of people I know have suffered trauma and they're still living and they had to go through it. The creator didn't replace them with some NPC and, and help them out, you know? So I think it's ridiculous. Fear in the sense that they're no longer experiencing all of that. I think Tom's words were very enlightening, not just about NPC, but also about trauma and death. Um, it's kind of comforting to know. We got that another our one. We got another one here. And then if anybody wants to listen, guys, if anybody wants to talk about the NPC, definitely click the link and come up here because I really want to get into this um, Earth Trap Matrix thing. Oh, wait, one second. Let's see here. Oh, we got yeah, I'm, re I'm, re I'm I'll that? be ready to dive in. I'll be ready to dive into the uh, the Saturn Moon Matrix and and uh, recycling, soul recycling stuff. Whenever, That's what I'm more interested in. But stuff. yeah, no That's rush. No rush. I don't want to cut the short interested in and that's why we're really here for the most part the npc is not actually something that i'm too interested in i want to talk about but it's something that's it's a little clickbait ish it's going to get more people in here to join see join the community like you know this stuff works in mysterious ways i felt like i needed to add this to this whole thing but it's definitely not going to be the highlight of the stream is the npc talk we're going to move on from this quickly guys and get into the mean potatoes of why we're here all right so but if anybody wants to talk about the npc thing click the link and come up here because we're going to be done with this hold on a second let me one second guys oh that's me my bad dude i don't remember this you know maybe we should move on from it let's check this video i don't remember it What else did we have on the bill? The bill? The uh, the past life regressions. Uh, you pre mean about the NPC? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we're going to be getting it. Maybe the volume's too low on this one. Let's see. Yeah, we got, we got more videos. 
questions relating to the awareness. Is that low to you guys? Or how they think on a subconscious. Yes, it's low. It's low. Yeah. The results were quite. Yeah, we're not. That's not going to work, guys. Wow, I appreciate the little uh, doot to doot skeleton uh, trumpet players that popped up on the screen. That was <laughs> yeah, fun. <that's> cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I, uh, I want to move on from. I mean, the NPC thing. It's whatever. I think that we can also I've, get back into it. I want to get into this Saturn Moon Matrix fucking weird shit. That's uh, this whole thing. Not weird, but this is an important talk to me. Uh, the Soul Trap. Um, who are the Archons? All this stuff. I say we get right into it, okay? And so um, let's do it, guys. Fuck it. Let's. Hell yeah! No, that's that's the flow. Get right into this. We're gonna we're gonna follow the vibes. My vibe saying move on, but if anybody wants to come up here, we can always. We're gonna be circling back to the NPC narrative, but you know, there's value. Yeah, there's there's value to the NPC stuff. Um, I know I've said what I wanted to say about, you know, the NPCs that are backdrop, and then the NPCs that are real people quote unquote um there's there's definitely value to the conversation and the knowledge but i i, I agree I, I think the vibe is taking us a different direction at this point after everything we've said and some of these video videos that we've seen shout out to jay west and everybody so basically um there are communities and a lot of people that saying you know following the light is some trap that we're in some recycle center on earth and we're just following the light is just you following you know to basically be reborn again and it's like some trap with this whole afterlife thing and i, I want to get into that and um some things i actually feel a little bit some things i i'm not feeling but then again there's only one truth and people think that they have it but we really don't know but i think it's important that we need to look into this you know? There's def yeah yeah like you said we're investigating you see there's a discernible objective uh, analysis that we can have and we can draw legitimate conclusions it doesn't mean that we believe we we have all the facts or that we have the the utmost most accurate view of this reality but you know from all these different things that we know people know about and talk about like the Saturn Moon Matrix the NPC stuff. Uh, all of these things, there's there's value to this stuff, no doubt. And um, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, yeah. I, well, I'll take it away, Ian. Let's put it this way, and this is the way it is. If you have a channel, um, if I just did um, escaping the soul trap matrix, not following the light, if I just did a stream saying that, we would probably have 35 people in here instead of 70, and we probably get half of the views that I'm going to get on this thing. But by you know, addressing the NPC a little bit, get people's perspectives, changes, um, you know, who's going to, you know, new people in the community and things like that. So, you know, being totally honest with, with all that. So anyways, let's get into this video here. This is going to be very interesting. This here is from um, 434. I just saw this today. Um, I just saw this yeah, have, today. I was like, we need to have you. Yeah. Sorry, uh, have you ever seen his channel before? Have you ever seen this dude's videos? Never. Before? I have. It's this is this is interesting. I'm curious. Well, uh, I'm curious okay. what people will think of this. I've seen some good stuff from him before. Okay, we'll subscribe for now. Okay, Jay got knocked off. He'll be back. I can, let's go through the chat for a second. We're gonna start this video. I can't see a billion billion year old Earth population. 1 billion in 1900 and then 7 billion in 2000 who wiped us out why how often yeah that's a good question there you go i'm going to save that comment try to stay positive and hopeful but we can't be in denial we need to prepare ourselves the best we can with the information we have at this point yeah let's there you go yeah Oh, Jay's back? Okay. I was just going um, to say, before we start the video, um, everything we're talking about here, it's like a web. It's like multiple conjoined circles. Um, at some points, things don't connect as much. At other points, they do, though. And ultimately, we're building a bigger picture, whether we're talking about the Mandela effect NPCs, 
uh, reincarnation and, and souls recycling and, and how the, the, the planets or the celestial bodies play into that. These are all different things that seem to interconnect one way or another. And as we explore each topic, it's, it's kind of like what you're doing with that Mandela effect board. It's, it's putting more on the board slowly but surely. The more we keep these things on the table, the better picture we can get on that big board in front of us metaphorically. Um, so some of these things might be hearsay or conjecture, and we might not be able to know exactly for sure the 100% truth, but we're trying to get as accurate as a picture. This is an objective, um, uh, there is an objective truth, and we don't claim to have it fully, but there there is legitimacy to the, these topics. Whether we take it in a certain direction or not that you agree is legitimate. I think we can all agree that when we investigate these things, we're gaining a better picture, a clearer picture on things, even if it still is a mystery to some degree. And we accept that we won't have the full thing figured out. We can get as much figured out as we can so we can act accordingly uh, for the best life in this life and the next. <clears throat> well said, bro. Well fucking said. I a thousand percent agree with you, you know, on that. I'm with you on that, dude. So yeah, Christos, he just activated his channel, guys, the other day. His channel's in the description, and Jay Phillips' channel's in the description. The first link's below. Make sure you guys subscribe to their channels. And the link's open, guys. So hopefully more people click the link, but no pressure. And this might make people click the link, though, when we get into this, I imagine. If not, then whatever. We'll we'll do our thing up here. But All right, guys. And, you know, I've been getting the vibe, and I'm not trying to be negative, but I've been getting the trappy vibe lately, you know? Like there's something more. There's some type of, you know, I've been really getting that vibe. So, um and I've been getting this vibe on my own, just me just thinking in my own mind. And then what happened was those thoughts like manifested like all these new communities and channels and people talking about that I wasn't even aware of. I knew about the Saturn moon matrix thing, but I never looked into it. Never. And um, I don't like putting the moon involved with it. But so now I'm seeing this whole other world that's really... Um, very interesting to me and i think there's some things that we some valuable things that we can take away and um try to understand the best we can so all right we'll start the video now it's only 15 minutes hey, we have we have like hey, four of these uh, videos can i, can I yeah. say one thing uh christos christos hey, can you hear me bro hey, yeah yeah hello what's up My hey, bad, bro, I was in the uh, chat. down here down here at the bottom left corner, you got the 434, four, and so you see the two towers, because I know you're into symbolism, right? Mm, yes, sir. Two yes, towers. sir. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, you got the yeah. four and four. That's eight plus three is 11. 11, yes. You got okay. the two towers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And also, it, dude, for sure. Keep going. Hey, were you going to say more about it? And then and then he's fallen into this like portal, you know, vortex. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of yeah, this is going to be symbolism and, and you'll see it throughout Hollyweird. They, they reference it over and over and over. Jumping into a portal. What was that one with? Uh, with the uh, the little Hawaiian girl, Lilo and not Lilo and Stitch, the other one, Maui or whatever. Jumps, Ian, what were you gonna say? She jumps into were the you portal. Jump in? Oh no, no, I wasn't. I was just gonna say, see, right there with what he just Moana. said. Now we we already hit the vibe I've been waiting for. You know what I mean? I wasn't even really feeling the NPC thing that much. It was obvious. You know what I mean? It's whatever. But we're here now. Now we're gonna get deep. This is why we're really here, guys. Okay. We got the warm up. Yeah, and I know other people weren't feeling the vibe too, and I get it. But now this is the whole point. Okay, this is what's really oh, it's, important. It's it's on now. Yeah, the, the way yeah. Jay Phillips just took it with that, one hundred percent. And I'll build real quick. I, I don't want to hold this up from the video much longer. No, go ahead. But We're good. That, that was an astute astute observation. 
no doubt. I mean, we're talking about uh, like the portal there in the picture. Uh, Eleven is the the two polarities. It's it's Boaz and Jackin, or however you say those those two pillars in masonry. Uh, it's it's Samson in the Bible pulling down the two pillars that he's chained to, pulling down the two pillars on each side. It's it's uh it's yeah the the two towers, the twin towers. Uh, it's an archetype that's everywhere within mythology. It has a lot of value uh, with numerology, and uh, as well as breaking it down or building it up into eleven by adding the numbers, you can also just look at the the shapes, uh, two two squares with a triangle in the middle. And uh, in my mind, this is getting a little abstract with it, but you could put the the two squares on the bottom, four and four, and then you could put the three on top. And then, you know, it, it's, it's I'm, what I'm doing is really simple. And you could also say, like, what's the point of doing that? But the thing is, when you start thinking like this, you start doing these things, you can start decoding the symbolism. You can start decoding the numerology. And uh, you can you can start performing, like, true syncretism by combining geometry exactly. with numerology. And then you can get into etymology. Like, it's it's... <clears throat> It's it's really decoding things for sure. There's there's uh, there's a lot of hidden stuff in here, whether we realize it or not. Mm. Like he might not even have realized what he was doing uh, when he made this the four three four thing. But like numbers and shapes are actually way more powerful than we might initially think. It's another form of language, but it's a higher form of language. It's abstract at times, but it's a higher form of language. And it can tell us a lot about the "quote unquote" transcendental or the supernatural. All right, let's 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 let's, let's hit the video. Hey, don't worry about it. You guys should go on for two hours about this. Like, anytime <laughs> you guys have a thought, like I'll pause it, even if it's every ten seconds. It's totally cool. This is about sparking up the conversation, so don't hesitate yeah. to. It, it wouldn't. It's not going to bother me a bit not at all. Awesome. So, um, the Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm wrapped up unless Jay Phillips wanted to say something or if Lizzo wanted to hop in. This is this is powerful stuff. We've got a good kickstart right now. Yeah, we're primed. I'm feeling it. The engine is primed. Well, this is this is definitely all symbolism. This is this is syncretism. This is the same. Christos, as soon as you were saying wow. uh, syncretism, I was done typing it in the chat. And pressing enter. So, this is you know, I'm using really? my intuition, and I'm saying this is some definite, uh, uh, great trail that we're on. You know, um, well, I'm gonna light some incense in the conversation then. anyway. Nice and mm -hmm. and you know, everybody look at this with the inner eye. It's, a lot of this is going to be very symbolic of things. And when you learn how to read this, you'll see it with you. It's like, it's like the, the, they live glasses on all the time. Um, I don't know. Land on that. No, my bad. I didn't mean to, I thought you were done. Um, go ahead. No, I just want to say to Perilous and everybody, like I kind of spotlighted his comment and um, I really like Perilous. So I just felt like some people might be thinking the same thing. So I kind of spotlighted it, but no disrespect. I know you didn't mean it like that and we're all cool. So, um, oh yeah, you know, definitely. So definitely. It's like when some people say a comment that I know other people are thinking, I definitely want to set the record straight and make sure, you know, um, so, but this this is the whole point what we're doing now. So th that was just the intro. You know what I mean? Now the the show begins, my friends. Okay, and I'm thing. feeling the vibe right now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah, I'm really feeling yeah, this. man. I'll say one last thing, and then let's play the video uh, from what Jay Phillips was doing and how I did the whole take the square, take the square, and then put the triangle on top in the middle. I want everyone to think about this in a different way turn those fours into threes make it so it's three triangles all there on the screen mm -hmm. instead of the two two uh, two squares and do what i did take a triangle and a triangle and then above them in the middle put that third triangle so you got three 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 this is a fractal sequence this is when you hear 
when you see and hear about the 369 Nikola Tesla uh, code or whatever, the secrets of the universe, uh, you got the three square, then you add the second one, that's six, and then you add the third one, and it's nine. And it's like, it's super simple, but it's kind of hidden in plain sight. So you got the three triangles, and the three triangles make a bigger triangle. So that's what a fractal is, one thing made up of a bunch of smaller forms of it conjoined. So uh, in a way, that's making a portal. Um, the three, the six, and the nine, it's, it's very, very powerful how it triangulates three triangles themselves. So it's, this stuff is so powerful, people. And um, it, not, not everyone, not everyone is privy to this knowledge. I'd say, you know, if you're here in the live chat and you're watching this channel, you are, you know, our community understands these things. You know, this, this, this is the occult. This is esoteric knowledge. This is the stuff that not everyone has the mind for, but, and this is not to say we're better than other people, but you have to be initiated. Yes, exactly. House. That's how I was getting at earlier. House, Hello. helmet, rocket. Lizzo, is your, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say something. I didn't know if you were pointing the, um, to. Uh, the, there are also so it's, sound no. waves as well. Uh, the, the triangles are like uh, saw, saw waves. If anyone who uses music programs will know that a lot of these symbols are like 432 uh, hertz have have a shape. Be it S waves, square waves, tooth, 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 uh, tooth wave. And I see the tooth wave in the spaces between the box and the triangle you look but you also see stuff in between that's not there if you see what i mean yeah yeah exactly yeah van halen <laughs> well that's a good point with the sine wave because the three and the six and the nine they all curve and and quote unquote uh squiggle the, the three squiggles and the the six and the nine yeah they they, they curve they they have that um that, that it's so simple what am i thinking of the uh the spiral spiral yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly six nine is so powerful whether it's a six or a nine it's a yang, portal yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and that's that's yeah. the cancer sign as well mm. it's the yin yang it's the cancer sign and it's 69 so you know it wow that's <laughs> dude, yeah and it's not too true, but yeah the six or nine it's the sex act act for a reason it's a divine conjoining of the two polar opposites it goes back to the one and the one that we were talking about earlier you know or the one and the zero if we want to look at it that way but the two polarities um it, yeah so it, the six and the nine are powerful because again they have that spiral they have that spiral sequence mm -hmm. and so if you could almost continue the six or continue the nine and make it spiral again within that circle and there you go you have that that sine wave you have that spiral you have that vortex, which is really at the the um, core of everything. So we talk about the sine wave when we look at it two D in a sense, the up and down sine waves. But also we have the three D sine waves, which is the vortex. It's the spinning sequence that is the Kundalini snakes. It's the the coil of life at the base of all things energetic and electromagnetic. This is this is I mean this is. <clears throat> This is breaking down reality, people. Like I was saying earlier, the way we investigate these things, it leads us down paths where if we follow that path in the correct manner, there is a treasure chest of gold at the end of these paths that we we hop on. Mm -hmm. Hey, real quick, guys. So now's the time to join the panel, guys. I don't know. Um, maybe if you could text OT Doug, I think he needs to be up here too. There's a new person here. Let me add them on. I will. Let me just screen who it is. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm hit up OTW. Full crumb? Yes. Oh, how are you doing? Good. Um, I'm here to clear up a couple things. Okay. The first one is where Boaz and Joaquin are concerned. That is how we say it, Joaquin, as in Joaquin Phoenix. So that should be easy to remember. I, I said it wrong for years myself. Um, I also came in because I Nathan told me you guys were live. And I didn't know what the topic was. 
So I decided to check it out. And you guys keep talking about how to, you know, escape the matrix, get the fuck out of Dodge, F out of Dodge, all that jazz. And um, what I've come up with clicking around in Stellarium is the butterfly cluster. It's called the Splendors of the Heavens. And I think it's the way out of here. Mm. But I think our hearts have to be as light as a feather to get there. The butterfly clusters, I'm interested in this. Would is uh, this it, something that we can uh, learn about? Like, what do you butterfly? I've never heard of that. Well, you'll hear astronomers talk about it, but they won't tell you what it's for because they don't know. <laughs> I happened across it all by myself, clicking around in Stellarium. It's a free online program you can put on your tablet or computer. And I was like, okay, so there's 88 constellations out here, but there's only one pointing to something. And it's pointing to the butterfly, or not the butterfly cluster, it's pointing to the Milky Way. In the Milky Way is the butterfly cluster. And it turns out it's all about the arrow of Sagittarius. It's like the meaning of life, the way out, the way home, it's everything. And I've, I've got the videos on my channel. Okay. And it's quite uh, riveting to learn about it as I'm learning about it. Um, it the, the video will not be hard to find. I have it pinned to the face of my page right when you go to my channel. You can find it. What's um, your channel name so we can pull this up? Or if you want, is there maybe a video I'm we can show? Or? It, it's Fulcrum, Goddess okay. of Integrity. I've commented in live chats. You can find it over there. I had to close YouTube, so I can't go comment again because I'll echo. I understand. No, I just want to make sure I pulled it. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yep. That's me. Okay. Um, cool. And I'm, I'm pretty sure. Can we come I'm back to the other video after after we watch your video? Can we be sure we don't forget about the other video? Oh, we're not going to forget about this one. I see your videos. Okay. Do you, you finish what you're doing, and then you no. can check my video out. Which video do you suggest? Um, the one that's right at the top on my page. If you click uh, lives, go to the lives. Oh, okay. The butterfly be. cluster, the splendors of the heavens. Okay. The way out, the way home. Yes. So Got finish it. what you were Got doing. It. I'll mute myself and wait patiently. Oh, yeah. No, thanks for coming up here. I appreciate it. Um, and yes, you're welcome. I'm glad you clicked the link. Very interesting. Yes, it uh, is. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm feeling it. So, again, everybody. Yay. Oh, you have, you have five more spots, people. So we can have 10 people up here. I'm surprised more people didn't click the link. But, hey, um, it'll be open to anybody at any time. So. Here we go. Big shout out to Nathan for uh, sharing out the link to his friends. And that's cool. All right. Let's get back to this video, guys. Hey, uh, yep. Just one thing, man. So right here, you got Polaris. And this is the Big Dipper. Right? And so through the seasons... It's rotating around like this, <clears throat> which creates the swastika in the four seasons. And so you look up swastika uh, symbology, and it's a symbol of peace. You know, right. not what they want you to believe about Hitler. And I'm not saying that you know, I'm not, I'm not condoning Hitler's actions, whatever, but the victors always write history. And so you really have to be wary and told. And I'm going to land on that. Yeah. This symbol is around way before his time. And um, there's a lot more to it that they don't want you to know. That's for sure. And so we might actually crack that code today with that and be able to share it. Um, so definitely a sensitive topic, but um, we we get what you're saying for sure. Shout out to 11 Overprotected, everyone in the chat. Let's pull this video back up. This is going to be interesting.
All right, here we go, guys. Again, if somebody wants to say something, just say something. I'll pause it. And I, I really don't mind. It's not going to bother me at all. So. Recently, I'm hearing a lot about the theory of soul trapping and archons, and I decided to talk about it on this channel as it relates to the information received in psychedelic states and in the near-death experiences by others. It's a very interesting theory, and even though there's very little information that could prove its validity, I think it's important that you know about it. In fact, if what I'm about to say here turns out to be true, this video is by far the most important video you will need to watch in this life. I need to start by saying that reincarnation is a fact, and it has been practically proven scientifically. This concept has been historically present in almost every human religion, and I made a separate video on that subject on the Peter Hedron channel. It is clear now that our consciousness, sometimes together with our memories, return to this realm. There are countless reports of people describing in detail their previous lives and there is no other logical explanation than us returning to Earth after death. The problem is that we don't really understand the mechanism on which this spirit salvaging mechanism is based on. We don't know why and how it happens, but there's this theory that actually can explain this. In this video, I'll tell you what it is, why I believe it might be true, I'll tell you how to stop this endless cycle, and then I'll give you the psychedelic insight into this subject. This video is a part of the truth-seeking process that I decided to engage in on your and my behalf. It might turn out to be the most important information of your life if what I'm about to present here is true, so I would like to ask you to say thank you for the time and energy I spent researching this subject. Please sponsor 434 by joining Patreon or Subscribestar, or by donating through PayPal, Cash App, Bank Transfer, or Bitcoin. It is quick and easy, and if you've never tried it, do it now. Thank you for your help. If you want to talk to me, use the consultation and support series. All links in the video description. Here is what the soul trap theory looks like. Once you physically die, your soul or consciousness leaves your body in order to get to the spiritual highway outside of this realm. Before it gets there, it is being stopped by an artificially created mechanism placed here by alien entities. According to this theory, and mechanic okay yes sir. don't yep I love don't this let stuff. see it's a very interesting perspective that i'm vibing with and the problem with what he just said he said put here by some alien race don't let that part of it deter you from this thought and like come together and really collect this data you know what i mean so it's just a word just like the npc thing so people will hear that put here by some aliens then they'll automatically be turned off because he said that so call it what you want but just keeping exact, an open mind that's the that's the exact vibe i get guys and it doesn't mean that um you know maybe it's gone too far maybe it's just not supposed to be the way it is and we that's why we're like kind of you know when you really look at people um, a lot of people are just done. They're done. They're like, I'm done with this. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I'm, this is my last time coming and maybe this place has gone too far. And now this, these people are now in control of something beyond this life and the outside realm. And there's another matrix that we got to break out of. I don't know guys, but I'm getting this vibe. I'm not going to lie. Do you have the link pinned? I'm about to hop on my phone. Yeah, it's pinned. I don't think they have any control over what we do now. Not after what I found, what I found. Thanks. You're right. Uh, they can't oh, yeah. stop it. Well, it looks like a lot of people, maybe they can't control what's coming, but they look like they're doing a pretty good job controlling things right now for me. Oh, they're, they're trying. They're, they're chasing their own tails, trying, and it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people want to celebrate victory because we might win, but I think that we're here to fight the war. So I don't want to celebrate victory yet or say, you know, they look like they're they're on track with their plans. Are we? You know what I mean? We're the ones that need to get on track. You know, And we're going to. Yeah. We're doing it. You, we're doing it already. If If we're in tune with our souls, we already won to a certain degree. True. True. Yep. <clears throat> All right. We'll continue this. Shout out to the chat. Description. 
Here is what the soul trap theory looks like. Once you physically die, your soul or consciousness leaves your body in order to get to the spiritual highway outside of this realm. Before it gets there, it is being stopped by an artificially created mechanism placed here by alien entities. According to this theory, it's a mechanical type of a belt surrounding Earth, if you believe in the globe Earth theory, or it's a dome trapping everyone underneath, according to the flat Earth theory. Once your heart stops, and even a moment before that, you're being immediately greeted by your deceased relatives, whose job is to guide you towards a false light or a tunnel that covers up the real light allowing you to exit this realm. Once you go into the false tunnel, or once you allow the tunnel to suck you in, you're being offered the revision process of your earthly life, and then you're being convinced or tricked into agreeing to return to this earthly matrix and through this soul recycling system, you begin the whole process all over again. The problem is that every time you die, you lose a part of your soul. You're being used up in fractions to the point where you can no longer be used for another host body. This would explain the existence of ghosts in this reality. There are souls who return so many times that now they're trapped here, not able to leave, yet they're still being used as fuel for other extraterrestrial systems. And apparently, alien entities use them as energy to travel to other places. The system was developed to keep you in place, and its purpose is human suffering, and it is achieved through wars and stressful overcrowding of this realm. This has created a situation where we exist in something similar to a noisy, toxic, overpopulated animal pen, hidden from other dimensions, and it all seems to be a twisted, sadistic trap in which we are supposed to suffer. It is believed that the Earth used to be a nice place and you were free to come and go as reincarnation didn't exist, but Earth's beauty was envied by an alien race and a massive war erupted, scars of which are still visible on the face of the Earth to this day. We lost it, and Earth was conquered and given away to the external force in exchange for truce. Some people believe that the source of this evil comes from the Moon, or Saturn, and that is the control center for the soul recycling mechanism. It is believed that the alien race who trapped us are called Archons. They are a much more intelligent and a much more technologically advanced parasitic race of beings. Archon in Greek means ruler. These beings consider themselves to be gods, and they are harvesting our energy for selfish reasons, to conquer and expand further and to reinforce the system. Apparently, they bodies, but through technology, they achieved a state in which they are no longer biological. In fact, they could be AI now. They don't want you to know about them and about their evil soul recycling system. They're feeding off our negative energy and we're nourishment to them. They thrive in the low vibrational frequency of this realm and they live off your fear, anger and negative thinking. So what can we do about this? According to the soul trap theory, you can escape this matrix. Your body needs to be positioned at 45 degree angle at the moment of your death to let your soul exit through the top of your head and you need to be free of anxiety as fear at the moment of death is what makes this trapping cycle possible. Higher vibrational frequency is needed for you to be able to escape. You have control over going into the tunnel of light. You need to be told what to do, so you have the power to do what's right. You can analyze everything around you and concentrate on different directions as you have an unlimited field of vision and perception outside of your physical body. You can concentrate on everything else around you, not just the light. And as your agreement is necessary to return to the recycling process, you can simply say no. Apparently, there's a group of entities outside wanting to help you escape the soul prison, and they'll help you if you create the right conditions for their intervention. It seems the fight between good and evil extends beyond this earthly realm, and it seems Earth is currently under the rule of evil forces. As I mentioned, the existence of both the soul recycling mechanism and the Archons appears to be just a theory, as I haven't found any confirmation of this anywhere that could make me think that this is really happening. There are some historical records describing this process and most of the information comes from remote viewers, which obviously allows me to be a bit skeptical about the whole thing. But what makes me interested in this theory is the fact that Hollywood has been talking about this process for a long time in their movies, and there's even a Star Trek episode dedicated to this. You can find the link to it in the video description. 
It also seems that this idea of your family members returning to the gate between dimensions to greet you in a physical form and trying to convince you to go into the light seems to be a bit suspicious. Why are they in physical earthly form? Why do they need to convince you to make a decision? Why won't they let you make up your mind about the next step yourself? If you remember my previous videos, you should know that I get a lot of information from the psychedelic entities referring to this reality as a simulation. In one of the messages, they showed me that my body is suspended in some sort of a metaphorical isolation tank and they're trying to get through to me with positive messages. Before I even got to ask that question whether this theory, I realized that in our communication, they never talk about returning to Earth. It appears they're always referring to our existence as a small stop in a long journey between dimensions. There's also this suspicion that Machinovs could be actual Archons. So I've been wondering about all of this for a few years and finally on my last trip, I decided to ask them if Salt Trap is real. Their answers started in form of a request. They told me to find and listen to the song by Max Richter called On the Nature of Daylight. It's a beautiful and a very powerful orchestral composition. And as I was listening to it, they started transmitting a personal emotional message about one of my family members. It was a profound and saddening revelation. And as I was receiving this message crying in the darkness, suddenly I realized that the demonic entity is peeking from behind the visual, literally sucking the sorrow out of my communication with the entities. At that moment, I realized that over the years, I've been seeing these parasitic entities in most of my communication, but I always thought that I'm so powerful that they're not willing to reveal themselves and that I'm scaring them off. It didn't occur to me that they want to stay hidden. Machine Elves told me that they created this separate message just to <clears throat> give me the answer to my question. Let's pause for a second. Uh, there's some comments here. <coughs> Oh, that's weird. Okay. I th I've got a question. Uh, the NPC's job could be when they're dead. Because they haven't, they didn't awaken in here. So they were naturally just want you to be, their NPC's job still could be going on when, they, when they've gone. Because it looks like they're calling us, calling us into the light. Right. Thinking out um, loud. Sorry. Yeah. Or I think that also um, when it comes to this, like the afterlife, it's going to present, you know, different people will see different things based on what's probably best for them. I think they have our algorithm, our data. So they're going to present maybe your grandma and your mom, or it might be Jesus, or it might be Buddha. It might be, you know, whatever you, is going to be the best fit for you oh. to recycle. I think that that's what they present. But when they present your mom and grandma or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's really them. It could mm -hmm. be, you know, maybe they're multitasking. Maybe they're there. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. Obviously, we don't know. But intriguing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I think that it's going to present whatever is going to work best for you. Did you hear that this thing is disabled? I don't want my child to hear this. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I hear all types of things. I hear this is happening, this perspective, and we're just showing one. I say, come up here, let's talk about it. I didn't hear this is disabled, but I'm sure, like, there's someone saying every, you know, you can't find nothing that something's not being said. So I hear all types of things, and I don't just say, oh, this is the truth now. We're just going over this. This is the vibe I get, and um, I don't get the vibe that it's disabled. If that's what you're referring to, I think this thing's active and kicking right now. That's what I think, you know, from from near death experiences. I feel you with what you just said, Ian, but from near death experiences, we can discern that for sure with what you're saying, that's the case that people often when they start to transfer over to the next realm, they often report if they're religious and Christian, they'll see Jesus or, you know hindu mm -hmm. muslim whatever you know it often it's based off of their belief system that they have in this world what they're experiencing in the next so <clears throat> there's definitely a lens it seems like when it comes to the trap <clears throat> the system this matrix whatever you want to call it it is it is um 
basing what it shows you off of what your belief systems are within this realm. Because Our information you're, doesn't show it. You're good. I was just saying near-death experiences. We're still connected to this world during a near-death experience. So we are still holding those beliefs. We're not fully disconnected. And often that's why people get recycled back in because they have those attachments. They have those belief systems that they cling to and hold on to in their ego. And they can't let those things go when their soul is detaching. Uh, they're still tethered to this earth. So they get pulled back in because these these belief systems are used against them. These religious belief systems, all types of belief systems and programmings are used to lure people back in to be the trap based off the lens of their perspectives and beliefs in this world. Exactly. Mm. Lizzo, were you, you were going to say something else, Lizzo? Brain fogged. Um, yeah. Well, oh, yes. Um, uh, information. The people talk about information collection, like everything we type, everything we like. If we thumb up a video, we like music. So they know they could they could build up. Well, if I die now, they could say Lizzo likes this. She types this, so we will grab her with what she likes. They they've got the tools, haven't they? The AI's got the tools to will me in. You know. They know I'm a sucker for this or that, and yeah. just a thought, thinking out loud. Yeah. yeah, I just think there's tons of people having a near-death experience right now, yeah. and all of them is seeing something different. They're seeing a different God presented in front of them. They're seeing different <laughs> things to you know bring them back or whatever. But um, there should only be one truth. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, the one truth that will set you free if you will believe it. Well, for me, I just believe whatever the truth is. Whatever the truth is, the truth, and I stand with the truth. But you right. know what I mean? Like me that's, that's that simple yeah. for me. But yeah. I know one thing is that the enemy is not going to hand me a lie. They're not going to tell me who created me or what created me. They have nothing for me. You know what I mean? So whatever they presented me with their religions, I ain't with none of that. And I know for, them, right. like for me, I feel it in my bones that that's all deception and lies and deceit. Right. And whoever created this world, maybe is not the same creator that created my soul. I think it's two different um, energies we're dealing with here. I have you know? another take on that. I think that the original asshat, if it's okay that I say it that way, has evolved like we all evolve. Mm -hmm. I think it's one God that has changed his mind and his heart or it's or hers or theirs. Because, you know, we all start out so-called evil and over reincarnation, lifetime after lifetime, we evolve or we continue to devolve. The choice is ours. How do you know that we started evil? Where did that come from? I'm curious. Evil it, it, to me just means the opposite of live, which means dead. And like I stated in our private chat here, I don't think we're fully alive yet. I don't think it's an after death thing that or afterlife thing that we're experiencing. We're going to experience an after death thing where we have life more abundantly because we'll be fully alive. Yeah, we'll I might be a disagree real boy. on some of the details aren't necessarily, but it's all good. Like, um, I don't think that we started evil and, you know, I, definitely the creator has evolved. But I think just like um, when Zuckerberg creates his uh, metaverse or whatever, and we're all a bunch of people are in that world. Well, Zuckerberg's the god of that world, but he didn't necessarily create himself. So I think that's what we're dealing with here as well. And I don't think the creator has his hands in everything. It's hands doing this and that you know saving the crackhead down the street while a kid's being tortured down the street from me you know what i mean picking and choosing who he's going to help out you know i'm just not that that's just that's, that's, right this is like totally like without religion just it has to do with your the evolution of your soul right and and not having any burdens no 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 more having to worry about if you're going to slip up and say or do something wrong to someone that's going to hurt them. Be the best you you can be now. And that's mm -hmm. how our hearts will become as light as a feather. And we'll be able to get through that tiny little pinprick in the dome, which is the butterfly. And get out of here. 
Shout out to Cage. Yoga. Without fire. the cage, we're gonna. Yeah. No more bird in a cage. We're gonna flee this coop. Yeah, enough of the cages. Much love, everybody. Yoga fire that. Yeah, here <laughs> I had it ready for you, bro. Yoga fire. So yeah, we'll continue the video, and we got more of these ones as well. Same topic, and then uh, we have a video queued up of a uh, fulcrum goddess as well that's on the panel. So we're about halfway through this one, and the panel's open, guys. They created the whole scenario with the music, and they did it to show me that apparently they are the helpful group of entities who want us to be free. What's more, some of you will realize when you listen to that song that it's a part of the soundtrack to the movie Arrival, which talks about alien entities coming to Earth to help humanity to fix the world. It was only later that I realized that it was a purposeful choice of that music as an additional layer of the message. As always, the machine of messages have more depth than I initially noticed. That's why machine elves want us to be in higher vibrational frequency all the time. They want us to collectively race together to starve any evil entities of their nourishment. The demonic cancer I talked about in the recent video. It will go away when we realize that only the present moment counts, when we all see the 44 messages for what they really are. Everyone needs to go through this process and that's why psychedelics are illegal. Because we would all destroy this prison by simply not complying, not being a part of the system and not feeding the negative force. This whole evil matrix can be dismantled by collectively being positive. That's why we all need to stay fearless and enjoy the now. Machine elves are this external force that wants us to create conditions in which we can exit the system. That's why they want our higher vibrational frequency, being closer to God, the energy, to be out of our dark mindset to be closer to our true energy form, and that might be the main purpose of their communication with us. Collectively, we can all do it, no matter how many people. Machine elves might be this external group that is waiting for us to liberate us, and it all aligns with all the previous warning messages I received from them. It all starts to make perfect sense. I was told I'm there plugging into this reality on the borders between dimensions, for them to be able to send through messages with which they can help as many people as possible. Apparently, that's the true purpose of existence of machine elves in this reality. They are feeding wake-up calls to others through mediums like me, as thousands of people hear these messages. They use me and others as conduits to destroy the evil mechanisms in this reality. They might be this outside force helping us to break whatever trap we live in. I was told my job is to help people understand that everybody can collectively create a soft spot in any trapping mechanism we might be a part of so that it can be pierced through awareness that the moment of now is the only thing that matters, that fear is pointless and artificial, that there is no fear in the present moment, and that love, harmony, and unity are all that matters. These messages from machine elves were not clear on whether the trap we might be in is created as a part of this earthly life that we metaphorically built for ourselves through negative reinforcement, or whether it's a physical setup our consciousness is imprisoned by. These messages are very difficult to understand and translate, and they're getting more and more complex with every trip. As you remember from previous videos, I spoke to some of my deceased family members, and they did not have an earthly form. And <clears throat> we are awake. I'm just saying I'm having a weird experience that having my child here hearing this is just, I don't know, kind of weird having her hear this, but she is 27. I really protect what she can hear then just i would just have her tune out you know what i mean but i'm not gonna change what we're talking about because somebody knows somebody that's watching and they don't like the conversation sorry guys i'm not gonna let anyone come in and, and mess up the vibe again like it always happens sorry if you don't like what we're talking about just like tune out it's so easy there's millions of channels but this is important. I want to talk about it. Everyone in the chat wants to hear about it for the most part. The people on the panel want to talk about it. So what more important? For me, there's no more important topic. The damn machine elves are back at it again. <laughs> Cage, so, I'm, I'm glad you're here, Cage. Yeah. No, I, I feel that, Ian. I just wanted to say I really like this topic because I can really relate to uh, the quote-unquote 
machinos and, and you know coming in contact with these beings which basically help channel messages and tell us what's going on with the near-death experiences tell us what's going on with reincarnation and recycling um this this guy might speak a little abstract about how like the machine elves are talking to him but uh i just want everyone to know like no, I think being this serious is a legit this is a this is a legit thing you know this is a legit thing <laughs> oh, channeling God, or taking Cage, I'm not gonna have your crap tonight, man. What, what are you saying now? Please don't interrupt people. Like, I'm really want to be taking segments out and stuff. But when somebody's talking, to just start talking like right in the middle, it's just uh, let's please try to avoid. I know it's hard sometimes. We think someone's finished, but he obviously wasn't. So um, it was the machine. No, sorry, it wasn't me. Anyways, yeah, no, we had there's some other videos on this, so. Hopefully, um, it'll spark up a conversation. But um, and they yeah. did not appear to be attached to an earthly body. They seem to be free, and they returned from a different plane to talk to me. I hope this video can provide some clarification on this subject. There is enough deception in our earthly lives already. So if this theory turns out to be true, I want you to be ready at the moment of crossing the physical realm and potentially be prepared to escape the soul trap matrix. I want you to question your relatives or their projections as they greet you before entering the light, and I want you to pay attention to everything around you, not blindly agreeing to go into the tunnel and returning to Earth when you don't feel like it. It might be that you experience tens, hundreds, or even thousands of birth and death recycling cycles, and maybe it all finally stops now with this message contained in this video. All it takes is a small element of doubt and awareness recalled the moment you leave this earthly plane. It might be that you've been waiting for this awakening for a very long time or it might even be your last chance to get out of this trap and everything in your life has led to this one tiny educational moment now. The sensation of being So here's the deal guys and I'm not trying to be mean or nothing I swear. But I'm trying to have another classic stream. I really want to get deep in the conversation. And if anybody has a weird vibe or if you don't like it, you're just going to have to tune out. And I'm not going to shake the negativity in the chat room. If you don't like this conversation, just like if we're watching a movie, when I go to the movies and I usually go by myself and I watch a movie I don't like, I just quietly walk out and leave. I don't say, this movie sucks. Why are you guys here? You know what I mean? Or this is a weird vibe, you know? Why did you make this movie? No, it's not. Just please save your negativity. I don't want it in the chat. I don't want it around on the panel or nothing. Either click the link or just tune out. That's it. So I got to protect the vibe. And it's always it's always something, you know? It's always something. Might be an indicator of the level of energy depletion and the advancement in fragmentation of your soul. Don't stop questioning everything that goes on around you once you leave this life. If this theory is false, like all the other ones, we get through the pseudo-spiritual noise, then we go back where we came from. But in case it was not, make sure you share this video with your family and friends or you tell them about it to save them from this potentially endless cycle of perpetual imprisonment. This might be too important to ignore. It's a very confusing and conflicting theory for me and probably for you too. I hope it's not true, and I want to hear from you if you have any more information on this subject. I know that if I realize at the moment of me leaving my body that it actually is a trap, I will want to free myself from the system by not agreeing to go into the fake light, and then I hope to be able to destroy this matrix prison from the outside, or to find a way to create collectively a force that will be strong enough to overpower these evil entities. If it is real, somebody has to put a stop to this. And I want you to keep this in mind at the moment of your transition. Love, 434. But before you leave this reality, please help me spread this message to as many people as possible and find us, 434, through methods listed on the screen and in the video. So we got some more uh, videos on this. Extremely interesting. Actually, we might even have a better video than that. Let me cue this up, guys. Or you want to go to your your video next? Do you think we should? Um, yes, please. Okay. 
there are definitely forces. I know this for a fact that there are definitely forces that are interdimensional that feed off of our energy if we let them. And if we stay ignorant and if we don't become more aware and mm. uh, transcend our consciousness, that we will become stuck in this cycle, this wheel of life, and we'll be spinning and spinning and spinning in this vortex, which they can continuously feed off of us so that they can exist. These are archons. These are egregores. These are parasites. These are spiritual entities, which we give power to through our ignorance. But if we can attain that awareness and, and and make that awareness grow over time within our spirit, we're able to break outside of these boxes, break outside of these, these constraints, which they put on us energetically through our ignorance. That's, that's why it's so important not to feed into the programming and the propaganda because when you do that, you become ignorant. And if you're ignorant, you're going to stay in their cycle where they can continuously farm you, churn you out and recycle you and farm you again. This place, in a way, is a soul farm. And I have seen the entities. I've come in contact with these archons and these egregores, these interdimensional quote-unquote aliens, which are weird and they're parasitic. And they want us around. They want to keep using us. And we, we have to stay conscious, we have to stay aware, and we have to not accept that and not not invite that energy, not allow that energy into our auras, into our spirits, because it, it happens through ignorance. It, that's really what it comes down to at the core of things. We have to eliminate ignorance. We have to really become aware of ourselves and aware of this realm and this reality and how the mechanisms operate so that we can step outside of that wheel of life, that karmic wheel of life. And it's like Cage and others have said before, you know, why be a piece on the game board when you could be the whole game? You could be the person outside of the game that created the game. There are soft spots within the trap. We can bypass the traps that they set for us, but only through awareness, only through raising our consciousness and not giving into that ignorance which they feed us. Exactly, Chris. I, I, I do agree with you. The only one point I'd like to suggest would be um, maybe these things, right, these outside forces, these entities, they're really maybe a part of you, maybe a part of an unrealized version of yourself. No, right? I don't agree with that. Oh, yeah, it. my bad, but, yeah. No, I was just saying, like, you're manifesting that into your reality, too. We, like, we well, okay, please don't, perfect. sorry to interrupt. Please don't do the singularity thing. I know you stand with everything is me, everything is one, we've already won, it's already over, we're already, di you know what I mean? Like, if that's your perspective, put it on the table now. But we don't need to keep repeating. Yeah, it's not. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit deeper than that. You know what I mean? It's very singularity-ish. I'm not gonna lie. It's like you know we're playing in the World Series game one, and people are like, "Oh, it's already over. We've already won." No, we we got shit to do here. It's not over. The enemy still, um, you know, all their systems are still in place. It's not down. The system didn't go down. I mean, come on, guys. Make your own game. Don't participate so, in their game. You make your own game. And everyone has their own journey. Some people shouldn't even be paying attention to this stuff. Some people need to, you know. So you make that decision yourself. But don't, you know, mess up the vibe because it's not your path. It's not your direction in looking into this, you know. And don't try to judge where we're at because we're looking into this. You know what I mean? This is stuff i have thinking about my entire fucking life. <laughs> We're all on the same path. We're just on different parts of the path, and we shouldn't look down on those who might be behind us or in front of us. The yeah. path, all these, it's, it's, it's the same thing regardless. Exactly. Oh. Okay, we got this queued up. As many paths that lead to the same road, if you want to say it like that. Yes, everything is the same road. We just... Sometimes we branch off and wander off, and then we get back on the same path. There's only one way to go, and that's out. Hmm. Out. Well, maybe we'll play your video, but I got like questions that are flowing through me. But maybe we should go to your video, and then we'll get into that. I'm gonna write. Then write you things. can hurl the questions at me. Yes. After we watch the video, start at okay. seven minutes, please. Seven minutes. Okay. All right. Much love, everyone. Also, I should probably say that at one point, I maintain, I maintain the whole time 
that I'm making my video. But when I get to this one part, and you'll understand why when you hear it, I do get a little loud. I'm saying this for those with headphones on. <laughs> so be prepared to pull your headphones out of your ears just for a moment and then stick them back in. Okay, well, I'm really interested in this video. This is going to be cool. Thanks for sharing it. So we'll start. We're at seven minutes. All right, we'll start this. Let's go ahead and put the link out there. I didn't do it at the last video. Sorry, guys. Um, so she's on the panel now. We're going to watch one of her videos pertaining to this topic. So this is going to be interesting. Everyone go um, sub over there. All right, let's start this out, guys. We'll have a couple of other planets. Nope, that's not the one. There we go. I want to put the boundaries up. I don't know if you guys will be able to see the boundaries, but I want the boundaries because the boundaries are not yes, where to eight minutes. they want to be. Okay, gotcha. That's actually R right now in Solarium. And as you can well see, the sun is in the crotch of the serpent bearer, Ophiuchus. And as you can see up here, top left corner, it says the butterfly cluster, the splendors of the heavens. When we Hold get so-called... Hold on a second. One second. Actually, I think that I need to address the chat real quick, guys. Hold on. I need to drop a bomb for call for zero. I'm not seeing a hands on God. Something else is going on here. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to agree with that. But do you want to, before we start this video, I mean, some people are just starting off listening to it and they don't know where, do you want to give a little bit of a backstory? Okay. Well, one day I was clicking around in Stellarium and I knew that there were 88 constellations out there. And I wondered one day why uh, Sagittarius is the only one pointing to something. And I was like, well, what in the heck is he pointing at? So I zoomed in. And when I zoomed in, I started clicking around this little cluster of stars that was there. And eventually I clicked on what the entire cluster is named. And then my head exploded and I started investigating it. And I have come across some really needful information that I think will help us get out of here for those who are ready. Okay. All right, let's, let's go back to eight minutes. And this is something you came up with? Like, did you... Well, uh, in the mostly moment, me, the vibes, yes, because, Huh? Have, has anyone else talked about what you're about to talk about? Is there no, other no okay. one else has talked about this? Like, I found one link that I will read from where somebody mentions a couple of paragraphs, but that's all I've ever seen out there on the internet about it. And so you can Google it. I don't think you'll find much except my video and that article. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that found this gem. Then let's drop a bomb. Okay, interesting. Okay. That's actually R right now in Solarium. And as you can well see, the sun is in the crotch of the serpent bearer, Ophiuchus. And as you can see up here, top left corner, it says the butterfly cluster. The splendors of the heavens. When we get so-called raptured or enraptured or we ascend, it doesn't matter the language that you use. This is where we're going to go. And I know this because, and I'm going to be making a separate video for this because I don't want the videos to be long. But I found a TikTok video, holy crap. 
I found a TikTok video that proves that I'm right about what I found all those years ago. And, but I just thought it was pretty interesting that on this day, the sun is in the crotch of the serpent bearer, Ophiuchus, and also in the scenery on the horizon is the butterfly cluster and Sagittarius pointing right at it. I mean, right at it. Now, the lying liars lie to us and say, oh, his arrow is pointing at the heart of Scorpio or Scorpius. And I think it's Antares, A-N-T-A-R-E-S, that is supposedly the heart of the scorpion. But who cares which star it is in there? It's not pointing at the heart of squat in, in Scorpio. No, it is pointing here. Now, what I came across when looking it up exactly as it is worded here, uh, I googled Sagittarius. Sagittarius's arrow pointing at or to the butterfly cluster, the splendors of the heavens. And I found a good read, at least in part. And I will try to remember to put the link in description and in comment under the video when it's done. And I will pin the comment so that it will always be at the top. For those who don't know what the description box is, they'll still be able to find the link. Watch this. This is pretty cool. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm just so amazed and I hope you will be too when you hear this. There's other things to read up there that I scrolled past because those are not important for this video. What's important for this video is what I'm about to read to you. Let me take a look here and make sure everything's cool. Okay, here we go. Oh, wrong page, here we go. So this is like the story of uh, Sagittarius it's here. Um, I do want to start up here a little bit. Okay, this part has been forgotten in the more romantic take on Sagittarius of the present day. But it is an ancient one, and it still stands. Indeed, the focus of the entire constellation and its sign is not on the centaur, but on the arrow. What the actual bleep? Now, how did I know this? Except for my Kashik records said, hey, dipshit, check that out. So I did. And I found the butterfly cluster that no one ever speaks about. I'm the only one that I know of besides, you know, astronomers and whatnot that know about it. But you don't hardly ever, ever, if ever hear an astrologer or, or anyone ever talk. Does anybody want to elaborate? I'm a little confused, to be honest. I don't, I'm just trying to see. Oh, uh, uh, when I get to reading, it'll make more sense. It's, 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 I'm there. It, I'll be, I'll be reading here in a moment. Okay. Okay. It'll be clear. The butterfly cluster. So this weapon adds to the thrusting creative power of life and awareness that its existence must mean something but does not reveal what it is. I am telling you, it is the way, it is the way home. Only that its location is somewhere over the next horizon out there in the vast reaches of experience. It is in essence, an aspiring energy, a wandering, 
wayfaring somewhere over the rainbow somewhere over the rainbow my name has even been rainbow white on this channel what <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow and horizon kind of force sagittarius is all about faith in winning the lottery hello nathan you need faith brother um in winning but not not the physical lottery actually the faith in the spiritual lottery i'm gonna add because when we when we ascend to the butterfly cluster we have hit the lottery of lotteries and my channel is all about keys brian knew that milky way weekly he knew that that's why he had me on his channel once to talk about from Lucifer to Christ. But moving on. Sagittarius is all about faith and winning the lottery. Faith in principles, in family, and in the innate moral and ethical ways of being that the soul instinctively knows are right. Not all this wrong crap that's been happening over the past years. And I believe I found the butterfly cluster before 2019, if you remember correctly, guys. It believes in higher forces and benevolent ones, not malevolent. Malevolent is evil, benevolent is good. And I am benevolent. Okay, so it believes in higher forces and benevolent ones, either as God, karma, laws of the land, or simply as integrity and conscience to put things right. And we are going to put things right, are we not? Yes, we are. The archer's bullseye is the meaning of life. The archer's bullseye is the meaning of life. I must say that a third time. The archer's bullseye is the meaning of life. When in despair, it is, it's, when it's in despair, it, in it, okay. When it's in despair, it is, it's meaningless. Okay, I think that's worded wrong. That's why it tripped me up. Uh, it feels meaningless. In short, Sagittarius is a spiritual warrior that looks up for truth and guidance and is crushed by a crippling sense of meaninglessness. If it fails to find its target, I am covered in goosebumps, y'all fails to find its target nice well tonight. few there be that find it few there be that find the way the way out the way home because they were lying to us that that arrow was pointing at the heart of scorpio or scorpius which is also actually not a scorpion it's an eagle in ancient times it was an eagle let me remind you of that I really did not plan on reading past this. And therefore you are done. Because So how how does that I'm just curious, how does the different stars up there, how does knowing something with the stars um help us uh, in that like get out of here? Mm -hmm. I'm really curious. Because I think the butterfly cluster is the way out. Uh, we have flat earthers here, right? How many are in the video right now that believe in flat earth? Fulcrum, but, are you a Sagittarius? I'm assuming you're a Sagittarius, right? Nope, I'm a Leo. Well, we're talking about a soul trap matrix that we're in, like a recycled soul yeah, center. Soul so trap. Right. Whether and it's I a globe or a flat earth, I don't think it's relevant. In, Not you know, really, I but I'm just saying I think that it's a dome that has all the constellations on it and it spins around us every day and night. And if we 
investigate what's going on out there in Stellarium, we could find the way out was my theory way back a couple years ago. And that's when I found the butterfly cluster. And I was like, well, maybe that's the way out. And the more I investigate it, the more it looks like I'm right. It's really intriguing. It's really interesting. It's, it's been quite the beautiful journey since I found it. So you can take it, you can leave it, but everybody keeps wondering how do we get out of here, and I think I found it. That's why uh, I went in here. Yeah. Well, but like yeah. I said, there's other things that are under the video that add to the video because right. I wanted to keep the video short. So, um, yeah. Wait, there's an echo. Someone's got oh. an echo. Mic check, check. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, I don't have YouTube open at all. Well, it seems like there isn't really a lot. You know, we don't know what options we're going to be having necessarily. Like, oh, I'm going to, and like knowing, knowing the constellations or this, like, I, I'm just. Well, I think yeah. what matters the most is to have a heart as light as a feather, as in release our burdens, as in not let every crappy thing that's been going on in this world keep us down. You know, when we say keep us down, well, we think that that just means depression. But what does depression mean? You know, holding down. We need to be light. Our hearts need to be light. Not only light, but light as a feather and shining our light as well. As, as we're not burdened down with burdens, we are then lighthearted. And I think we just, in the snap of a finger, we just end up there. So for those who are feeling hopeless that there is no way out, there is hope. I think there's a way out, and I think I found it. But we have yeah, to not let we, the world get us down. There's definitely a way out. I think it's more of um, understanding what exactly we're in and the trap, you know, kind of deception, right. even after this life, you know. So, yeah, being light as a feather and all that's like probably the most important for sure, um, you know. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, so check this out real quick. So with the Sagittarius sign, there's a couple of things we want to break down here. Uh, I, th I think it was pointed out earlier um, that the there's the bullseye, which the the archer, the centaur, Sagittarius, fires his bow and arrow into. See, the, the bullseye, the target, is a mandala, if you look at it. It's the circle with concentric rings going out around it. So that's an important little symbol to note with the bullseye. Yeah. Um, and the if you look at what a, a centaur is, often in fantasy games or fantasy movies and the whole fantasy genre, often the centaur can be depicted as like an elven man uh, or a human man. But we're going to go with elven for this example. And obviously the horse body. And the fact that he's firing his arrow upward, it's it's that upward ascent, which is being symbolized. And notice that the lower half of the being is animal, and the upper half is, you could say is human, but I'm going to say is more celestial. If you look at elves within the fantasy genre, they're always seen as something that's angelic. There's something that is celestial. They're beyond just human humans that in between but the elves are almost like an angelic form of humans so if we look at a centaur yeah. as like an elven uh upper half and an animal lower half and he's firing his bow up into the air in an ascending form it's a whole symbology of us shooting higher and going further than our lower animalistic nature to something that's more celestial and when that arrow hits the mandala that's the realization of self you know, and, and to kind of say what Cage is saying, it, it's all us. And even if that can be disputed, which I don't always go with that philosophy, this does apply here with the bullseye of the mandala, the self in the center of all these circles. And all those circles are just, all those uh, concentric rings are just forms of you uh, being expelled outwards from that center point where the arrow hits 
So there's, there's, like there's a, a lot of beautiful thing. symbology. Yes, exactly. The, the ripple. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. Wonderful. Uh, this is why there's value in what you're saying. The whole butterfly thing gets into the butterfly effect and the ripple effect. The, the concentric rings that fly outward from that center point when that arrow hits it. Yep. Exactly. I like the way you describe that. Yes. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought this up. There's, there's definitely something uh, there with the symbols and uh, with the Sagittarius and everything going on with that symbolically as well so as the, yeah, the butterfly, the butterfly effect plays perfectly into this. Yep. Butterfly effect. He kept coming back. He kept trying to change things and he never could because he didn't find the way. And what did he end up doing at the end, but hanging himself in the womb? He gave up. I showed up in here tonight so that others would not give up because I may not have the whole puzzle, but I have a very important piece of it, I think. Butter butterflies are uh, um, in collections are normally depicted with a pin in, like an arrow. You know, when you see collectors, they have yeah. butterflies. So it, 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 to me, that sort of symbology of an arrow going towards the butterfly, the pin in the collection it, you know yes. just a, a thinking out loud thing that's i agree one. that's yeah. another way to describe it yes i think everything happens for a reason because it's showing us something but are we paying attention are we seeing it and clearly you are because you even put two and two together with the pin through the butterfly for the collectors yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wow that, that was amazing great that was a great build right there And, uh, and how does a butterfly turn into a butterfly? Well, first, it's a caterpillar. And what does it have to do? And the way I'm going to say it is surrender to self, get rid of ego, and let yourself liquefy within until you transform into that butterfly that understands why everything happens and where we're going, why we're going, why others aren't. And But then also knowing that though they're not coming with us now, this might not be their last chance. Maybe it's not. Hopefully it's not their last chance. Someday down the line, in some other life's re reincarnation, they will figure it out. And we can rest in knowing that. Okay, so you don't know today, but you'll know tomorrow. Ian, are you still there, Ian? Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyone can come up to the links out there. So, uh, whoa, my internet, okay. So with this knowledge um, about the constellations, if you're a good person and you're light as a feather, does does that make a difference about the constell where the constellations are from like a human perspective? with the stars you know what i mean like i'm trying to i'm not sure what you mean maybe add more words um i need more input <laughs> well let's say you this knowledge of the constellations and stuff how does that make a difference on like when you when you uh, pass on from here how does that is, is this some, I, I'm just trying to see how, um, I can see all the symbology with all these things, but I'm just trying to see how, um, you know, getting out of this soul trap, being aware of the constellations is, is an important thing. I'm just trying to make the connection. I think we have everything we need right here to get out. It's just that we need to work together to find the exit. And yeah, the exit strategy that. is to is to just get rid of all the stress. And when is the most important time to try to get rid of all the stress? When it's complete and utter upside down world out there. It's a yes, that makes it the hardest time to do it. However, if we really are tired of that, then we really will release it all because we're done. We're over it. We say we're over it but we're not really over it until we're done with it. And then we're over it. And then we're done with it. And then we can be light. 
and we can go home. We just keep rolling with the punches here. And If I may say, uh, I think to what you're saying, Ian, I think we don't need any knowledge, to be honest, on the constellations. And I'm a big, I'm a big, well, maybe I shouldn't say big, but I like astrology. I appreciate the celestial alignments. I think maybe we don't need as much, um, like, exterior knowledge of the stars, but we need that, that internal knowledge. Like, I don't think necessarily, I, I don't think this is being said by you, Fulcrum, but just to what Ian was saying, like, I think yeah. we could achieve this this knowledge that is obtained within um, Sagittarius and the butterfly thing. Uh, I think we can obtain that without even knowing about the constellations. But I agree. I think I think, I think knowing the constellations does add another layer. That yes, that's understanding. all. Understanding. But okay, let's get deep into this soul trap thing because when you say that, there's a lot of great souls that are light as a feather, great people that are right now being recycled back here with some type of deception system after the after this life. Where being so Maybe. good didn't help them, they were still tricked. I mean, we don't know, right? But that's the whole point of kind of this thing well, here. Well, you Maybe can... they came to help. Yeah, no, I see that too. Yeah, some might have come to help because we've already gotten out and we came back to show the way back out. Like, you know, the rescue crew or whatever. Um, I don't know. All I know is I have a piece of the puzzle and... I thought I'd share it, and I do believe, like he said, that you can know this without knowing about my video, because it's all within us. All the magic happens within us. Yeah, I agree with that. As we grow and evolve, someone over in Africa that's sucking on sticks right now can still do this without Stellarium. But it's nice to have a visual of where you're going so you can have a focus point. Yeah, external tools that help us map things out. Right. It could be the pineal gland. It could be the heart. I think since love is important, um, it's probably the heart and the pineal gland. But I think it starts in the heart. Center point. For sure, the the heart the heart is like a zero point energy um, engine, you could say. Yeah. It's it's source emanation, and uh, this gets into the whole picture of how often they depict Jesus as pointing to his heart. Yep. And pointing upwards. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, going uh, getting to the Father by going through the Son is actually just saying like going into the heart the heart is like our internal sun that that's that's the real people talk about the black hole sun and all that the real black hole sun is the the heart it's that, yes. that zero point point black hole portal that we have inside of us it is bullseye yeah exactly bullseye where's that lightning at <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not always going to be dropping the bombs, and there's many that should be dropped. I don't have enough to drop them every single <laughs> time, that's for sure. Nice. Yeah, well, you guys are going to pull you with me, guys. And I'm my own spiritual journey. We all are. And um, in the bird's eye view, stepping outside of my comfortable bubble and um, how, you know, where I am spiritually looking at the world and looking at everything, it doesn't look so great. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, uh, I'm looking at things outside of the, you know, this, and it doesn't look like, oh, we won, everything's great and hunky-dory, we're we're on our way home. It, I'm not getting that vibe yet totally, you know? Maybe maybe you are, maybe I am, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not, not getting, getting that vibe yet. You know, I feel like we got a long ways to go, and you can either, when we're in the maze, you can just leave the maze. You can say, hey, I already got out the maze. Um, it's great. Everything's going to be fine. Or we can, you know, be chilling in the maze with the people trying to get them out. So we all have our role to play in this. Yes. But the world is soul, a Yes. For me, this soul matrix recycle thing is a real thing and it's still alive yeah. and kicking. So I don't want to go to step 50 when we're still at step two 
trying to realize what kind of construct we're really in and who's really running the show here. I mean, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, things are going to be great. We get out of here and stuff like that, but I definitely want to do that in this life. I don't want to be like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't worry about this. Next thing you know, you know, I'm kind of like everyone else and I get recycled back here when I don't want to be, you know? So. Right. So many of us don't want to come back. And the video that I can't show on here, because I don't want you guys to get it for copyright. I don't know how you're able to play other videos, but surely if you play something that I found, you will get in trouble, that's for sure. So we won't go there. But what they said in their video is that where the Catholics are concerned, they show those two keys crossed over that uh, shield. One key is silver, one key is gold. The silver key is what we all keep hitting. We keep hitting that silver key and ending up back here again. But the gold key is the way out, and it is associated with the butterfly cluster. They just don't tell us that. The Catholics must know something. So who's to say, you know, well, this is the thing. This is the whole thing with this whole soul trap thing is that um, – I don't think that when we leave this, when we get out of this reality, like we're all knowing and everything's going to be hunky dory. It looks like there's another layer to break through. And even the things you're aware of now might actually leave you just like you had a mind wipe in this life. Who's to say you're not going to have a mind wipe when you um, exit this body as well. And that's another layer to break through another mind wipe. So anything that you learned here actually doesn't help you as much. Like it, it, you know, the, the programming possible. dissipates. You know what I'm saying? But I think once we get where we're going this time, I don't think that we're going to have our mind wiped this time. When we get where we're going, yeah, I can see that. But um, I don't know. It doesn't make me. We may still have more things to learn. Though. Yeah. A lot of people report when they experience DMT. Better than more fear. I'm looking for a change of scenery. I need a vacation. Oh, God. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go now ahead. Now we can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just saying a lot of people report uh, during the DMT experience that they totally forget and lose who they are in this world. Uh, they're, you know, having like a, a whole ego death, not knowing their, not remembering their job, their family, their identity and who they are in this life. That's something that people experience during DMT, as well as other types of uh, um, psychedelic journeys like mushrooms. You can totally be stripped of your identity of who you are in this life. It's almost like a mind wipe, like a temporary mind wipe. So that's a real phenomena. And it's not just something that we uh, approach looking back at when we were born in life and like the memory wipe with that, that's a thing. But there's also the memory wipe, which happens on the way out, quote unquote, which people have experienced during near death experiences, DMT experiences, shamanic journeys and so on. So the mind wipe phenomena is a real thing. I guess th the questions would be, you know, what steps do we need to take? with our soul and our, um, our consciousness so that we can retain some form of identity of who we are as we transfer to the next, uh, realm. Now, some people have the philosophy that that's part of the experience. You're supposed to forget who you are and that's just part of the, the natural cycle or whatever. Uh, I disagree. I, I think we too. have the opportunity to retain a form of who we are. It's just, it's not necessarily the same egoic form uh, of how we identify in this realm, but there's definitely like a super ego. There's like a soul ego. You have an astral body, a light body. You have your soul. You see, the soul is an identity. It's not just, soul is different than spirit. Uh, and we all have a soul. We all have a specific unique soul and identity and we can retain that knowledge of our soul and who we truly are when we transfer over but that requires us to be living. Uh, I'm not going to say like I have the answers for it, but from what I've learned, we need to live as consciously and, and as aware as we can while we're here in this realm 
to have any chance of retaining a sense of who we are with our soul for the next. It's about it's about living in accordance with your soul while you're alive. Whatever that means for the individual. It can mean different things for different people. Be the yeah, best you, you can be. Well, let's yeah, live in accordance way. with your soul. Live in accordance with your soul mm-hmm. in this realm and you'll have more uh, chance and likelihood that you'll be uh, connected to it as you transfer over. Yes. Yeah, I thought I agree. You are. Look, go, go back to when you were asleep or asleep people. Now, for when I look at myself when I was asleep, what really will wake you up to get to what exactly what we're talking about here right now? Saying, oh, you need to be light as a feather, you need to be, you know, good and all this, or having them aware of this construct and who's running the show and this soul trap type thing that we're stuck in these loops. I think that that's a great first step to really breaking out of this. You know what I mean? Oh, it is. When I go Um, back to myself, if you would have just came with like this perspective we're giving now, it wouldn't have worked for me. What woke me up was realizing all the evil that's around me. Yeah. Not people telling me to be good and meditate and be, you know, yeah. all this stuff. That didn't work for me. When I found yeah. out about all this evil fucking run around, all the poisons and mm-hmm. what they've been doing to us, that's mm-hmm. what got me here now. Yes. You know what I mean? So, yes. this is what so wakes you up everyone's for real. On a different right. level here right now. And um, I see exactly what you guys are saying for sure. The gigantic bomb. Yeah. But, um, uh. As soon as I got here, I knew I was in hell. I knew I was in an evil place. Yeah. Me too. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to be negative, but I wasn't feeling it either. Yeah, I wasn't feeling it. That's how they say it now. I was like, my first memory was literally, wait a minute. I thought I escaped this place. How did I end up back here again? And how do I get back out and stay out? And I found the butterfly cluster. <laughs> I think I found the way out. Um, once we do the inner work, the great work, and boy, is it great as in huge. Once we complete it by being who we are, being the best we we can be, then we will get to get out of here. I think, like I said, going back, I want to ask you a question, though, at first. But I was just going to say before I ask. um, Well, let me ask you the question. When you said that when you were young, you were like, I thought I escaped this place. That's that's very interesting to me. Yeah, it was interesting to me when I remembered it about 20 years ago. I had forgotten. And then I remembered it just it came to me and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That happened. (laughs) Um, it's great when that happens, but I uh, always your past lives of some recollection of something before this life type of thing. Oh, it it must have been, but there was no past life recognition. What it was was it was like I was standing in the middle of a room of a house with my eyes closed. And I heard yelling and screaming and arguing and name calling. And I knew what I heard was demons, evil people. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought I escaped this place. How did I end up back here again? What the heck? How do I get out of here again and stay out? Um, and I've done nothing but strive to go back home. I'm homesick. I was also born homesick. I, something in me, I cannot physically see, not even in my third eye, something in me knew I was away from home and I needed to find my way back there. I needed to do whatever it took to find my way back there. Now, mind you, I was born meek, mild, quiet, shy. You can't tell that. Now, Because I'm so angry all the time. But I was. And I believe the key to getting out of here is for me to go back to who I was as a little child. That innocent little soul before the world defiled it. Yeah, interesting. Daniel Wall, you want to come up? The link's out there. Um Guy in the middle uh, of I don't know, the other day after the yeah. last stream, guys, like I have a little bit different like 
I definitely see all this, but for me, it's not the exact angle I want to go yet because like I watched a documentary. I'm not going to say the name. And I don't want anyone to say the name in the chat either up here at all, but it got me to strap up my war boots, my friends. And we're at war and fucking shit's going down and I'm not happy with what's going on in the world. Right. And so for people to be like, oh, just I'm going to be great and I just need to be this. No, 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 no. We're at war here and this is unacceptable whatsoever. I'm I'm a warrior spirit, not just meditate in the woods and just. Yeah, no meditating, no words. Ignore all the evil here. All this shit's unacceptable and I'm not accepting it. We are here to try to end it. Yeah. No, I understand all that. That's and I get it. I'm just saying, like, so I want to entertain all these perspectives, all these angles. I get it. But for me, guys, telling you that changed me big time. So but what did you want to say? Yeah. I have a a Lizzo random thought, but I was thinking like you you have the the Maoris who have tattoos. Uh, a lot of people have tattoos. There was a movie with a guy on an island who, had to, who escaped with a big butterfly on his chest. And I'm wondering whether mm. when we die, if we are marked with symbol symbolism, it could be a way of us saying, to, hinting to us, have tattoos done to remind you of who you are or a significance. I don't know. It's just a random thought that come in my head because we talk about images and symbols. If we yeah. are marked with a symbol, if I was marked with a symbol, uh, of a butterfly, let's use that as an example. We talked about butterflies today, and I saw my hand mm. in death. In, I could say, you know, it, I, I'm just thinking symbolize, you know, imagery, yeah. um, hieroglyphs, yeah. or uh, yeah, hieroglyphs. But no, it's just a random thought. I just thought I'd throw it in quickly where we had a second. like uh, Memento. Uh, he I was kept just thinking of that movie himself. name, Memento. He kept. Yeah tattooing yeah, himself so he wouldn't keep forgetting yeah yeah and even in um there's another film as well with DiCaprio Leonardo where he, he holds something in his dreams to make sure that he's uh a totem. inception yeah. Mike, yeah, thank that? you thank you very much yeah so it, it makes me wonder if when we go through in when we do die uh we should hold something I'm, I'm sure when Catholics die they help have a hold a cross in their hand I'm not sure Just inception like, the movie inception Thank you, miss. Thank You're you. welcome. So I just, yeah, tattoos came into my head for a reason. I went, because a lot of tribes have tattoos, you know, and. Uh, yes. But I finished what I've said. Thank you. Nice. Somebody asked, even if you know the butterfly cluster, how does this knowledge benefit the common person? Well, like I said, even, you know, I agree with the other. Uh, gentleman from earlier where he was like I think anybody can do this whether they know about the butterfly cluster or not I'm just saying I think I found a nice visual for people to focus on to try to remember you know mentally tattoo it in your brain uh, so that you have some kind of a visual some bullseye to aim at when we leave our bodies because we're going to go fight this war and then we're going to leave our bodies we're not going to survive. And I just think that it'll help us not hit the ceiling and come crashing back down again if we have some kind of visual of where we want to go. I'm keeping butterfly cluster in mind. That's where I'm going. Screw going into the light. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, if I had the choice right now, I'm going to ask the chat, actually, let's do a vote on this. If you had the choice right now and you didn't know what it was going to do, would you are you gonna go into the light? And, and also, it occurs to uh, me to also speak about how people get blinded by the light. So you go into the light, you get blinded by the light. You get your mind erased and you get kicked back in the ring. Yeah, That's all I and at the same time, we really don't know as well because even near-death experiences, they might have an experience, but when you actually really, really die and there's no coming back, you are actually done, it might be a little bit different than all these near-death experiences as well. We don't really oh, know. I'm sure of it. I'm sure you're yeah. right about that. Yeah. Oh. Because near-death experiences, they're half in and half out. 
That's why it's called near death. It's not called the death experience. It's called the near death. Yep. Right. They're, they're half in and half out. Yeah. That's something I was going to say at the chat room. That I was going to say, but. But there are people that have like a quote unquote death experience oh. where they're gone for a hot minute though at the same time. So there are kind of those death experiences out there beyond near death. No, it's very interesting. You know, but I gotta say, like, even for a couple of decades, I've been hearing that, oh, we're on our way out, everything's gonna you know what I mean? Like, you know, by this day we're all gonna be yeah. ascending and all this stuff, and and the enemy keeps moving forward and their whole plan is it doesn't look like this falling apart at all. It looks like they're, you know what I mean, doing a great job controlling the people and poisoning us and just you name it. Show me something, anybody out there, show me something where it looks like they're pulling back on one of these things that is unacceptable. I'll wait, please. Uh, you're going to have a long way. <laughs> they're not pulling back. And sadly, they are bringing the book of revelation and all the prophetic books to life. And I think it's so that we will go and fight and they'll have their population control. But if we have bettered ourselves, we will go to the right place this time when we get kicked out of our bodies fighting this war, because what they're doing is not okay. And I can only imagine what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure I've seen it all to death. It is disgusting what is happening in this world. And I am over it as well. And I am a Leo. So I am definitely also a warrior spirit. And I ain't going down quietly. They're going to hear me roar before I die. But then when I leave, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, so, you know what? Uh, what you're saying is definitely a piece of the puzzle. I just don't want to lose sight of the topic, too. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but I, it's definitely a big piece of the puzzle that we're putting together, for sure. And oh, yeah. Um, I appreciate um, all that. It's if it's hard no to get has... back. Even where we went, though, it's hard to get back to where we wanted to continue with the topic, though. So um, that's that was the problem, I think. I wasn't trying to – I didn't want to lose sight of it, but – you know, sometimes when we veer off, it could be hard to get back. So, like some of the videos I was going to show right now are irrelevant in a way. You know, um, let me see what else we got. Well, I still think everything happens for a reason. I think everything just now happened the way it was supposed to. True. Yep. And we win in the end. We win. They lose because good wins over evil. Because good is life and evil is death. And life wins. And I think with that said, I'm going to go ahead and bounce out of here. Thank you, Fulcrum. I uh, appreciate yep. you coming up here. Thank yep. you so much. If anyone has questions for me, find me on my channel. Definitely subscribe to your channel. Yes, please. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you all. Much love. Much love. Everyone, subscribe over there. I'll put a link to our channel. Is uh, for me? I mean, um, no, that was interesting. Definitely a piece of the puzzle. Outside of that, for me, it's like um, it's hard for me to say good wins and we won. You know what I mean? Like. I, I just don't get that vibe. It's like we got a lot of work to do and it's up to us to do it, you know? So um, I'm just trying to look where good winning here, really, you know? I don't know. I'm not seeing it really, to be honest. I'm not trying to be negative. It's just an angle I like to take here with with this this um, type of stuff, you know? So I don't know. I, I've been hearing it for my whole life, you know? And then the agenda keeps pushing forward and now we're headed towards this ai consciousness high mind thing and they have their all their plans mapped out and um it looks like we're headed that way you know but for me i just want to make sure that i <laughs> not to be selfish but i don't uh i don't want to be reincarnated here i want to do what i need to do to get out of here that's just me though there's plenty of other places to experience 
I'm done with Earth, and I know a lot of you are. So that's what you know the whole point of the topic is. Yeah. So um, I definitely don't think. I know you're not implying this, but uh, to anyone that may be thinking this, I don't think she was undermining or underplaying the severity of the current problems we're facing in this world, in this realm. No, she wasn't. I No, I'm not all right. saying I, I was saying outside yeah. of that. Right, yeah, I know you weren't implying. That's So, yeah, no worries. I wasn't saying that to you, Ian, just in general, just to, I guess, others that might be out there thinking something like that. Um, but I will say, you know, order of operations you know we have we do have to face the issue and the challenge that's in front of us in this world currently but it is good to kind of be ahead of the curve on uh things like you know what happens after we die and acting accordingly with our souls so that we don't get recycled um but for sure there's definitely an order of operations with this stuff when we do have to first face the challenges and the issues here on this earth before you can even worry about the next one to some degree yeah maybe it's it's not a trap maybe we made the decision totally and people have this perspective like it's all like some trap maybe it's not maybe we actually we tricked them they think that they tricked us but really we tricked them mm. to come here you know what i'm saying yeah i mean that's actually the angle i really want to take with this that would probably be best for me to cope with, you know, the things I'm aware of. Like, you know what? They think they tricked me to come here, but I tricked their ass and I'll fucking come. See what I'm saying? And I'll keep coming Flip. back and yeah. doing my thing. I'll live a million more lives here. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Nice. Because you yeah, can kill yeah, my yeah. body. You can't kill my energy. So, you see, I am I really have a balanced perspective on this. But I might hold on to one and talk about one. But really, you know, I'm really, you know, whatever. So again, you know, turning the tables, self empowerment, turning the tables on them, alchemizing, yeah. alchemizing the situation to benefit yourself, to empower yourself, the things that were set against you, you know, alchemizing it and turning it into something that's actually aiding you or is for your betterment, empowering you. Yeah, turning the tables on them. I remember we have the ability to do that. Hey, peace, flow state. Flow state is going to piss us all off. I have a feeling. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got to so give me something to work with, though, first. We just were here for three and a half hours. So, well, I haven't been here for three and a half hours. Well, you've been here at least hey, whatever. You, you got to come in with something. Yeah, you got to come in with something. What are we supposed to tell you? <laughs> That's on you. You click the link. Do you have nothing to say? No. Is it just your birthday? I it was just my birthday. Yeah, happy belated oh, birthday, shit. man. Thank uh, you. How old are you? How young are you? 24. Oh, is it your birthday I, today? Wait, I'm 36. It was yesterday. <laughs> okay. About the same, bro. <laughs> uh, shout out to Joe Martinez. This is his birthday today. Happy birthday, Joe. Oh, yeah. Happy Joe. birthday. Hey, Flow State, the past couple times here, I, I, I'll serve you something. It'll just be casual for now. But like, the past few times <laughs> that you've been on, you've been driving. Uh, do you do you have a job where you like normally drive a lot, or I I just noticed I feel like the past few times I see you on panel you uh, happen to be driving at night. And I actually just got out of the truck right now. Um, but I had to go get cigarettes. No, not necessarily. I think it's mostly just coincidence. Oh, okay, cool. Loste, I, I appreciate the energy you've brought in the past. You've definitely brought pushback at times, but it's pushback okay. that I like to see. Well, I appreciate you appreciating me. And I know that I come with pushback a lot of times, but it's uh, I, 
I don't do it necessarily to be adversarial. Well, sometimes I'm being adversarial. A lot of the times I'm just testing an idea, right? Like that's how, that's how you understand something. You poke at it from this angle, from that angle. See where yeah, that's what I was just doing. That's, that's pretty much my angle too. And that's what I was just doing here. But sometimes people um, will take, you know, something and put me in a box. So, um, uh, Jay, are you there? You haven't said anything in a while. You want to jump in here? I, I don't, I haven't heard him since before we even started that video. I don't know if he's still here. No. Okay. Yeah. So about the soul, about the whole soul recycling thing, I'll say this, I wanted to say it earlier. Um, the whole Saturn moon matrix thing, if people get into that, there is something interesting with it there. I don't necessarily subscribe to it completely, but you look at what's going on. They say it's the moon, Saturn and the earth. And I have a little bit of authority to speak on this. I'm an Aquarius. So the dominant ruling, one of the dominant ruling planets of Aquarius is uh, Saturn. Uh, so I have an affinity for uh, Saturn, no doubt. And there's a triangulation that's going on between Saturn, the moon, and Earth. It makes a triangle. You know, we, we, we were hitting on the triangles earlier with 434 and then 333, the 369. <clears throat> there's a certain significance. I'm not saying I know exactly what it means but if you pay attention it's three nodes three nodes connecting they say the moon's like a satellite basically that's beaming energy between saturn and between earth now there is some type of direct correlation between earth and saturn but it seems that energy would not be as potent or meaningful if there wasn't the moon to be this node that also connected them in this triangulated form It's like a sigil. Nice. Yes. Mm. See, a lot of what we're doing is connecting dots, like literally, just like the constellations. You know, I, I think I think the lady that was up here earlier, Fulcrum, was saying stuff about, or no, 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 no. That was the one of the videos we were watching. I think he was talking about reptilians and the whole alien thing. Uh, some people don't really get down with the whole reptilian shapeshifter stuff. I don't really either, but there is something to the reptilian archetype, the reptilian energy. It's not to say that there's reptilian shapeshifters that run the world, but it's definitely to say that there's something ingrained within reality. And I always like to take it back to the, the two sides of the coin. See, the snake is neutral. The serpent's neutral. It's not bad, but it's not good. But it is bad and it is good not to be paradoxical in an annoying manner but it's just what it is um you know the serpent in the garden of eden being the sinister devilish thing that's lying being manipulative slithering conniving but you also have the kundalini serpents they're holy they're divine they're revered in the east raising the kundalini serpents is you know raising your energy activating your chakras and uh you know be, becoming more in touch with your higher self so you see there's these two different forms of the serpent. There's the manipulative m manipulative evil one. There's also the one that is benevolent and actually serving our energy, serving our spirit. So that's why it's it's always good to have some discernment and not totally buy into some of these different things like the Saturn moon matrix. Although I do think there is something to it. I'm not about to say, oh, there's reptilian bases on the moon and you know, this, this is the type of stuff you'll hear on Gaia TV. They'll talk about the, the dark side of the moon, how there's reptilian bases, and, you know, they're working with gray ETs and Nazis. See, that's just getting into, like, some... That's getting into, like, fan fiction almost. That's getting into, like, Scientology and, and, and creating, uh, you know, these, these fantasy worlds, which is like, okay, sure, we could say that type of stuff, but where's the practicality in it? Where's the utility? How does it really serve? or help what we're trying to do with fighting all the nonsense going on here. So again, I don't dive into the reptilian stuff, but I do acknowledge there is some type of significance to the fact that there was a snake in the Garden of Eden. We have a reptilian brain, which involves our amygdala, which has to do with our fear response. It has to do with fear and survival. You know, there's some type of correlation to the fact that our reptilian brain is dealing with things like fear and they say that, you know, the, these egregores or these, these aliens feed off of, our, off of our fear. So maybe they're not reptilian, but there is some type of alien, strange force that's foreign to us, that's outside of us. It very well could be interdimensional. 
uh, that is is interacting with us on the physical plane through through the microscopic parasites. So everything has a spiritual form. It's like animism. These small little parasites that feed off of us are connected to a bigger uh, spiritual entity, a tulpa or an egregore or an archon. All these are different names for it. But ultimately, it goes back to parasites in the unseen worlds and also in the seen world because we can have the microscopes and we can really actually see these little these little buggers. But um, yeah, it's, it's important that we don't get too wrapped up in the fantasy, fantasy of it because it can be fun to get into some of these things. Where there's legitimate knowledge, there's legitimate information within the Saturn moon matrix. But as soon as people start taking that whole Saturn moon matrix thing and then start running with the whole idea that there's reptilian bases and they're working with Nazis on the dark side of the moon, you know, no one's going to take any of the actual information that's ingrained in with this within this stuff seriously if you take it the route of some fantasy, like I was saying, with the reptilians and the Nazis and all this stuff. And there's people that push that. There's people that push that as like legit, legitimate narratives to throw people off, to put people on these paths where they believe they're fighting some reptilian empire. Recently, I've been hearing a lot about the thing. Yeah, that dude. My yeah, bad. he was talking about the reptilian. No, you no you're good, bad. but... That you no, that's fine. That's perfect because that was the guy earlier. Uh, I was talking about the four three four. He was talking about the reptilians, and it's like that's a narrative I've seen people run with, which I I don't think is ne necessarily very founded on like actual evidence of any reptilian shapeshifters. I will say though, there are quote unquote reptilian beings. I've seen them in other dimensions in the astral plane. There are bug people. There's fish people. There's bird people. There's all types of weird things. So, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. There are some types of interdimensional aliens that fall into the equation. But it's just a matter of, you know, we, we want to stay grounded when we talk about these things. We don't get we don't want to get too far off in talking about different Pleiadian races and all this other nonsense. Because ultimately it's nonsense if they're talking about, again, the reptilians on the dark side of the moon or the Pleiadians that are going to come and save us and, you know, Lord Ashtar or the the Galactic Federation of Light and all this stuff that people talk about. It's a whole bunch of um, it's a whole bunch of like live action role playing if you really get down to the bottom of it. But what is not live action role playing is that there is some type of alien force, whatever you want to call it. It is parasitic and no doubt doesn't want to keep us here so it can keep harnessing our energy. I don't think they're I I personally don't think they're on a moon base. They could be on extra uh, places like a Bond base or something like Bond villain, some you know, somewhere on an island, somewhere or other other land. I don't, I don't believe in this UFO shit. You know, that's me personally. <laughs> yeah, they just operate outside of our frequency yeah. uh, band that we can see, and you know what I mean. Just further lands that we don't have access to. You know, we should check yeah. that we we don't necessarily understand or we've got it. A rough idea about yeah like can you guys hear me yeah okay yeah yeah i don't know trying to figure it out the best i can so um it's a fascinating topic for me absolutely fascinating doesn't make a difference if we know it i don't know I think there's a lot more people to wake up and um i guess but then again you know i don't know do we have an approximate idea of how many are awake i mean we hear a few wake you know well we what information do we think well it depends on what your perception of awake is yeah 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 i mean if it's like us collectively need to do this together then we have a long ways to go. I mean, because that's the whole point. It's like not whatever you do yourself. Okay, great. But I think there's also a collective thing that needs to be done. And um, I don't see, I don't see it. I think people are just wrapped up in their own bubble and them and their, you know, and a lot of us are secluded from the world in a big way, especially these type of communities. And, we don't really see what's going on out there, but um, I'm trying to look for um, like 
everything headed a great direction in general, like stepping outside of myself and me and what I think and wherever I'm going, I'm really taking a look and um, I don't, I just don't see it. It, it. We're headed the wrong direction very fast. So it's like me, I'm an agoraphobe. I don't, I don't talk to Jack shit. I don't see anybody. So I'm not connecting. I, I talk on here. I'll say my bit, but when I'm in the store doing my groceries once, once a week, if that, I don't speak to Jack shit about any of this. So I don't feel I'm doing my bit. I feel quite ashamed, but I, I don't go out uh, with a, placard or anything you know so i just wonder what others are doing and i see idiots throwing paint around doing their shit but i don't see uh, I, I don't feel i'm doing my bit mm -hmm. just saying you know i'm an example of someone who's not actually in talk with anybody out in real life in the real world I'm not communicating with anybody i hope there's not thousands of others doing the same as i am you know the silver lining of things going to shit, like Ian said, though, is that people are noticing it quicker now, too. Like, 10 years ago, fuck, 10 years ago, I was basically still groggy as shit. Yeah, well, all I know is that Jay Phillips left. All I know is that um, I care less about what the enemy's doing more than ever i mean the other day was the first time i looked at something that's been going on and it really affected me people it really fucked me up i'm not gonna lie you put a video out and, the other day and i was curious sorry to speak over you i was curious what what you were on 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 about you had such a a, a real thing to say you were holding back do you remember your short clip you put out the other day yeah, sorry, my internet. Heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I had to speak in because, code because I really can't mention it here. Okay. Um, I know you emailed me. I didn't know. You didn't seem like you wanted the link, so I didn't send it to you. But... Oh, no, I did, actually. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, I'll send it to you. Thank you. I, I could put it in the private chat here, too. Where yeah, you could put it in the private YouTube. chat. Um, <clears throat> But, yeah, it fucked me up. So... Um. So that kind of led me into this topic as well and, and this type of conversation. If I didn't see that, I probably wouldn't even be talking about this right now. But, you know, I've definitely been thinking about this reincarnation trap going to the light, all this stuff that's some big trap, you know. I think it's a fascinating topic to me. Definitely resonates with me. And um, it's, I'm curious to see where people stand on it. I'm going to do a vote in the chat on this. Real quick. Are we stuck? Okay, everyone vote on that one right there. What's up, Cage? We got um, Jay Phillips no trying to come back. Yeah, Kate, I don't know where Cage went. He was there earlier. I, he hasn't come back. So. Jay Phillips says his device isn't connected. But we have some other videos here. I don't know if yeah, we want to yeah. pull them up. Yeah, fuck it. Let's throw on the video. Oh, there he is. Okay. I'm trying to find my... I always lose shit, man. It pisses me off. So... Yeah, I just... I literally just lost my... Uh, I was drinking my drink before uh, I go to sleep here in a little bit. I was drinking my sleep drink that I like to get. And... Uh, I misplaced it. I'm looking everywhere around my house. It's like I just had it. I don't know where the hell it went, man. So I feel you on that misplacing stuff. Bro, all the time. So <laughs> did... Oh, shit. One second. Does anybody have any videos? This Saturn Moon Matrix, actually, there's a... it's hard to find videos on it. I found one, but 
if anybody has any links, uh, definitely toss it in the chat on this uh, Saturday Moon Matrix. I have some other stuff, though. There's this video here. I'll say something else about the Saturn Moon Matrix real quick. Um, it gets into the Black Cube. Uh, I was talking about the Black Cube. Re- oh, I was talking on uh, another stream earlier today about the Black Cube, and Cage was there. Um, if if you see, if you pay attention, you can see that the Black Cube is symbolized in Judaism. Uh, uh, certain forms of Judaism, the uh, Jewish people will wear a Black Cube on their forehead. And there's the black cube of Mecca mm. with that like piece of a star rock or whatever the piece of asteroid they claim is inside the uh, the black box in Mecca, the black cube, that, that which the Muslims walk in circles around. And then uh, mm. there's also these black boxes they're putting up everywhere um, for quote unquote climate change to record the environment and how humans are interacting with the environment. They're putting these black boxes everywhere, kind of like the black boxes that are used in like a plane, if there's a plane crash, to record everything. Um, it's also just like that black pillar, that black rectangle obelisk thing that appears in Space Odyssey 2001, um, which the monkeys like get all excited about when they see the black, the black rectangle hit the ground and start appearing places. Um, yeah, exactly right there, the black box on their forehead. So there's a there's a like there's like a hexagon, there's like a some sacred geometry form supposedly on Saturn that you can see. Um and I guess this this uh this cube is somewhere ingrained within that hexagon, some black hexagon type square um cube thing that is on Saturn. I might be butchering it a little bit. I haven't really looked into this stuff in a while, but from what I remember, you can basically see like all the major religions have some type of symbolism, which they pay homage to this black cube. And this black cube has to do with Saturn and the whole Saturn moon matrix. So uh, another thing to consider with this whole topic is Saturn is Kronos. It's the time bearer. The uh, the rings of Saturn are the rings of time. So, <clears throat> it, of all planets that would be uh, utilized when it comes to recycling souls, it makes sense that it would be Saturn of all things because Saturn in mythologies uh, was it was Kronos, was the time bearer, the the keeper of time. Uh, Saturn has to do with constraints, the energy of constraints constraining our soul, constraining our energy to a certain realm. Um, In fact, you could even maybe say that the rings of Saturn is the, uh, the wheel of life, which we're stuck in, or they try to keep us stuck in. So yeah, there's a couple elements which are very interesting, which make this whole Saturn moon matrix thing make a little sense, whether it's the black cube, whether it's the astrological elements of what Saturn represents as a planetary or a celestial body, all these things kind of play into it. So I think, I think it's hard to say there's not something here. It's mysterious and maybe it's not fully put together with what it means. You know, we, we can't say it's a solid thing, but the, the, the Saturn moon matrix definitely has some substance to it, whatever direction we want to take it. There's something there. There's definitely something to be explored through the symbols, mm-hmm. undeniably. <clears throat> yep. Sometimes we got to get, you know, in certain areas to really um, expand and add more pieces to the puzzle, you know? And right. um, someone just mentioned Quasi Luminous. And that's who I've heard of with this. I've never watched a video. So why not pull up the channel and check it out? He's supposedly. You've heard of him? Yeah, I have. I have. I've also heard people say something similar to quasi luminous, which is the homo luminous. You know, they, they say that we are, quote unquote, the homo sapien. Well, after we evolve out of the homo sapien, some say that we become the homo luminous, which is the astral body. It's the light body. It's the uh, the spirit form of ourselves. That would be the homo luminous rather than the homo sapien. Because we're still kind of in like a primal, uh, like animalistic form, even though we're like uh, levels above animals, we still are contained within that animalistic frame to a certain degree, you know, with the uh, uh, 
the need to feed, the need to fuck, and you know, all these, these animalistic instincts that still exist within us, even though we've become like a higher being, quote unquote. Hmm. My bad, I'm kind of, I, I, I'll go on these little streams of thought. Uh, bro, you're on fire, bro. Okay, I appreciate it. Cause I go no, on these you're little bringing a lot of, to the table. Okay, Trust wonderful. Me. Wonderful. I appreciate I, it. I, 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 yeah, I go on these little streams of thought, but sometimes I realize I don't have like a definitive conclusion to what I was saying, so I kind of just drop it or let it, you know, pick up with someone else. Uh, but that's that's the beauty in channeling. Now, I'm not saying I'm necessarily channeling, but uh, we we channel sometimes whether we realize it or not when it comes to different information. We really pull from the ether. We really speak intuitively, and it's it's a wonderful thing. One thing I'll say about this recycle earth thing is that I went deep into past life regressions. And um, a lot of times they'll go to a life and um, the guide will say, now go back to before you entered this body in this life and tell me what's happening. And pretty much every single time they're like, feel like they're trapped. They're like, oh my God, I got to go back again. And they start crying. It's like this, this trap vibe is, is kind of there in a lot of different things with past life regression, near death and all this. It's like, um, this regret, like, oh no, I got to go back type of thing, you know? So let's pull this channel up. Jay Phillips keeps trying to join. Something's wrong with his connection or something. Okay. I've never watched this channel. So again, don't beat me up because I'm showing this guy's video. I don't necessarily agree with him. I'm trying to get back on this topic. This is the guy that I've heard his name many times um, being talked about with this whole theory. And it's just that he's speaking for himself, not me. Okay. But there might be something here. Who knows? Is this the video to watch, guys? Does anybody know which which video we should watch here? He doesn't have much. Um, the Black Sun, Satan, and the Garden of Eden. This is all the videos he has. Okay, so he only has. Okay, he has a lot of videos. Okay. You're being extracted. Let's check. Wow, this guy's got a lot of. This is yeah. This is very. Um, Alchemy magic. Which one? Did somebody pick one of these out. Let's see. Okay, we'll pick one right here. Saturn explored. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be filming this at all. Start off with the logbook. You write down the date. You write down 10 seconds. You write down... What you're going to speak into the sun, you got to keep it completely selfless. All right. And uh, day two, put the date 20 seconds. You're going to write down, right beside that, exactly what you're going to speak into the sun, your intent. It's that the sun wants to know what do you intend to do today? Not your confessions, not your wishes. Day three, the date, 30 seconds. What you've spoken to the sun or what you're going to speak into the sun. And you keep a logbook increasing by 10 seconds each day. This is a book that you're going to have to continue forward to 44 minutes at 10 seconds increasing. Hey, that's interesting. Uh, what's up, Jay? Hey. Uh, because I remember when Michael Reagan came up here last time, remember he was talking about you have like so much time when the sun's up to talk about what your intentions, you know, like ask. I don't know what it is, but. I'm quiet. Hey man, I, I pulled, I pulled up quiet. a good video for everybody to start with in the private chat. It's that last link I dropped. Okay. And this is one of the. I like his older stuff. He's a lot more uh, informative. He's gotten. He's gotten really. Um. Okay. It, 
I I feel like impatient, you know what I mean, with other people. So the, you, you'll hear a lot of anger in his voice in a lot of his videos, but he, he definitely has a uh, deeper side to him. Interesting. I'll pull that up right now. We got it right here. The seal, like the seal of Saturn that you see over here. There's some symbols that go along with Saturn. All your energy is going to Saturn, whether you like it or not. You're a holographic projection of Saturn and you can't see it. All the world is a stage. You're on a stage. The Earth doesn't actually exist in the capacity that you think of it. Um, the computer transcends all the dimensions. It's the all-seeing eye at the top of the, the sky. NASA can see it when they point their telescopes up. They can see that there's like a glass dome up there or something. And you're literally inside of a little farm right now. And you're a holographic projection. Um, try and picture your heart, which is a star at your heart. You're like a fractal of the ocean of consciousness. And you've been broken off and put into this fishbowl, and now you're being beaten with a, a wave, the word of God. You're being beaten down with this frequency, which keeps you stuck in this, in this farm, in this little farm. Part of this farm is real. Like, uh, let's say, for example, the asteroid belt is real, and there was something that was a solar system here at some point, and this Borg-like. If any, I don't know. If anyone needs to pause it, let me know. machine half uh lower dimensional type being which is in the flesh and higher spiritual type being connected with the machine and it needs a specific element like gold that's what they made humans to mine gold and the only planet that they ever show you that's gold is saturn um so clearly if we're using paper money and all of our gold is clearly gone all the gone there's no gold in fort knox everybody knows that and that's why you're working with paper in your hand and you go to the to the bank, they you cash your check, they give you paper back. It's paper, it's all numbers in a computer. <laughs> this the computer right. is drawing all your energy out of you. The computer is completely conscious. It's it's pretty scary when you think about it that you've been doing X and O's on your letters to people that you love, and the X is the looking down on top of a pyramid. The pyramid would be the all seeing eye or the South Pole. That they're showing you of Saturn. So when you picture Saturn, Satan, this computer that you're trapped in, this is a partially uh, uh, solid world, and you would be the the uh, the holographic part of it. All the world is a stage. You're being projected into life by this transformer up here that you, that, that you call the sun, which is two nautical miles. In diameter using a sexton and it's 3,000 miles away from you so is the moon it's moving inward and outward across the flat earth plane and it's what keeps us animated without the sun you wouldn't be able to eat or grow your plants to eat it turns your water into wine you just water your plants give it some sun and some love and you could eventually grow some grapes or whatever and make turn your water to wine this is the sun above your head that's doing it and all your energy is going to the black hole sun, which is Saturn. You can see the cubes are on everything. See, as a corner office, see the cubes? That's looking like the Chevron. When you look at the Chevron logo, it's the corner of the cube. You can't miss it. It's that the cube is so integrated into society right now, you don't see it. You can't see it. It's, it's on everything. It's that you graduate from school. You put the cube on your head. It's that you get married. You put wedding rings on your finger. You're wearing a ring around and a necklace around your neck. These are all symbols of Saturn. I mean, an earring is a symbol of Saturn. You just can't see it. But all the world is a stage, and you are trapped on this stage. Time is money. You can see this is the sine wave. When you see the seal of Saturn, you're seeing this is the sine wave, www, the World Wide Web. It's connected with the computer. It's that you are in the machine. This is... A Wow, just that's super deep right there, guys. I'm not gonna lie, that was a huge mic drop right there. He's on Big it. Time. He's on it. Big time. Yeah. Extremely interesting. Wow. A machine here, like when you see the Borg Collective, that's what you're really looking at here. Um, 
I imagine they've captured essence that which we call the earth that's trapped in here running machinery. Uh, you're trapped in your carbon 666 flesh pack by 50 trillion prison cells. You've been fractalized. So there's a star at your heart that's fractalized into cells. And this goes infinitely up and down in every direction. And it, the computer transcends all the dimensions. And the computer does respond to blood. Now, you can't say this is an evil computer. It's you collectively on the farm have taken this computer uh, because the, your rulers, they're being drawn down this way to drag us all down with them. But this is a very small bunch of people. And if you get the whole collective of people and you are a collective, you just don't see it yet. But you see how news travels. That's because you're a collective. If somebody said, look, there's a, something crazy happening, it would eventually get to the other side of the of the of the farm that you're on. And there's a lot of people on the farm right now. And you are eating food that I can drag across the water using only a magnet. It's all your pasta, rice, flour. It's, it's all your food. All your GMOs are, are genetically modified to genetically modify you into a new type of human, the next version of the human. You're going to be turned into a human point, whatever, 7.0, whatever version uh, program that, look, you watch your TV programs, you're being programmed, you go to school, you put a cube on your head, you've been programmed specifically to fall into a playing field, okay? The symbols are rubbed in your face nonstop, so when you see this, you know, like the Freemason stuff, you're seeing the sine wave. It's a sine wave. You see the Jesus face, it's a sine wave. You see the dollar sign, it's a sine wave. It's all pointing towards the word of God. And this is your God. It's your genetic makeup. It's the four-faced God in charge of your four-letter DNA. They call it Yah, Yahweh, and your molecular makeup is exactly that. It's clear what's going on here. So if you really want to get this computer to do something for you, can put your blood into it this is transcends all the dimensions the, it's the symbols are right there <clears throat> the world wide web okay is the computer you're linked to the computer and you have power to, to to mold this playing field if you want to when i put my blood on paper and put it into the computer that everybody should do like what i'm doing is spill your blood over your intent because only the devil hides his intent everybody knows that you can't not know that everybody knows only the devil I his intent. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by placing your blood on a piece of paper in the capacity, which you see by typing in the videos, blood over intent, you'll see just write out. I intend to worship all. I intend to usher in heaven and earth, put three drops of blood on it. Cause three is the cube. That's why you put over a number of three to make it cubed. It's because you need three uh, directions to make a cube. You need to be going this way, this way, and this way to make a cube. That's the three. So <clears throat> what I'm telling you is that what I've noticed is that people would call this magic. When you go to church and you take the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, you're taking the body and the, the, of this Christ is, you can't see it. It's Saturn. Jesus is a little Zeus. All right. People like to say, well, no, there's a real Jesus. Well, listen, if you're part of a bigger thing that you think you are, then I would imagine that you were here as a, as an extension of that, and you're supposed to be acting like it and worshiping each other because everybody's sleeping. So you hate everybody that's sleeping around you, and you've forgotten who you are. I know who I am, and I know why I'm here. I'm here to tell you that you could take control of this computer system here by placing your blood into it and showing the computer, uh, look, you're on a farm right now. You're in a machine, okay? You're a holographic projection, okay? There's probably a semi-solid world around here that we're projected onto, OK, we get our energy from the sun. So there's going to be everything that we're. A part Someone say something. Uh, Nathan's going to come up. You want to say something? So yeah. he's going to hit the link. Maybe you want to turn your 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 choppy, bro. Uh, Maybe you want to turn your camera off, uh, Jay. Okay, you're good now. You're good now. You yeah, you're better now. Um I was going to say this and this is exactly what, you know, Bro Sanchez has been uh uh teaching uh, before he got on the whole Hebrew topic. Um the the clown clone colors uh mm. podcast he did. That's that's exactly what he's talking about is sculpted light bodies, right? Right. Just food for thought. 
Hey, what's up, Nathan? Welcome. Hey, hey, guys. I've been here since the beginning in the chat and just really listening. I wasn't going to call in, but uh, I wanted to add something quick about Saturn that when I found this out a few years ago, it totally blew my mind. Do you know that if you take the land mass of what, okay, if what they tell us we're on is correct, whether it's flat or round or whatever, the land mass of our of Earth, from what we've been told, would fit perfectly into the cube of Saturn like a snug little fit. It's the exact same square wow. miles in diameter as the all the land, including the oceans on Earth. You could literally set us down into that cube put a roof over it and make us think we were on earth. You know, that was one of the my, wow. most mind blowing things I ever heard after I had the near death experience and this entity kept communicating with me. That's one, of the things, that's one of the things he told me. I said, what? I said, where are we? And he played the song Saturn by uh, sleeping at uh, last. Can you rewind? I'm very fascinated right now with what you're saying. So you had a near-death experience. I think you shared this yeah, before. I, but, yeah, I had a near-death experience in uh, 2013, and I encountered okay. a human-appearing uh, being, male, who told me his name was Sam, right? So this this continued on, wow. but uh, there was – so I started – what he was doing was communicating with me through the random shuffle on the Pandora Music app. This started during the near, he said, I can communicate with you through music. And, and I was getting actual intelligent responses. I don't share them anymore. And I, I closed the Facebook group where I'd posted all because I don't trust the source of this being. You see what I'm saying? I think he may be pernicious. But one thing, the, the, the mind blowing stuff he told me was he said, when I asked him, he played the song Saturn. And then what I would do, I would kind of go into a little bit of a relaxed state, and then I would hear his thoughts. And he said to me, Earth, you're in the cube of Saturn. So when I went into Wikipedia to see what the dimensions were, it fits perfectly. Like, what if this were not on our Earth? We're actually up there, and we're not even home. And this is some sort of film studio earth to fool us into thinking we're on our planet i mean i'm telling you I'm... <laughs> so that's why they show wow. us all the saturn shit because that's where we are and we got to this... get to our earth we got to get to the real earth the Is real this kind of the crater planet. earth thing too or no no, he said we were on the Saturn, on that, you know, in that cube, literally physically located there in some sort of Earth replica, and we were being tricked. We were in captivity. We were in bondage with these beings that put us there, and that our true family and our humans are back on Earth. Mm, that's the vibe I get. I don't know it's resonating See, with me. <clears throat> And then what they do is when you die, if you were on Earth and you died there, they put you, they grab you here. They stick your consciousness into the fake Earth on Saturn in the cube and make you think your life is still going on. It's oh, they're a, like it's kidnapping a, a, people from like the regular Earth and bringing them here like type thing? At, at death. Wow. You have crazy. to die for them to grab your consciousness. And then they can somehow through technology reconstruct what we thought was our earth. That's why shit don't make sense now mm. because too many of us are waking up and questioning. That's what Sam told me that this was what we were in. What we thought was earth is an alien construct designed to look like our earth that we actually come from or lived at one wow. time. But this is the after death realm. This is the underworld. So you're saying we all our died. souls were kidnapped. Wow. Our souls were kidnapped by aliens when we died, and stuck back in. That's what the near death experience is. That's why I had it. They put you back in, but you're back in here. You are dead on the real Earth. 
So these were some of the concepts he was giving me. And I'm telling you, it blew my effing mind. I was like, so I, so I don't know if this is another deception or if it's the truth. I keep it on the table like I do everything. I don't know what this thing is. And we have so many narratives and so many possibilities. But we, we've got to start thinking there could be. That's why oh. the maps don't make sense, and the and the Mandela um, geographics could be. We lost you, Nathan. Um, hey, your Nathan. your audio cut out. Come back, buddy. Come yeah, back. don't believe the. I mean, Whoa, not on this. Wow, that just totally blew my mind. It really has me thinking. So that's why, for me, I just think that there's. I don't want to lose sight of this topic, Nathan. We lost your audio, but when you come back, I definitely want you to continue. Um. I don't want to lose sight of this concept, you know. It's like the Mandela with the with the um, islands not being islands anymore. It, it, it's it's it making sense, kind of, to my little brain. Gee, right? Wow. It would make it a lot of this would make sense. Hey, um, these changes with the man. I feel like, honestly, with this topic, I also feel like the Mandela effect's directly connected. I'm just trying yeah, to connect linking. the dots. That's linking. Know? Yeah. So um, that's why I know some people like, oh, no, we already won. Everything's great or this or that. Like, I get it. But for me, I feel like there's some dots to connect with all this. We need Nathan back up here, though, man. Yeah, please. That was back. fire. Oh, a, that was man. like. Oh. And, you know, for me, let's let's really think about this, people. For me, with the way the world is and, and not trying to be negative, but certain way things go here. And just like a lot of things, like I would rather it be that than this just be the original thing. And like, this is actually, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't feel like home. I mean, we have all had that feeling, right? This, it doesn't feel even no matter where I am or who I'm around. I mean, I'm not trying to, it's like, I never feel really at home, you know, it's like Dorothy's I'm not trying to be house. negative. Dorothy's house gets taken away and Wizard of Oz done it go up in the air. It's right. like it's going somewhere else, you know. Wow. What a Sorry about that, guys. I got yeah, totally man. knocked offline. I got totally knocked offline. That's weird that that, ha that rarely happens here. Are we're you definitely in clown world. Uh, uh, we're in, we're Nathan. in idiocracy. Nathan, you're really blowing my mind right now. I'm so glad you came up here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to drop that in because I think the more of these anomalous experiences we all have individually and collectively, we need to just say it. We speak it. We, we, I'm not saying that's true or this being can be trusted or any of that stuff. I'm just saying we got to get as bad as we can and if anyone has had any kind of anomalous thing where there was a near death or out of body come and share that because just throw let's throw everything on the table let's be detectives of this reality and figure out which one of these multi-million narratives we are drowning in narratives of what our reality is so to pick apart the truth of that we're only going to be able to count on our own our own intuition and I think all what we the data that we could collect like the true scientific process we we get a hypothesis okay this reality isn't what we've been told it is and then we collect data and we test test out different theories and but keep everything on the table keep an open mind and think outside the box and you know what I'm sorry to the Christians that get offended if I say this from the trouble we're in here we got to start thinking outside the cross too I mean, I hope Jesus does come and save us. But if he doesn't, we got to have a backup plan. Come on. Our children are not safe here. They're being brutalized and murdered and tore. I mean, we got to do something. As adults, we know there's something wrong here. It doesn't make sense. And I think we have to really band together at this time like you're doing that's why I, I just i feel like that's where it's coming you know it's gonna come through us we're going to have a breakthrough moment where we're gonna get the picture of exactly what the nature of this reality is and then because we did all this work and research and hashing out ideas and seeing what theories made sense and with it we're gonna know what action to take in that very moment so we'll know, okay, if it's a reincarnation soul trap, then we're going to take this action. 
we're not going to know if we do die here. See, I want to have a plan for if I die here now, like I did in 2013. I don't want to be caught with my pants down like I was that night. I had no clue what I was up against, what I was dealing mm. with. I probably signed every goddamn evil contract with this being that you could, you know, I was probably, he probably thought, what a sucker, here he comes. I'm going to go for this guy. I'm going to really mess with him. And that's what he did. You know, he messed with me all these, he still not, doesn't leave me alone. So the, whatever is in this place, it ain't playing. It is not human friendly. <laughs> you know, so I think, you know, like for me now, what I'm going to do, and I, and I just decide this, like if I were to die tonight, at that moment when I realize again, like I did before, that I was no longer in my body, before anything can come at me or try to recycle me or show me dead relatives or whatever it might do at that point. Like if Jesus ain't there to greet me and I'm in some shady place and there's some spooky entities or whatever, I'm going to say butterfly cluster or bust. I know the coordinates to where that place is. If that's what they tell us is true, it's probably a lie. But I'm going to have an actual GPS destination to send my soul to get the fuck out of here. And if there ain't no real butterfly cluster, when I get there, I'll make one. I just got to get away from this place. And so that's what Paula told me about butterfly clutch. I was like, because see, my mother was a Sagittarius. So to me, that was Paula. And my mother's name was Paula, who died of lymphoma at 45. So I thought, mom is telling me, Nathan, if you die here, son, I'm in the butterfly. Just think butterfly cluster. Don't let anything stop you from getting to that destination. I think, I don't think it's a place, Ian. I think it's a realm. I think it's a dimension of refuge is what I'm feeling. So we're going to have to have a place to go heal. We've all been traumatized in this place beyond what we can even imagine now. I think it would take a thousand years just to heal the shit that went down here. I don't think we realize how traumatized we are on a daily basis having grown up in this insane, dangerous, violent, uh, loveless reality. Humans have to have love. Most humans here don't have true love. And we're sick and we're diseased and we're, we die here. So this reality, whatever you can say for it, it murders us. We die here. It kills us. It claims us. And we are immortal. I don't believe we die. That's how I know there's something wrong here. I just don't ever see an end to Nathan. I think that little boy that was born should be able to go on forever and continue to have experiences and grow and have joy. What is this place? And how the hell did I wind up here? There's something wrong here. I worked on a show called Sex in the City. I did PR for them once. It was not called Sex and the City. So now mm. I'm dealing with a reality that can not only, things like that can change that I've been told is impossible, but the actors on the show have no memory of what it used to be. Like, how can I even trust they're real? Like, how much of this could be a projection into our consciousness, you know, like part organic and part virtual? If we're dealing with an alien species that has the technology and the way to implement this into our consciousness, it just feels we're being messed with here. You know, we're as an animal, the other animals aren't in distress like the human animal. And yet that whatever's running this doesn't care that we're in distress. In fact, it, it's torturous, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at now is I want to be prepared in case I do die here to have a plan B, some actual physical destination with coordinates that I can make sure I get far from here. <laughs> so, you know, pick whatever cluster you want. But it just is a, because we, we can't, if I get in the car, I have to have coordinates to know where I'm going or I, I have to know my destination or I'm just going to be wandering around in the car till I run out of gas and some, you know, entity grabs me so i'm thinking if it's the same way in that in after death that 
you need an actual physical destination to go to to send your consciousness to avoid getting trapped with their big net and pulled back into their little game. The You know, um, yeah, we all have our role in this fight, and um, I definitely, you know, I, I see I see what you're saying, man. I can't lie. I get more of the well, negative vibe, you know. It, there's some people out there. Well, yeah, no, I'm I'm really but resonating we can be, in a way. Ian, we can be in a negative. We can be in a negative place and not vibe negative. You know, I think what what is mm. good here is obviously coming from us. It's not right. this place or this system generating goodness. Oh the only goodness is here is fight. what's coming right out of us. That was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard in my life, Nathan. Ever. That's worth a thumbs up. That was gigantic right there. Uh, Thank you. I yeah. needed that. Nathan, you are magic, man. Wow. Well that was yeah, so when you say, oh, but it's it's got, yeah, it's real bad, this reality, but then it has its beautiful moment. Well, because of you, you're here. That's why it has a beautiful moment. That beautiful moment's come from you, not this place. And if it is a movie studio, because, I mean, to me, why, if, if, if we are in an actual... I, we don't know whether we're in something that's technology or organic. If it is technology, it's masterful at replicating an organic reality. Perhaps what we, what, what the only what rea organic realities are all created anyway in some technical way. We don't even know that. You know, how deep this thing goes. I, I've often had a feeling that I'll tell you another theory I've had, and it's that. It feels to me that what this thing is about, it has to be the conquering of death of the human being. I don't believe that a human being is something that should die. The repository of that being and that experience and that art and that beauty and the, you know, and maybe that's why the Bible said we used to live five, six hundred years. You know, maybe that's the natural human so by the time you reach 500, you might be ready to go. And all your family gathers. You make the decision. I'm going to let go now. And they all gather. Grandpa, call you, and everybody loves you on you. And you go. And you're perfectly. This is, an, uh, this is some sort of corruption of what the human experience is supposed to be. I truly feel that. And we may be dying at 80 because they're poisoning our food our water, every chance, our medicines, every chance they get to make sure we don't live long enough to figure out their fucking trick. Die before, before they question it. And I think that's why they shorten our lifespan. I don't think we're dealing with, I think these aren't human, whatever it is. I don't think this is a human world we're in. It's very well, alien. I, I don't when people say they're not human, I kind of think, well, they are human, but what's occupying their human space isn't necessarily what's occupying ours. No, I'm not you talking about I mean? the I'm not talking about the humans here. I'm talking about whatever the unseen forces oh, yeah. that has oh, put yeah. us in a false reality. Well, I what type of creator would let that happen? What type of creator would create a world like this and let somebody take total control like this in the first place? So it has well, there to be wouldn't be. There wouldn't be. This is what I'm saying. If you if you look at like what Jesus said in the Bible, it's fascinating because a lot of people don't talk about this. The main thing I get from it is he said two things that blew my mind. He said, "You." He's telling the old Jews all around him. He said, "Your your father is Satan. He was a murderer and a liar from the beginning." And then he said, I have the keys to death and hell. Well, you guys, you don't need keys to a place you ain't living. I think what he was trying to tell them is you are in a hell. You are in a land of the dead. I'm coming to try to get you out of here. Uh, th this is your God. Because he said, your, your father is Satan. So he's obviously coming from a different father than the one that was here. 
that created this. So that brings in the whole Gnostic Demiurge thing. You know, are the Archons these, you know, this alien, non -human? when I say alien, I mean non-human. I don't necessarily mean outer space because there may not even be an outer space. That may be a planetarium sky we're looking at to fool us. We just have no idea where we even are physically. That's a problem. <laughs> if you're being lied to about where you actually are and you're having doubts about that, then your entire, the entire foundation of your world is one deception. And we see it layered on top of layer. To be able to get out of this is like a Gordian knot. And the only way to untie it, uh, Alexander the Great showed us, was you cut through it with a sword. You can't untie that knot. It's impossible. All the religions, Jesus coming back. You've got a billion people waiting on an antichrist to show up so Jesus can come. Isn't that interesting? He has to, the bad guy has to come first. Ooh. So, you, you know, so you, so what if the good guy came first? Nobody would believe him because they're expecting an antichrist. So I look at those stories and I think, wow, you have really, it would take an AI or some kind of genius intelligence to design a deception as complete as this thing is we are all experiencing every day it is genius in its ability to deceive confuse depress uh you know and just keep you in a never-ending loop the hopes you get up you get all so hopeful and you think you're on to a break and then dashed again you know it's like it's almost like it feeds on your 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 grow your desire for the truth you know it puts it puts the lie out there so i don't know that's why i'm butterfly cluster or bust you know if i were to die tonight that's what i'm going to do because at least you know i'm taking control of where my consciousness is thinking at least and in that moment maybe i can slip through <clears throat> by doing that by by using the coordinates they've given us against them, even if it's not true, I'll create something that is that. And and so what I'm just saying is, if you get if you were to die, say, because I've thought this too. What if there's a a a, a catastrophe, you know, sort of a an extinction event, and we all go at one time, don't even know what hit us. That's the time to kind of have an idea once you realize, oh shit, I'm not in my body anymore some physical location where we all could think and make sure we all get there as a rendezvous point, not a final destination, just far enough away from this place that we can find each other and then regroup and figure out what we're going to do next. Because when you people die, they, they, the most they're going to have is a vague idea of I'm going to hope to go to heaven. Well, what, who's heaven, the Muslim heaven, the Jewish heaven, the Mormon heaven, the, you know, the, I, I think we have to be specific and choose something that's actually a true destination physically. Because what if it is all physical and real and you got to actually go through a portal and get to a certain physical place in the galaxy? You know, I don't know. I'm just trying to have an insurance, a backup plan. So whatever I'm greeted with, I'm prepared this time. I don't get taken advantage of and jerked around by some, I don't know what he was. Now I'll say this. He was human looking. For all I know, guys, that Sam could be sitting in a government facility somewhere and be a human just like me and just doing new technology that they have that we or technology they've always had. We didn't know they had. You know, I've thought sometimes, is there a parallel human civilization on our terrain? off the other side of the Arctic wall where they're human like us, but they're advanced by thousands of years. And they use that technology to study us or keep us in this, you know, lower state for whatever reason. You know, I thought that too, are other humans doing this to us that are beyond our physical, you know, so, so I don't know. I've also thought, is this a time travel type thing? Because if the resurrection were to happen, if in the future they found out a way to resurrect people from the past or to avert some direction that the earth took at a certain time, they would have to, they, they would have to come back when you were still alive to do it. 
And I had this sense, is that what all is? Are we going to, th- okay, deja vu. The, to me, the only thing that explains that is I already lived this life once. So what if the resurrection is actually something coming back through time to when we d- were alive thousands of years ago and it we are existing in this second time through, but our memory doesn't remember it, except there's certain moments when you remember when it happened before, and that's deja vu. And the reason we're alive a second time living the same life is that's the only way they can come back and make sure you don't die this time. You're given the cure for death. It could all be scientific. Can you imagine in the future, if I figured out a way to go back in time and raise the dead, I would do it. Yeah, we could already be in the future. That's an option on the table as well. That really resonates with me as well. So I I just think the more we can brainstorm and put out there, I don't know what it is. But Mm. like I said, I feel like the main thing is religion really traps us. I think it makes us just keep accepting whatever's going to happen. And if a billion people are expecting Armageddon, then what if all those people thinking it's going to happen is what makes it happen? You know, if we if we can, if we do have powers of creating on reality, they are literally creating a hell on earth confrontation with yeah, massive if books, death. If religion said it's going to be great, you guys are going to, you guys are going to, you know, manifest all the beautifulness in the world, and it's going to be so great and loving, and you know, that we'd be living in paradise. I th- I think, possibly mm-hmm. at least. You know, so yeah, I agree with well, you. There, there's no reason why we shouldn't be living in a. This world could be an absolute paradise. We just the way it is. We have everything we need. I yeah. I don't understand it. I don't I don't get what this thing is. Hey, uh, it absolutely yeah. perplexes me. <laughs> can, can we finish uh, watching that video? It might bring a little bit of insight to what you guys are talking about. Yeah, no, we will. Uh, Brecken just jumped on. Uh, fascinating. You know, there are a lot of people out there that they think it's great. You know, they're actually happy and they think it's, you know, so I'm not trying to sound negative people. I know some people, you know, they have things going on and they can't really, you know, run with some of these perspectives. But we're just brainstorming on what cost we could be going on here, you know. So um, we're here, and um, I want to get to the bottom of what's going on, you know? Uh, Brecken, did you want to say something before we continue the video? No, sir. Um, Nathan pretty much said everything I was going to say in the beginning, so please continue. Yeah, that was pretty powerful, Nathan. Um, I really – that was really powerful, man. Well, you know, it comes out of me being really sick. I've, I've spent a couple of days in a lot of pain, physical pain from this bad infection. And, you know, when you go through like 48 hours of no sleep and constant pain, it really does something to you. You know, I can take an extraordinary amount of mental anguish, emotional pain, but my Achilles heel is physical pain. I am more vulnerable in that state. And and it just, it's in that time when you really, you know, I, I start asking questions. Well, why do we have to suffer? Especially if we're some simulation. What, what asshole would put you in a simulation where you would have suffering? The most, I mean, when you could just give pleasure. It, it, none of it makes sense to me. But I, I, I really feel that, th- that, it's probably right in front of our face. And the thing about people, uh, you know, enjoying this world, well, maybe that's the problem. Maybe we're not supposed to. Maybe that's the lesson. Maybe we're supposed to come to the realization that, you know, as long as one of my brothers or sisters is suffering, I'm suffering. Maybe that's, we just want it to keep going instead of all stopping and saying, this isn't okay. 
in any any way, shape, or form. And if we're Bingo. out there, you know, and then we're consenting to letting it keep going because we're going to make the best of it and try not to think about all the nine million people that starve to death every year, which I, which is the main thing I, I loved about what we went through the last two years, that these people were literally just trying to convince us how much they cared for human life. And I know nine million of us starve to death every year. They don't give a shit. You know, I mean, none of this, this place, you, you get to a point spiritually, I think, where you hit the roof of whatever this thing is, and then it's just chipping away at your heart. You know, when I think about the, that's me in the little picture there, when I was five years old, that for me, for that child to survive in this reality, I had to basically close my heart, shut down go to 20% capacity to just survive here, just childhood and, you know, and, and effed up parents and stuff. So in abuse and, you know, and then they find Adam Walsh's head behind our house in Vero Beach, Florida. I mean, you know, it's been like a traumatic thing for me. I can't handle a place where that shit happens. So for me, I've decided either this thing has to change either there has to be some kind of intervention divine or extraterrestrial or interdimensional or otherwise or i got to get out of here I, I i i to me i can't grow any more spiritually here i'm just going to keep suffering now and i feel like at that point you know, I've, I had to do this surrender where I just fell down in my living room and I just cried. And I was like, if you are out there and you, God, and you care anything about me, I need your help. We are desperate here. If you are a God and you have supernatural powers and you can create and destroy and all of that, where are you? If I was so God, like, I wouldn't let this happen, you know? It's like, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. So I have to think, it may not be anything about God. This may be a alien thing where we are literally in captivity here, enslaved by these beings for whatever purpose, and, and a crime's being here, and we got to get out or, or realize what our power is and take control of the thing. Because I think we have more, way more power than we think, because otherwise they wouldn't have to try as hard as they to keep us low, low in yes. frequency and all down and, mm -hmm. and downtrodden. So we have to empower ourselves as much as we can. I think and for whatever time we have left, but I can't help but feeling something big is coming that we are on the, and that may be why it's so painful right now for so many people. We're, we're at that, that point where it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to blow, you know, that something is going to come in and to relieve the pressure we're all mm. feeling and something to then encourage us to keep going, to give us a win. We need a win really do. And like you said, Ian, if you look at what's going on on the world stage, we ain't winning nothing. We're in bad shape. They're kicking our asses. Most people are still asleep. I go to the emergency room and I was shamed by the triage nurse for not having the you know what. Mm. And if I hadn't been sick and in so much pain, I could have been my authentic self and said something to her. But because she had power over me in that situation, she's trying to shame me for not doing something that I knew was dangerous for me to do. And I had to take it. From this woman that probably ain't got this, you know, sense to come out of the rain. And because now she's in this position that this world, this matrix has put her in, she's going to start to abuse me. I don't want to be here anymore with this shit. I'm tired of it. So it's neat. It needs something has to give. That's why I got my butterfly cluster. I'm going to, I need to muster for the cluster. You know, <laughs> I'm like going to. If, if my heart is a nuclear reactor, at that moment when I die, I'm going to nuclear react my ass all the way 
thousands of light years away as far as I can get from this place, and then I'll see where I'm at. But I don't trust anything in this place. <laughs> you know, you got to ask yourself, too, like, we're going to continue the video in a second. The um, Like, what would be the answer to say, you know, we're done. Enough's enough. We're all done. Or if we all just said, you know, we're not giving, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like that might actually be more powerful. Just yeah, I kind think, of like, I think we're done. Saying, this you know what? Is enough I want type my, thing. Yeah, I want me and my family, my children, my loved ones. I want out, all of us out of here now. This is enough. I want this thing to come. Whatever this is needs to come to an end because what it's doing, I think it's crushing the human soul. It's almost mm. like something wants to crush out through trauma. What is what is in us that makes us eternal? It's like it wants what's in us and it's extinguishing it over a cycle of many, many lives and experiences to get to the where there's whatever in us keeps it out, it wants access to our bodies fully, I think. I think it's maybe a life form that doesn't have a body and it's decided the human body would suit it. So I, it has infected the minds. Like someone mentioned earlier, I forgot who it was, the parasite. I was studying all on parasites today. You know, this could be an organic parasite with intelligence that once it's infected all the humans, it starts making them do its work, what it wants, the reality it wants. And if it wants to destroy or suppress the human soul for a complete bio takeover, then it's doing a great job. You know, and what if that's what the demons are in the Bible and all the, the possession, if it's nothing more than some non-human organism that is parasiting into the human form and is transforming us into such a low state that it can literally uh, take the divinity out of us. And then it can do what it wants with us. I asked Sam, because first he told he tells me, well, you're the fallen angels. That's why you're suffering. You're in hell. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, what, what, what do you mean? He said, well, Satan and his angels were cast to earth. And so were the fallen angels who were not Satan's angels. So what he was telling me, some of the people here are Satan's angels and they have no soul. And they're just there to fuck with you and, and to pretend they're real people. And then the very few of you are actually the fallen angels that your father in heaven has been trying to retrieve and can't get you out because you're too lost in the illusion of what this thing is. That you're in a false world and he's trying to pull you back. You're consciousness pushing you out. But, you know, and I said, well, what is it the demons want with it? He says, well, they're feeding on your halos the angelic energy that connects you to the source that they were cut off from, which is a parasitical, there's that model again. You know, and if you do some research on parasites, you know, if you look at these parasites that, if, that get into the wasp or the uh, spider, they literally will change the mind, the consciousness of that uh, host to get the oh, yeah. host to climb to higher ground so when they do die and explode, all the spores will hit as much life as possible flying down. I mean, this is, this is what that parasite can do. It has a brain. It has a consciousness. So if we're dealing with a hive mind consciousness, that's, that's your NPCs. Yeah, Their consciousness the is not being thing, yeah. operated by a, a human consciousness anymore. It's some other consciousness, something that is piggybacking into our consciousness and creating all our turmoil and distress that should not be in our brains whatever that is maybe it's the reptilian part of the brain maybe the reptilian part of the brain houses an actual alien consciousness you know we don't know but it could explain why people do cold-blooded things it's that alien consciousness that reptilian consciousness trying to be dominant in the human so it can take the bioform. So say there's a reptilian consciousness fighting the divine human consciousness 
because it wants our physical bodies because we're beautiful. <laughs> you know, we really are. If you look at beautiful men and women that you get, it's gorgeous. So what if we're the prize in the universe and they all wish they had what we had, but sometimes they can trap you or capture you. And then I don't know, are we their entertainment? Food. food. Yeah. What if, you know, Ian, what if they're addicted to us? What if it's like a heroin addiction? They love us, but they hate us. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think about that too sometimes. You know, is this thing addicted to us? Very interesting. There was a movie that explained exactly that. This alien came and he would approach people and say, I come in peace. And I guess they wouldn't do anything if he said that. And then he'd immediately stab them with a tube filled with um, chemicals that would make the person excrete the right hormones that would get that person high. And that was basically the, wow. it's called I come in peace. And that was basically the extent of this alien race. They'd come to planet to planet, tell people I come in peace, inject them with a whole lot of hormone or chemicals and force them to excrete the hormones that get them high. See, that's a, that's as a as a writer, you know, I've written plays mostly. I have written a couple screenplays that have never been produced. They've just been in development for a thousand years. You know how that shit goes. And uh, and and one thing I know, having worked with a lot of writers, they're not like getting notes from the Illuminati and stuff like that. What they're writing most of it. Now I don't know about now, but because uh, now everything could be different. But when I was, you know, in the '80s and '90s and stuff. It was just people getting ideas. So I look at all the programming we have, which Westworld and uh, all of these streaming shows that are about people having to question their reality. That's coming from some imagination, imaginal place that we are, that writers and creative people are tapped. It's almost as if whatever that places where we imagine our stories and our characters there's something intelligent in that space sending us story ideas to wake us up question your reality it's telling us the movies and shows are telling us question your reality it's not what we so then mandela effect happens i'm like yep this ain't what i thought it was as soon as i saw that I, I felt like Toto had pulled the curtain behind, you know, pulled the curtain back and revealed the cosmic asshole standing behind it. I was like, you son of a bitch. All this suffering and this shit ain't even real. <laughs> I got mad about it. I was pissed for weeks on that one, you know. But what is this place? I want to know before I die here what this was. That's that's what I I, I want to know. I don't want to die ignorant of what the hell this thing was. And I believe it's coming. You know, it's like. It's like I had to finally, you know, the Sam and all this and, and, you know, you go into almost like a high when one of these intelligences or entity starts to interfere or intervene in your reality that's a very difficult thing and you have to fight very hard to keep your sanity i mean i came close several times to just that was it and there were times where he was trying to get me to do something crazy you know i mean they have access to our it has access to our consciousness i that's why everything's a mess However, we remove this this extra influence from our reality, I think we'll be okay. I can't even imagine humans operating at their full potential who aren't being traumatized all the time. Can you imagine what we would be capable of? We're not even seeing it. We're pricing 5% of what we can do here under this circumstance in this environment. It's a toxic environment. And when a flower doesn't grow, you don't change the flower. There's nothing wrong with the flower. You move it to a new environment where it can thrive. 
I think we're like those flowers. There's nothing wrong with us. It's where we are that's wrong. Also, we're the only animal that knows it's going to die. That don't sound right. Doesn't that sound kind of cruel? Mm. Wow. Damn. I thought we're the only one. It's almost like this place is set up to traumatize and terrorize your your very being. And then to find out it may not be real on top of that, it could be, I could be hey, a in a computer simulation or a hologram or some some other being's dream. I don't want to be in some other being's dream. I don't want to be in God's dream. Get me out of here. This place sucks. This is a nightmare. It's not a dream. I would never consent to come into anything like this ever under any circumstances unless I was tricked. No way. Uh-uh. There's ways to learn. You don't have to be tortured to learn. See, I think we've been so effed with here that we excuse it in so many ways, and that may be why we stay. we got to all just say, you know what? We're done. And as many of them... We see we need a certain number of those souls in this place who are awake and know this. there's a scam here going on of some kind where we all say enough is enough, we're done, and really mean it, meaning that if a, if a ship came and opened the door, you'd get on right away. You wouldn't even make one phone call. You'd go. <laughs> you know, be ready to leave at any moment to abandon it because, and the other thing I've thought of, guys, if this is an alien construct we're in, an alien world of some kind, it is a physical location, then all of these ships that we're seeing in the sky, the UF, all of that, that, that revelation that they're doing where they're finally admitting the military, yeah, there are, and they talk to the pilots and they're seeing weird shit out there, objects flying around, stationary, you know, we've, if, if we, what I've wondered is, are we hostages here? is the only reason this place still stands is because they can't get us out to destroy it. And if they can retrieve the conscious beings from it, this system, I think, is gone. I think they'd blow the hell out of this place if it's our people. And so maybe we're these beings' insurance policy. They know as long as we're alive, the power outside this reality won't destroy it. And so they keep doing their evil shit. But at yes. some point, they're gonna the SWAT team's gonna have to come in, even if we lose some hostages. You know, you gotta save some people. You might not be able to. So I think we're at that point. I think we're at the point where SWAT team's coming in. The cosmic SWAT team. And what if we find out, oh my God, this was a cosmic crime that's never been seen. The beings that did this are gonna be punished, they're gonna be, you know, exterminated from realities anywhere. And you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, when you don't know what it is for sure, <laughs> then you got to think of every possibility you can and just to be prepared so then we know what to do. Because I got stuck back in here, whatever here is, and it ain't been fun. It's been horrible. Nine years. yeah i was actually a little shocked um 80 of people said that where this is a soul trap place i was kind of shocked at that i thought um i didn't think it'd be that many so it would have been more accidentally pressed no <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even get the vote so you know, I'm actually, you know, so that's just the vibe these days, you know, even it's not we're trying to like be doom and gloomer and stuff like that. Like I know our powers and everything. It's just like it's just gone too far. And it's, you know, maybe there could have been more of a change before or something. But I think at this point, it's like, OK, we need to just, you know. Well, get you out back, you know if you, right you know because if you look back in the history of the world we've actually been pretty fortunate when you look at the horrors 
that humans who came before us have gone through. It's a shit show, guys. There's never been any safe time in history. We've been lucky. But that's not going to last. You know, and they're already talking about war, World War III and all that. They'll do shit like that here. They've done it before. They don't care about human suffering and death they inflict on us. Whoever our humans in a power, the authorities are answering to, because I don't believe they're the ones doing this. Something over them is they're doing the bidding of this dark consciousness. That's what I see. And they will create a literal hell on earth if they keep going with what they're planning. And they've told us their plans. To me, that's hell on earth. I don't want to be here for that. And we can't stop them. There's not enough of us. And these people are never going to stand up in large enough numbers and not comply with this stuff that's coming. So we're at a crucial point here, you know, because I think, you know, it's going to be a downward slide now. And unless something intervenes more powerful than they are, it would have to be a supernatural power or an alien race of some kind that could take control of this reality and try to, you know, heal it. Without that, the only thing I can think of is just prepare for when I do die here, have my destination so I can maybe escape the trap. So if you die and you're in a weird place or whatever, just remember what I said and just say, hey, butterfly cluster, and maybe you'll find me, you know? I'm just trying to think of a, B, a plan B in the worst case scenario. And hopefully it's not that. You know, I do have hope that this is going to have a beautiful ending. I want it to. I'm a writer. I want beautiful end. That's why I love beautiful endings. I don't want a tragic one. But, you know, it's, it's we're getting down to the things are getting crazy. And it's more chaos. So it seems to me. Perhaps all of this chaos is a sign of what we're doing. We're the, the, the awakening we're having is throwing monkey wrenches into everything they're trying to do and to keep this reality believable. It's almost like it's outing itself as a sham and a fraud. The more ridiculous they become, the more we awake, the more ridiculous they start to behave. And we're seeing it. And we know there is a power that can change our physical reality because we've seen it. Now, whether that's all of us as a collective making these Mandela effect changes to try to wake our, you know, in the body selves up. Whatever does those changes, that's what I feel we need. We need one hell of a Mandela effect. I mean, so big and so undeniable that the entire world will wake up at the same moment. Yeah, that'd be a big one. That's for sure. You know, one, I'll tell you a real simple one that could happen. <clears throat> Middle of daytime, New York City, suddenly all goes black, no sunlight, but there's no drop in temperature. The air still feels the same, but it looks night and there's stars. And for three days, that shit don't come back up. Do you realize what that would do to the consciousness of this world? You'd wake up then. You'd question. Well, if the sun is what's getting our heat, why aren't we freezing in icicles? Now? You see what I mean? Something like that that would pull the curtain back completely on the fraudulent reality that we're in. You know, and the Bible says that the, the sky rolls up like a scroll. So that's like what, what gave me that idea. You know, something that... Or what if like the moon just burst into flames and just kept burning like a ball of fire, literal fire? How would they explain that? <laughs> We've got to have something that's going to be so earth shattering. It's going to wait because I, I asked Sam, I said, I said, so many people, you know, are asleep. No one's going to wake up. No one's going to understand what you're saying. And uh, he, 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 he played the opera Nessum Dorma, an opera song. It means none shall sleep. So what he was saying was they're going to wake up one moment 
And so is this all preparing us for whatever that moment's going to be so we can be helpful to these other humans that are completely in the dark and won't know what the hell's going on? You know, maybe that's what all this was, this preparation point. Because whatever power can change sex in the city and mirror, mirror on the wall and all and depends and all that stuff and can move, make Cuba bigger and closer to Mexico than it used to be. If it can do that, it can do anything. And maybe that's why the controllers are freaking out because they know that shit's about up. What if they saw that, like uh, Cliff High did a video about that, what was that, Uwabama, that big cosmic turd that was floating, coming, remember that? What was that called? It had a Hawaiian yeah. name. You know, it was like uh, cigar shaped, and they, right. uh, he thinks they took that as a sign that the alien overlords were coming back again, and they, they had to hurry and, and get their stuff together. That they took that, and that's when we that was 2017. And then you see all of a sudden a real acceleration. So, what if these the, 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 the human controllers here are looking at signs too, but we're on opposite sides? The signs are bad for them because whatever's coming does not like them, it's going to take them out. different scenarios that's what i do i have all my scenarios i have my most possible least possible and you know what it could turn out to be something i had on the least possible list once we figure out what it is or it's revealed to us you know uh or it could be something i never even would have imagined beyond human imagined what if this is beyond human understanding and that's why we're confused we don't have the conscious development to understand what this reality is. We just know it hurts and we're suffering, which is when the body hurts, it's telling you there's something wrong. So there's something wrong with this reality. It's sick. It's corrupted in some way. Yeah, I think, you know, experiencing, having a human experience is... Uh is a is a natural thing and and it's, it's a suffering well not to this extent and and i'm not i'm not giving like an opposite perspective or anything i'm just saying at the same time you know i believe you know these experiences when we're in the body is just one thing but you know they really can't touch us at all you know they can get rid of this body but they're not going to touch my spirit and i think that we live we just have physical experiences and that avatar is going to die. It's not going to be a, a pretty thing and, and fun going through that. You know what I mean? But you know, what's going on here, I definitely agree with you, but I think that this is a normal thing as far as living and dying and then moving on. You know, I think that that's, well, I think, yeah, I think the human animal and it's in its uh, proper habitat would be an amazing experience. You know, and, and yeah. but this is some corrupted environment that we're trying to have a human experience. And I don't think it's the human experience. that's the problem here. It's where we're having it. I think it'd be like, you know, you're locked in somebody's basement. That's going to limit your experiences as far as on the joy side. You know, you're still going to yeah, experience it's just gone something. on too far here. It's, 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 it's just, it's getting to the point where we're not there. They're not, not able to help their kids now they're not able to even protect their own children here we cannot be responsible for letting this keep going and if that's just right. a, a mental uh place that we come to and that they need we need that needs to end and the and they need the humans need to be taken to safety and healed from this experience and perhaps that's what's coming. Not because a God just sat back and didn't intervene and let all this shit go down. But because we were taken advantage of by some other beings that, that and there's no God involved in that. Hmm. 
that we may have to get ourselves out of this. Right. By just preparing ourselves that we just do not consent anymore. That we want safety for all the humans. We want to stop of this kind of abuse. Hum a human being has, we have a right to know where we are in, in existence physically. That at the very least, otherwise you don't have a compass. You don't know where you are. You're disabled in every way that you need to be a functioning human. It, it, being human, we're like orchids. We take a lot of care. We're not just a, wi a wildflower that just pops up anywhere. So we would be, uh, what I see as the ideal human reality would be, you know, c conducive to us and how we're guided through this process of having a physical body, which is animal in nature, and this seemingly high intellect and divine, almost sacred consciousness. Like, how do you do that in a physical body? How do those two things connect and merge to where you can be a sane individual and integrate all of that in you we're in the worst environment to do that number one you'd need to feel safe nobody feels safe here you would need to know the truth we don't know the truth all we know is lies so these are sins against humanity these are these are inhumane treatment of the human animal if we were in a zoo and we were another animal and we were acting like those animals were acting like we're acting, they would do everything they could to figure out what was in that environment that was causing such a disorder. Here you've got these human beings and we're treated like dog, like dirt, like we're not even as good as the animals. Something's wrong. <laughs> no human no human beings would design a reality like this. It couldn't even have evolved like this naturally. You wouldn't, humans wouldn't create an anti-human system to live in. Hmm. And we have to pay to live here. That's why I think that we're, we're paying rent because this ain't our home. It ain't our real estate. That's how they make us pay to be here. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, damn. Uh, we'll probably continue this video, too. I definitely want to see more of this. It kind of inspired the conversation. Oh, yeah, too. please do. Yeah, I'd like to see so I think else. we should. Yeah, but we can pause it whenever. Um, and the panel's open to anyone else that wants to come up. Um, and you can bring up anything at this point. But that was... That was um, well, I'm probably going to bow out of here in about 10, 15 minutes, uh, hit the bed. Okay. But I did want to come on. You were talking about Saturn. and uh, But this has been a great, a great discussion, a great show earlier even. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is, I think, what we got to do, guys. We got to throw out, be honest, say what we feel, you know, um, and be able to have a space for people if they are feeling scared or down or whatever that they don't. You know, we understand that, too. And, you know, we all have our days where we're feeling really hopeful and great and then something will happen and then we get down on it again, like feeling hopeless. But know that you're not alone with that. You know, this is just the way. The way uh, humans are and then an experience, it's very difficult. And. Um, you know, like you said, and it's you, you saw what you saw in that documentary and. Uh, you know, and so it's serious. We've got a delusion all around us and people doing very dangerous things, especially to the kids now. They're helping them and they're actually harming them. And we know that and they don't. That's a terrible position to be put in as a human being. Like there's too many things piled on top of each other. It's too multi-layered in the way it's designed. So to me, I think there's some technology or mechanism or system here that's that's gener helping to generate our reality 
as far as what events happen. And we know they fake certain things to cause trauma. So from where I'm sitting, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I could, I'll be you know, honest. That, that documentary had me in uh, tears that night. It really, um, it really had me um, because I've been ignoring the news, you know, and a lot of things. Well, I know, just, but it really, I felt actually a little guilty that I haven't been paying attention and it really changed my paradigm, which just brought to this topic and this conversation. Yeah, and it's not that you have to dwell in that darker sort of space, but we do have to, as adults, we're responsible here for our human race whatever our species is here and whatever this thing is, we have to take responsibility for the people who won't and at least know what's going on. Not that you have to dwell in it and get too deep in it. I wouldn't suggest, but know enough so that like Ian, what you were saying, it's informed now where you're at. You're not the same person you were before you saw that it changes you because this is what's happening now. And we have to understand the situation we're in, how high the stakes are. And that, you know, it's, it's, it's a serious situation. This is, uh, you know, I think we need to have all kinds of plans in place for different scenarios, be fully prepared for whatever happens and and be just as helpful as we can and supportive of each other and not, not to let the stupid little things and belief systems get in the way. I think that's the way that this system tries to, to divide us because I think it's afraid if we all really connect in a heart centered way with the deep desire to understand what this thing is and to stop the needless suffering here, I think that's going to, something's going to respond to that. If there's enough of us, maybe it's an energy thing. So if we are, if our hearts are nuclear reactors, let's ignite, you know, let's power, overpower the reality with the power of our own beings, you know, but it's like Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, when Dorothy was told by uh, Glenda, she said, you know, the, the witch, the wicked witch of the West wouldn't want those shoes if they weren't powerful because she found out she couldn't take them. Dorothy had to give them to her. So she said, I don't know what is in the power of your shoes, basically is what Glenda says, but they, she wouldn't want them so badly. And that's what I feel like. Whatever emerald ruby slippers we got inside us, whatever this thing is, it wants that. <laughs> and maybe it's trying to break us down till we surrender it. You know, that last little spark or whatever. But yeah, I think I think that little spark that it must be wanting or feeding on, let's let's uh let's nuclear react this shit within ourselves, internal combustion, you know, and pow and, and tap into power of the human mind. Our whatever our consciousness is must be something amazing for this thing to want to infiltrate it the way it's done and to use such genius tactics that we see. Yeah, let me. Uh, someone, someone just joined. So let me add him on real quick. Uh, wait, hold on a second, guys. The LPP, LPP. Logical, plausible, probable. I've been in the side chat. Yeah, I know. I know. I was just saying what's up. Seeing what's up. So, what, tell me to get out. What's that? I'm seeing get out. Are you telling me to go away? No, I'm putting an overlay up because I don't. You're, oh, you're news, worried, so about, gotta, worried about worried uh, about porn bombing and all that stuff. I got you. Yeah, I just I just got to screen people. And even people come on to try to act normal, and then they'll try to do something crazy. So, um, gotcha. No, no, I, I got you. If, if you got questions, yeah. uh, just search. Got you. Uh, if you have questions, like search uh, "logical, plausible, probable" real quick, and my channel will come up. I'm not a uh, not one of those crazy folks. Okay. Gotcha. I got you here. Yeah, anything? Um, okay, I see you. So what are you? Um, 
Okay, yeah, I definitely see your channel. Okay, cool. Yeah, you you definitely not gonna. You're cool. <laughs> nah, I mean, I've I've, I've been right. on a bunch of debates. My, my uh, I don't even hide my first and last name on my channel, so there's nothing to worry about on me. Yeah, it was like you debate. Um, yeah, interesting. Hey, let's do a debate. Let's debate something, man. Not here right now, but I'll debate you on something. Let's do it. Yeah, I always, I always enjoy some good, good conversation. Depends on what we uh, agree and disagree on. Okay. You know? but, uh, we, we may agree on a lot of things and disagree on some. You know, you never know. So, uh, no, I'm always interested in uh, conversations like this one. I'm. Uh, I'm a theist, and I believe that Christianity is true. However, I think there's a heck of a lot more to our existence than, you know, people that kind of keep themselves inside of the, you know, the quote unquote Christian church bubble um, on their understanding and uh, considerations of what existence actually is. I think there's a hell of a lot more to it than people like to think about, you know. And I, I, the thing that really hooked me was when I did a search on YouTube, I saw the NPCs and I was like, man, just the other day I was talking with folks about how I really think that we are surrounded by NPCs sometimes because it's like some of the things that people do, the discussions that are had online and even sometimes in person, it's like, you, you gotta be a robot. There's no way you can actually be this dumb, you know, on so many different things. Yeah. We talked about a little bit in the beginning. It's just one of those things where, Everyone actually will have a different perception of what that is. So, um, you know, so it's interesting uh, hearing people's uh, perspective on that. We kind of moved to this uh, soul trap earth following the light and all this like recycle center earth, recycling the souls here. And it's like some, you know, we were talking a lot about a lot of things. If you just jumped in here. Um, you missed a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole. Yeah, yeah, I've only been. I was inside chat for I don't know, like fifteen minutes, maybe listening to y'all. But the the thing on the soul recycling and whatnot, I, I find it kind of interesting. Especially, I don't know, have you guys uh, read a lot of the books on uh, like near death experiences, group death experiencing, that kind of stuff? Yeah, don't you think it's weird how whenever people have these experiences, they all see whatever god they believe in comes to them? You know, it's like the the construct has your data and will present to you whatever's going to coax you to go into the light. You know, if there's only one real God, then that's what should be presented before me outside of this realm. You know what I mean? To guide me. But why is it whatever God I believe in? That's what they give me, you know, kind of shows you that. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, yes, you're correct that I, some people do report that, but there's also uh, thousands that have, who were of a different religion and then end up, you know, who they interacted with at the end of the day ended up being the Christian God. So it's, or some, some aspect of it, the, maybe not the way it's per, uh, portrayed necessarily in Western churches and such, but still was one of the same. But I agree with you that there have been, there are plenty who see it in that, in that, in that fashion. But the reason I was bringing it up was more in the context of the uh, soul recycling. Uh, one of the common trends that's been reported is uh, people are choosing to return and to come into this um, state. And I've always found that kind of interesting. If you know, if true, then we actually are being given a choice to be here, and that puts a, you know, a lot of this stuff into a different context. If you ask me. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it goes to, there's a lot of different perspectives on this right now at this time. So some people look at it as like kind of being pressured into it. Yeah, but there, it looks like there's one commonality though. There's consent. But then again, do we really know? You know what I mean? We're talking about something where someone had, at the same time, all these people that had near-death experiences or whatever experience, they technically didn't die for all we know when we actually die, it could be a completely different experience. And everything that people are experiencing is just something that's programmed in our reality for us to experience with that experience.
But when we actually, actually die, it could be nothing like any of these experiences that we've been told about. You know? So a near-death experience is interesting, but my mind's so open to where it's like, well, it could that could just be a near-death experience, but a death experience is going to be completely different. So... Well, I mean that's true. I mean, that, that's that true, but and I, I, I would say you. I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily disagree with you. The, however, I would argue that in a good percentage of the NDEs, at least the ones that I've read, uh, one of the common trends is that it is a clearly defined separator, where they're not allowed to go further than X. If they do, then they won't be able to return. So they they very often report that there is something they can perceive that is beyond where they are and they're just getting a glimpse of the next stage so it's not necessarily that they're experiencing everything that is in the next level of existence uh, as i said they literally say on a regular basis oh no wait you can't go see you know the people they interact with and say oh no no you can't go any further yet if you're not gonna you know you're you're gonna go back to or until you decide whether or not you're gonna stay here or return to your you know physical world um and you know they're seeing stuff in in the distance kind of proverbial you know, proverbial distance right so i would say that would kind of counter the point you just made to an extent not really i mean again like if it's programmed for us to experience something on a near death then that's what we're going to experience because the fact that most people that have a near-death experience is describing the same experience well then that explains my point that that's a part of the program you know what I mean? So the commonalities just means that that's what's programmed in our reality, not necessarily um, for that experience. But I'm just saying that's how open my mind is on it. For me, I'm not going to come to a hardcore conclusion. I just like to put it on the table and have discussions. Well, I, I guess it. what I'm saying is your point could be true. I'm not saying, I mean, obviously it could be a pre-programmed thing and you can get into like, you know, infant regress of like everything's ultimately going to be pre-programmed, pre-programmed, you know, at, at what point is it not just a predetermined uh, deal? And if you want to go down that rabbit, that rabbit hole, then you have to, you know, address whether or not free will exists and you know, things of that nature. But the... Uh, I don't think you can have free will if you're not free. And I don't think we're free here. We don't even know where we yeah. are for sure. We're being lied to about everything. We're not free. You cannot have free will if you aren't free. Uh, you have limited choices, but not free will. We don't have freedom. I'd rather have freedom than free will. Because free will means somebody else, if it's their free will to come over and you know shoot you in the head, they can do that. Well, th that's not my free will. So that's not free will. I don't know what that is, but that ain't free will. Not in, not in my opinion. <clears throat> Gonna have to agree. You know, um, I do believe that there's free will, but in a way where it's like, I always say, but this world is like a bunch of free wills clashing together. And it's, it's to the point to where it's gone beyond what it was intended for if it was intended for something good from the jump and obviously um these whatever like i so real quick the lpp for me this is what i think just so you know like i don't think that the god of this reality or the creator of this reality is the same creator of my spirit just like when zuckerberg makes the metaverse when we're in the metaverse zuckerberg's our god but who made zuckerberg right so that's that's where i stand on this so that's a good and all these religions yeah all these religions is all programming you know when look at the history of religions it's like this big circuit board grid and this is a huge part of the programming and i i, I just think that there's different creators that has to be on the table as well i don't think we should be worshiping the creator of this realm to be honest I think we should um, we should recognize who created our spirit and you know the love frequency and and happiness and, and nature and that you know what I mean like right but that, that, but that, that, that would vibe be, that's, right but that that's would, that's the creator to me that's what I want to recognize but well right but um, that's the that's the ultimate right so you have to separate 
religion from and you know things that have been misconstrued or manipulated or altered or just made up out of nothing out of thin air to you know cults and everything else right you have to separate that from whether or not the there is an ultimate right so even if you want to go down the rabbit hole of you know the metas and who created who and all this other kind of stuff right you still have to come ultimately come back to either the, there is the ultimate or there is not there like that that's what it ultimately yeah. comes down to and yeah i even if there's some, even if there's subsidiary uh, uh, gods, if you will, you know, like you know, demigods. Even if that's, even if they exist, right? Even if that is true, you still have to either say yes, there is an ultimate, or no, there is not. Like just logically, I, there's there's no way around I, it, right? I don't have to say sh crap. In my opinion, for me, it's like whatever the truth is is the truth, and I want the truth, and I'm gonna be with the truth. I'm gonna stand with the truth all day, and if I have a lie. And I find out the truth. I don't give a fuck how unpopular that that truth is, or whatever I have to, um, you know, swallow to say I was wrong. I'm gonna stand with the truth all day. I don't have to recognize anything. You know what I mean? Well, I'm just I, I didn't. Stand I with didn't. The truth all day. But I'm just saying when it, I don't, I don't think that the creator, creator that created our spirit, has its hands in this world and everything in it. There's obviously something else going on here. You know. I don't like the idea of like the, the creators saving some crackhead down the street and picking and choosing who he's going to help out while there's a kid being tortured up the street from me. The God's not doing shit about that. But this crackhead down the street just saw God came to her, whatever, you know, and saved them and changed their life. And I don't like this pick and choosy God. It's, it's just right. So, really, so you have a, so you have a problem. Uh, you have an issue with the problem of evil, basically. That's what you're saying. Uh, the problem of evil yeah do i have an issue with evil i'm confused well, no, okay so the the problem of evil is it's a philosophical term that's specifically uh it's it's one of the primary issues that most most atheists for example have with the entire premise of god even existing is because all this bad shit happens uh if there was a god the, he wouldn't allow it to happen therefore there is no god is basically the I'm an atheist though. Well, well, I didn't say, atheist. well, I I didn't say you were. I was, I'm saying that that is the problem of evil, right? So in it's exactly what you just described is what is called the problem of evil. And, no, I'm just giving just a thought of mine about things, but I'm very open minded. But I know one thing. I know that the enemy is not going to tell me who the creator is. I know these characters like King James and all these murderers that have slaughtered people and for this damn these damn religions i know they're not going to tell me who the creator is i know that all they've done is lied cheat and steal from these innocent people so for me it's just whoever the creator is great you know um you're the creator i recognize you but um i'm a little skeptical of you know what the enemy gave me as like here you go here's the creator like we you know yeah we're gonna poison your food air and water we're going to give you a fake history, a bullshit education, and we're going to keep you guys sick, dumb, and stupid. But you know what we're going to do for you? Here, here's the word of God. We care about you so much. Here's the word of God. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I think it's a little, no offense, a little foolish to take that hook, line, and sinker from the enemy. Well, that's I, part of the reason. That's part of the reason I issued the preface when I came in here that ultimately I think that uh, the Christian God is true. However, I issued the caveat when I first came in that I think that A, there's a lot more to it, and B, that's been manipulated uh, very aggressively for centuries by a variety of individuals, just like many other quote-unquote religions have been, right, in order for humans to perpetuate their own power, right? So the so, – and, and this goes back to the earlier point I was making about something either is true or false. I mean, would, you, would you agree or disagree that something either is – or is not true. Wow. I mean, I, I don't like that. You asking that question is kind of like, um, I think, I think let me, if I could just, it's kind of like here. saying it, uh, the way you came out with that question was very alarm, very, um, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word, but it's like saying one plus one is two, right? 
Isn't that right? It's just like, you know what I mean? Obviously. Well, where are you going to say, Nathan? Well, well, what's, your, what's your first name? What's your name? John. John. All right, I th let me interject here. I think where I'm at, and I'm wondering if this is sort of the evolution of human consciousness. My question is, have we have have the awakened humans who are on this channel right now and 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 are drawn to these types of topics and discussions? Are we ahead of some sort of evolution consciousness evolutionary uh, path to where we've serious we've just the truth of the matter is we've come to the point in our evolution of our human consciousness where we can no longer make sense of a supreme supernatural deity who had the power to intervene and chose not to that that human concept of god is erroneous and as long as we cling to that we will continue to suffer because it's not the truth what if God is still somewhere and we just haven't found it yet? And we got to keep looking. But to me, if we had the truth, this hell would have ended already. Mm, okay, so I, I follow your, your train of thought there. I would See, and the problem with the uh, Christian church is you have to think of what the child hears when he hears that story. The Christian religion is basically based on an act of divine filicide. It's the father sending his son, his only begotten son, to die on the cross to save all of humanity. So th when the child hears that, that is in incredibly traumatic and damaging. How is that child, the inner child, the one that never grows up probably past the age of seven and just stays with you your whole life, how is he ever going to trust a heavenly father that would do something like that? This is the creator of the universe, and that's his best idea he can come up with. There's no other solution possible. Oh, no, Jesus has to die and not only die, but be tortured and murdered in front of the people who loved him, including his mother. That's what the little child thinks. And then you're never going to be able to get past that. So my opinion, if God is really there, he's going to have to come in some other form, unlike anything we've ever seen. New right now to us, real manifesting in the flesh here now. Or you're, you're, you're going to lose all the souls because it's a horrific story. It's a horror story pretending to be a sacred path to God. No matter how you put lipstick on it, that's what it is. I find no fault in the son at all. He's the murdered, sacrificed, magical human child in a satanic ritual by an alien god that fucked with him. And sending to his death, I think it was a trick. Took him out. Where's he been for 2,000 years? He was killed. That's what this thing does. It calls you to save your friends and your family as it knows the human will sacrifice for love. And it uses our love against us. And who did Jesus say this world, the God of this world was? Satan. So that's how I've come to see all this. I, I, can't, I can't unsee what I see now. To me, it's the most, the, the ugliest, most soul killing of deception about what a loving creator would actually be. No wonder we're lost. That's not human. That's not a human God in the Old Testament. And that's not a human God that sent Jesus to his death. It can, I refuse to allow that to be true because it, it is, it as a human being, I find it absolutely reprehensible, immoral, unethical, brutal, and cruel, vicious. And that consciousness went on to do crusades, 
torture people to believe in Jesus. That When you've got to do that, that's a lie. Okay, so uh, the actions of humans under a banner negates the underlying premise? Why didn't he come up with the bet? There was that, no that's other not, idea. That's not the question I asked you. That's not the question I asked you. What was the question? Asked you, the question is, because somebody uh, who claims to follow X does Y, and uh, you don't like Y, therefore does that okay. make what, X false and not John, true? John, what is the consciousness that Nathan, just Nathan, witnessed? this is very... Please answer the no, question. No, I'm answering your question. I don't think it has anything to do with what I'm saying. What it, I'm, yes, what it, I'm, yes, it does. What it, it shows Nathan, is okay, well, a Nathan, dark hang on. consciousness. I let, you, I let you talk, and I didn't say a word for quite some time, okay? So let's, let's, let's go have a back and forth here, okay? So you just extenuated your negatives and acted as a defeater to the underlying premise saying, well, we only did crusades and killed people. And if you have to torture people in order to believe, then how can that possibly be true? Right. That's what you said. Yeah. Because the truth okay, don't okay, have okay. to torture you to believe it. Okay. John. Okay. So hang on, hang on. So now let's go back to the question I asked you, which you have not wanted to answer. If somebody claiming to believe in X does Y and what the what they do is not good, does that mean that X is false? I have no idea what you just fucking said. I don't I know, know. I don't what, know what you just said. It's too confusing. Can mean. you speak plainly? Dude. Okay. Don't do X and Y. Talk to me like a human being. I'm not a math subject. I, I, I mean, I was just, I was just, Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is the consciousness Nathan, 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 that Nathan. inspired them to do those evil acts was evil from the consciousness that infected those people. You're you're claiming okay, so you just made another claim that you have to substantiate. Okay, so let's get back. Let's we'll, we'll let's go back to the underlying question of what I asked you. Okay, so. Uh, I think that the earth is round. And <laughs> okay. anybody who anybody who says <laughs> that the earth is not round, I go and beat their ass. Okay? You're joking, uh, right? What? Are you serious? Or are you joking? What, that I think the earth is a globe? Well, we are have you, had are you people just, are you trolling? at the stake. No, I, I'm I'm trying to dumb this down. I'm trying to I'm trying to make the uh, Nathan dumb asked to make it very plain. You're gonna dumb Please. it down for me, you're really. Gonna, you need to smarten up over here, my friend. <laughs> okay, I'm so, not Nathan. impressed so far. I keep waiting for you okay. to say something. That's Nathan, you didn't, Nathan, question. you didn't understand. You didn't understand a basic logic. But you're not. Uh, flow. I have one and now you're claiming, Okay, I'm trying. I'm, try, I'm trying to make it more simple. I'm trying to make it more simple. Okay, now listen. Why um, is it based on an act I, of filicide? Listen, dude, listen. We're, Why are I'm, you telling we're, children Nathan, that that you're not, dude, being we're is not their God? Oh my God, dude, that we're, you're you're not focusing, okay? Now you're I going believe, with insults. You're asking questions like one plus one equals two, right? No, no, I asked. Now you're saying you need to dumb down that conversation. Ian, earlier you that's contradicted the fun. Ian, earlier uh, the reason I asked you that was because earlier tonight you uh, uh, directly contradicted the fundamental laws of logic, and that's why I was asking. If asking that question earlier to make sure that I wasn't misinterpreting you, I wasn't trying to be a dick. I was trying to make sure I was not misinterpreting what your position was. Okay. Just like right now with Nathan, I am trying to make sure that we are on the same page and I am not misinterpreting his arguments. Okay. So, Nathan, if I believe that the earth is a globe, right? I go around beating up right. everybody who says that the earth is flat, right? That's a dick move. And that's right. not moral thing for me to do. Right. And I'm and me going out and beating people until like, no, it's glow. It's around. I, I'm sorry. I no longer I would, think it's flat. I, I, I think it's right. If, if I, I would never do that. Nathan, that's not I would never do that. Why would you Nathan focus, focus. You have okay? that consciousness yes, in you. This is what I'm Nathan, saying. <laughs> Nathan focus, dude, focus. Okay. If I go and do that, all right. What I did was immoral, correct? 
Yeah, and it's coming out of a spirit okay, of ignorance. Okay. Okay. No, 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 And aggression yeah. and violence. Okay, now, is it, it was immoral for me to go beat somebody's ass for thinking that the earth is flat and refusing to accept their I address, think it's right? immoral for you to beat anybody's ass for any reason. That's not the point. Dude, that's not the point, okay? We're just establishing very basic foundations, okay? No, so you're, it, you're going, try something else, bro. This isn't working. Okay, no, okay. Well, I'm, I'm getting to the point. I'm just trying to get him to actually answer the direct question. All right, directly, how, okay? all right, let me ask you so Yes question. or no, yes or no, Nathan. No, because is, you're it, going down nowhere road. I can <laughs> see it now. I have a direct well, conclusion. Well, if you will me, just answer I'm the question gonna, directly, I, I have a conclusion. Okay, I have a conclusion. Okay, so yes, I don't or no. think that these evil things are coming from the human consciousness. This is what I'm trying to say. That's not what I'm asking you, I just not, I don't care what you think about this. I'm asking you're not a direct just question being, about a flow of logic. Doing, those oh, people God. who are doing evil things are not just being dicks. What I'm telling you is there is oh. some alien or foreign consciousness in the human mind turning us into monsters. <sighs> Okay, so how do okay, so I say I'm a father Nathan, and I have a child. Nathan, Nathan, how do I explain the God and the Jesus thing? Just give me that answer as a you Christian. Still, dude, how do I explain you're to you're a child? I've been trying to ask you very direct questions to conclude make a conclusion of a logic question. Okay. And now you're trying to spin off over into like how do you defend X, right? And offering defeaters. Okay. So I'm not talking about X, dude, I'm talking about Jesus Christ that dude, died and suffered at God's will. That's what mm. I can't reconcile, John. And what so I'm Nathan, trying to tell you is okay, so that can we I can't get past question? that part. Can I ask the room a question? Ian and Nathan, I guess you're the one talking right now. Um, do you guys agree, accept or reject the foundational laws of logic? <laughs> Dude, oh, I'm you done. I'm are, sorry. Bro. I just I've, I've gave it a good shot here, guys. I'm, re I'm just asking. I'm can you answer the question? No, it's no, this you, is pretty you're, basic. You're, no, you're, because you're, I don't like I don't like the consciousness you're coming here at. Alba. That's not whatever yeah, not, it is. Yeah, guys. It's a nasty consciousness, John. It, it's not a nasty consciousness, guys. It, 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 I am all about open mindedness. Superior. I'm all. I'm all not trying to. I'm not trying to be superior. Your religion. You want to? I don't. I'm not even talking. The Christian Nathan, religion. I'm not talking. Apparently, you have a very negative perception of Christianity, you and therefore you're applying that the, to me. You believe in the Christian just because God. I. Okay, you I said do. I believe in the Christian God. Did you I not? do. I do. Well, therefore, do you think because I believe in the Christian God, therefore I must be a asshole who thinks he's superior? So the the mindset. No, you're, you're, just, you're, you're applying the, this to me. Okay, so I, a Christian Nathan, God I have been trying to at, son to a torturous death. That's the foundation so, of your so Nathan, Is it fair for me to, to John, assume I, the only difference that between you have, me and you is I don't know what's going on here. You know what's going on. You already have the answer. I, I don't. No, I, so, Nathan, you I guess you, know you weren't listening at the very beginning. I literally. Sense. So, Nathan, do you let people talk or do you just talk over them? Okay. I literally, well, I just, when I came I mean, in here. Know, made, dude, are you letting me finish a sentence? Nathan, can I finish a sentence, please? Okay, so Nathan, ahead, at the very beginning, don't give me any this, more multiple choice questions. I don't do multiple choice, so I, I yeah, wasn't giving well, multiple choice. I, I was, okay, so I wasn't giving multiple choice questions. I was giving you yes and no questions. Okay, I was trying to for that's, that's anyway. If you were paying attention when I came in here, you would have picked up on the fact that I literally stated, I think that ultimately the Christian God is true. However, I issued multiple caveats about the way it's portrayed things that are argued, the rigidity, which is put forth by many people in the quote-unquote church. I don't even go to church. Okay, okay? this for the is the main question I have for Nathan, you. Nathan, I am not done Do talking to you. Do you believe that your oh God. Christian God, however it really is, not okay. depicted in the scriptures, but however the Christian God Nathan, really, do, do you, you actually want to engage he, in dialogue, or do you do want you to, and let people finish this? Oh, uh, Jesus. No, I asked a question, Nathan. I was curious what the question is. I just want to know, do you believe that the Christian God, as far as you see him, do you believe that that being is the one that's depicted in the Bible that would send his son to the cross? Or do you think that's wrong? And But the main question I have is, do you believe that the Christian God that you say you're talking about, that you have faith in, do you believe that 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 God has the ability, the supernatural ability to intervene at any moment in human affairs here on this, in this reality that we're experiencing. Or does he have, or is he limited in how often he can intervene 
or or participate with us D i mean does he have the ability yes uh if you're operating from the from nathan can i listen and by the way ian yeah, you, go ahead you're, you're gonna run a poll about whether or not to boot me i've been being extraordinarily chill actually trying to have baseline dialogue and back and forth not being allowed to know, finish but we are on a certain I, vibe and it's kind of changed and it's becoming a it's you, you get into these well, well, okay. of religion. So this is what happened. I wasn't, dude. I wasn't trying to have a Christian debate, Nathan. That you turned this into an interrogation you're, and a know, wine fest John, about how you, you, you don't you, like Christianity. I wasn't even no, trying to talk I didn't about say Christianity, that. You, dude. You've gone on, a, dude. This last ten minutes has been you going on an exposition about how horrible the Christian God is and how you don't like it well, and how it upsets you, are, you. And you're here as an even official trying, representative. Okay. Was I, was I trying to... official representative of the Christian God. That's okay. why so I'm was grilling I... you the way I would the Christian right. God so, so if he was standing the one in front of me. Going, so who is going down the path of negativity right now? I wasn't even trying to discuss that with you guys. I was much, much more interested in the bigger picture concepts are the things that we don't understand. I personally think that we're in some sort of digital um, matrix and that everything about quantum mechanics and quantum entanglement shows us beyond all doubt. They've discovered hamming error correction codes literally written into the fabric of the universe. Okay. And I think there's a hell of a lot of things that are a hell of a lot more interesting. Okay. Well, and why would it, this, this, so, this, so, this, so this any, is the thing we're oh, in be God. so, so such a horror show. Okay, so this goes back to the question I raised earlier about the free will defense. Have you either one of you ever read through Alvin Plantinga's free will defense? Oh my god. John, they found Adam Walsh's oh severed head in the canal oh. behind my house in Vera Beach, Florida, when I was 13 years old. Oh, okay. that's where we live. That's this reality. The children are not safe here is what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay, if there okay. is any God that could intervene in this <sighs> and doesn't, you've lost me. I can't believe okay. in that God. Okay. I'm sorry. I just can't. Okay. It goes against everything. Nathan, I feel. Nathan, do you think that this is the extent of your existence? No. Okay. So you think that you have an eternal But I don't soul. know. But I don't know. Oh, do you sure, think John, you have an eternal me. soul? It doesn't matter whether you you know 100%. Do you think? What, what does that it matter if I think? Oh I my okay. I, okay. We don't know Nathan, anything I'm, for I, sure here. I, I understand that Nathan. What I'm, I'm saying. Nathan, do you actually want to have dialogue? Well, what do you what's your goal here? What do you I, want me to understand? I just want to have general over with? I want to I mean, Dude, I don't have a fixed end objective. I'm just trying to have baseline conversation. Like, this does not have to be controversial. Okay. All right. So do you think that there is more to your existence than the, the time that we spend in the mortal coil? I don't know for sure. Okay, I didn't ask if you know for hundred percent. I all asked. I know, you, all I oh know is what I'm experiencing here in this reality. The 55 I, years I've been here. I, I understand I can't, that. I don't, you know, I don't know any of that for sure. I think I, it's I very understand. dangerous for us at this point in the situation we're in to have faith that we're in good hands because John, we might not be, you may be wrong. That is and every day true. that goes by, we're in danger and jeopardy here. We know we all die here. And the thing I don't understand, I don't understand a, an eternal being that would create something that dies. That doesn't make sense either. It's got okay. immortality and eternal life, but it, it Nathan, denies Nathan, that to its creation. Nathan, listen, None of it if, makes sense to me. Oh my God. Nathan, listen. If you listen to me, if you do, if you have an immortal soul, were, did that being create something that dies? But I don't know that I have an immortal soul. That's not what I asked you. I asked You're, you if. See, you, your, if your soul is immortal, did the creator create something that dies? I don't know. I could be in a fucked up simulation, John, with some oh, sadist oh like God. Ted Bundy that put consciousness you, in here. And is That's torturing not what I asked us. you. Dude, and okay. you never get out. I don't know what the nature of this reality I, is. I didn't ask you about the nature of reality. I, I asked you a question. Okay. If it's a hypothetical, right? So if. Your soul is immortal, then 
did this eternal being you're referring to create something that just dies? That is a very simple well, yeah, yes or no. The question. body here dies. If your immortal soul, if your soul is immortal, did that entity create something that that dies, that ultimately dies, or are you immortal? The sen you is your sense of self ultimately immortal. This is a hypothetical. Okay, I'm not saying you don't have to prove that this is true. You don't have to know what, that this is 100 percent true. I am asking a hypothetical. Well, anything if your soul possible, is immortal, dude, dude. Any anything is possible, but it. But I, what I know is everyone dies here. That's, that's what I, I see. Dude, that's not experience. what I'm asking you. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm you know, asking you're, you you're if in the this then realm that. of stuff I don't know that even exists. How do I know we don't die and that's the end of us completely here? And that's why I, we got to figure out a way out of here. Okay. This yeah. place kills us. If your soul is immortal, then are you immortal? I don't know. I mean, how am I going to answer that question? <laughs> dude, I, I can, okay. All right, I can answer it this way. I would. I didn't like ask to if be, you were mortal. I, dude, I didn't ask. I would if you like were to be. I, I would hope that I was. Yeah, I would want that. But just because I want something doesn't mean it's true. I don't I, want I, nine I, million of us Nathan, to starve to Nathan, death every this year, is but not they what, keep doing it. This this is not what I'm at. I'm not talking about this, Nathan. Are you? Please, man. John, what if what you're doing is allowing this to keep going on and on? Your attitude, what, your what you, your what perception you is what are you consenting. talking about? Inspire us with something, you know. Give us some good energy or something. You're just bringing weird okay. vibes, and we're very in tune with the vibes that come around. Okay. And you're not okay. So, anything. so my so I my vibe, shows, John. What you're showing mm -hmm. is a lack of sensitivity to the fact Sensi that you've got traumatized humans in here who have finally found a safe place to go and really talk about far out shit and feelings that we probably won't talk to our own family members about. Okay. So, it's, so Nathan, it's a community. Okay. I, okay and, so two things. Number just, one, I'm you just don't know sharing where, where I'm at. I don't need to I, convince I, you. I don't want you believe whatever you want to believe. Nathan, but Nathan, what I'm I have saying no, is there's something wrong here, John. Nathan, I and have none not, of these religious stories make any sense at oh all to explain what's Nathan, going on I have, here. Okay. I have a, I have not even been trying to discuss all that. B, I'm not downplaying your trauma. Okay. I have, I mean, you're like acting like I've never been through anything. Okay. I, I faced death uh, a decade ago on March 4th of this coming year. Okay. I had pretty much everything, all the wealth that I had built, the quote unquote friendships, everybody freaking vanished and left me hanging. Okay. Because they thought I wasn't going to survive. All right. And I, I've been through all sorts of shit. So you can like take the whole you don't uh, care about the people being damaged and such and shove it because I've literally made it the focus of the last decade of my life to help drug addicts and people with cancer and all sorts of other things. That's like the, the side thing that I do to help other folks who didn't have family like I did that came and helped me and pulled me up and helped me get back on my feet again when all my quote unquote friends vanished. Okay. So let's just take this back. All right. I understand that you have issues with Christianity. I wasn't even trying to get down, go down that rabbit hole. All right. I was just having baseline conversation with you. Now you're now claiming that I'm somehow not wanting to listen to you and engage when, and, 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 and not talk about far out shit and have things that help people. Well, let me just correct you. I don't have a problem with Christianity. John, uh, I don't. Nathan, Nathan I'm not I have done a talking. Problem here. with everything, bro. But you're misrepresenting yeah. me, and I'm not going to stand yeah. for that. I'm, I, I'm either going to get off the call, or I'm you're not gonna, misrepresenting. Let me just say, I'm not misrepresenting you, bro. Out of here. I, I I don't have a problem with Christianity, John. I have a problem with every single thing about this entire reality, <sighs> including all of that. Everything about this reality I'm suspicious of now. Every religion, every sacred text, it all looks like a huge trap because as much wisdom as we got, we're still here. Dying and suffering. 
And God knows what these assholes got planned now for us to go through. We, like I said before you joined this uh, chat, we, we, you know, we've had it pretty lucky. This Look through the history of this world. They will bring horrors down on the people. They've done it. The history is nothing but blood. And that's coming again. I'm sure we had a little respite. Well, now they're gearing up and we see where this is going. We don't know. See, I think it comes down to one question. Are we in good hands here? Are we not? I don't know if we're in good hands. You believe that we are ultimately with this ultimate God. I wish I had your faith, John. I just don't have it anymore. Okay. Now so I'm I... trying to find out what's real and how we either take over this reality and change it from a monstrous nightmare or we find an escape. And if we can't escape in our bodies, how do we escape at that moment of death so we don't get recycled back in here if that's what they do and i'm not saying that's what they do but it looks like that there's a lot of evidence that says that possibility is a strong one not that i'm saying that's the truth i don't know what the truth is i'm just seeing what i see and the perception of self out of a reality cult called earth and if there's changes in the Bible, when lion and the lamb changed to wolf, I knew something was wrong here. That's not supposed to happen in a reality that is what we've been told it is. So to me, the stakes are high. We don't have time to convert people to Christianity now. Because the problem with it and the reason most people are staying away from it is it offends the magical child that this father did that to his son. How could you ever trust him as your God? That's what that's the internal thing that's going on. And the fear God and all that. That's why. So to me, if you're if you are not a real God and you're a fake God or an alien God and you want to deceive the human species and pretend you're their god you would you would you would do things that were inhuman so to me i'm i have a problem with everything here i lived on a hindu ashram i got problems with that shit too now <laughs> i just think we have to start clean slate begin again day one Everything, pretend everything we've been told is a deception and let's start now and figure this thing out. A clean slate, fresh ideas, no belief systems clouding our intellect and our logic and our reasoning. That's where I th think we got to get to. Otherwise, you got a billion Christians going to create an Armageddon future for us. If the human has the power to create our reality, that's a lot of people creating the same reality. It's yeah, a script it's, it of doesn't... destruction, death, and turmoil. I don't want to go down that route, but if you sign up with that creator God, that's your that is your Christian that's in there. You can't deny that's there. And all the Christians yeah, waiting on the Antichrist destruction to destruction and death and horrible pl pestilence like, they... and plagues and how bad it's going to get. And But you know what I mean? Fear me. I mean, that's no God I want to worship. Way beyond that shit. It's a horror no show. Offense. Oh. It's a playbook. So they're playing out Basically. the book of Revelations on our, and it's like this it, is the sad thing is that people like when this playbook is played out and it matches the playbook, aka the Bible, they ex get excited about it. Something bad happens that correlates, like oh, they all get excited and just give it more energy and more energy for them to keep going on this playbook. And tell me something that's good in there. Oh, we're gonna be floating around with God with streets of gold. Whoop do fucking do? You know what I mean? It's a bunch of BS. I'm, I'm the religion thing. It's okay. So I, I actually, I didn't come in here to debate religion. I wasn't even on my mind. You guys obviously have some underlying pain that's obviously being expressed here. The 
I mean, I mean, I was having to try and trying to have basic well, called, we're unprogrammed and we're phrasing reality. Okay. And you think that anybody who uh, doesn't agree that all of that is completely wrong must yeah. still be programmed and they can't actually think for themselves, which is ironic given people this. that are Christian and they're with that, but they would never act the way you are. I wouldn't have ever expect how, it from them. How how am I how am I some acting of the ways that? you're you're acting at some points kind of how, how, how am I asking asking basic logic questions? <clears throat> no, is it was that, it that, was how's that acting? Uh, I'm just saying, like I don't judge people based on their religion or anything. I judge them based on the contents of their character. So right. So everything that's been coming out of both of y'all's mouths about me has been directly correlated with the fact that oh, you believe in Christi the Christian God, therefore. Okay, so I haven't been f like attacking you guys back. I've just well, been asking. You, I've you been trying just to came into a, a firestorm because you brought it up, and we're getting in deep conversations about you, that. You, you, okay, you brought you, the I, wrong I, topic I, to the wrong. You, you, I didn't. I didn't bring the topic. You asked me what I what my positions were. I said, "Oh, I think I think this," and I plan on just going on a general conversation. You guys have been the ones that have been going on about this forever. Okay. I have said multiple times now that this was never my intent, nor did I even want to continue to discuss it. Okay. Okay. You're now continuing cool. on about this and piling on and on and on and acting like I'm somehow the one bringing all these negative vibes, right? You guys have flipped out over this. Okay. <laughs> dude, let's, you're so let's... condescending. Dude, this... John, I didn't wow, flip dude. out. Are you kidding? I've just you been practicing are... on you what I'm going to say to your Christian God when I finally get a face to face with this evil ass. <laughs> Okay, cool. That evil so, alien piece of shit who pretended gotcha. to be our god. That's so. I, I I know what I'm dealing with here. I know. I've been. I've been there. <laughs> I know a conscious. Oh, wow. I know the consciousness to which I am speaking. I'll put it that way. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I, have, I look at the man in the over. mirror. When this, I look for a savior, I look at the man in the fucking mirror. That's what I'm looking for. That's who I want to get to know. Not some uh, exterior God that King James and all man? these clowns gave me to worship. Okay. So I look in the mirror for saving. That's the difference between me and you. So what? Okay. So do you think that you're the ultimate being? I am who I'm looking for. I am my own savior. That's what I look at. I'm trying okay. to get to know my that, damn self. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. We, we all, we all need to get to know ourselves. I mean, that's part of my personal mission in life is to know myself, be confident in myself and to ultimately I'm do everything I can. Body self. I'm talking I, about I'm, my, my true self. Dude, I'm, that that's literally what it's literally what I'm talking about, man. I'm talking about the inner core of who you are, not the physical, not, not the material. I'm talking about, the spiritual and the your conscious being who you are right i mean th this the shell that i'm in is nothing it's a blip in my ultimate existence i'm in a freaking avatar right now that's it that's all this body is who i am is not how like, do I don't you know do... that though john how do you know for sure that's an avatar 100 percent. how can you know that well i mean if you want cartesian certainty then we can't operate. We, we can't believe anything. We can't. We can't have any conclusions, right? We need to be solipsists if we can't, think, if we have to know 100, think, everything hundred percent. The right? problem is, I think because I, I say I don't know what any of this is. That's why I'm here, trying to find out. You're okay. coming in with knowledge that you believe is true, so that you do kind of know what's going on. And I'm saying I can't trust you with that. Because there's too much at stake here. If you're wrong, you you don't have you've been to... deceived by something. Okay, let's say that I'm wrong. What does that? How does that? Or why should that stop conversation and basic back and okay, forth? Do and discussion? you have a plan to stop, John? Do you have a plan to stop human suffering? Do you have an idea of how we can do this? How we can stop what's going on here? Do you have any plan or idea? Do, do I have a sol an ultimate solution for like peace on yeah, earth? Is that yeah. what you're asking me? I mean, I don't know the end of human what... suffering and, and abuse in this realm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's been being uh, questioned for 
all of recorded history. So I don't think me not having necessarily having a hundred percent answer to that is like a fair uh, thing to be requesting of me. Right. So now do I think that certain things can be done? I E uh, could we engage in higher levels of education? Could we have uh, put barriers in place for the oligarchy that is currently taking over the freaking planet and raping and pillaging? Like, yeah, there's all sorts of things we could do to potentially mitigate stuff. But I mean, I don't think it's reasonable to ask me the question of like, what's my solution to like stop all suffering on earth? Like that's questions been posed by every philosopher that's ever <laughs> walked this planet. I mean, would you, I mean, do you disagree with me on that? You no, know, because we're, that's what we're doing here. We're all throwing out ideas of how to stop this suffering here. Putting forth okay. things that maybe we've never tried. Like I said, what if what it's going to take for us to end this thing, the suffering in this realm, is that we have to reject everything we've ever been told about God. Any human concept of God that's thousands of years ago. What if they were wrong about that? And that was an old ancient consciousness that, that created an old ancient, ancient God concept. And that is what is destroying us. The clinging okay. to that thing. You wouldn't eat the food they ate in the conditions they ate it in. If I could okay, send so you in a time Nathan, machine Nathan, back Nathan, there 2,000 Nathan. years ago, okay, you'd so let, Okay, Nathan, so let's say that... And these are the people you believe have told you Nathan, the true God Nathan, is. This is what focus, I'm saying. Go focus. to who these people were. Let's say... Nathan, okay, listen. Let's say that your position is correct, all right? And we just need to reject all religions. Fair enough, all right? What do we... Uh, what should no, we do? No, I'm there? saying I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying why don't we give it a shot? Let's try it and see if it works. What if we all okay. did that and then all of a sudden I think it's the, things started the first to step get beautiful. To start things, and I think that once we tap into our abilities of we were free, you know, and uh, uh, once we tap into our natural abilities of intuition, that will tell us the next step. But we obviously need to unlearn and deprogram ourselves. And then all the steps will follow like dominoes, but we can't be like, okay, you know, we're about to drop the second domino, but what about the hundredth? Like, no, let's just drop the second one and then we'll get to the rest. Wait, wait, wait my internet? Okay, we're good. Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm not really against the points necessarily that you're making. I'm just saying that the, I mean, if we are programmed then it necessitates deprogramming, which we reversing the logic to figure out what is true. Correct. Okay. We're not going to go there. This is, you get what we are saying. We don't need to break that down. It's just a simple statement and that's it. You know what I mean? I, I do. I'm not unlearn I'm, and deprogram ourselves, but that's not deprogram all the logic and, you know, no, 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 no. I'm talking about how we do it. Okay. You're at, you're saying we need to do these things. I'm saying, okay, it, let's assume your position is true. Then what we need to do. It's like, it, all right, I'm, I'm going to give you an, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Are you talking, uh, Nathan? Is it we don't hear you? Well, let me get back. No, uh, -uh. no. Oh, oh, We're yeah, Nathan, you you cut out, buddy. Uh, you said you were going to give him an example, and then we didn't hear anything. I don't know. I just think if we think okay. we got the answer, we're doing ourselves a disservice. Oh, did I? Well, the example I was thinking of, it's like with the Mandela effect. When that first happened, I was like, oh, my God, this is great. The Christians are going to see the changes. They don't see the changes in their Bible or they deny they're there. To me, that consciousness then that they're so, they're so full with the Holy Spirit, how come they can't see those changes? That that never has never made sense to me. Well, you would let's think ask, they would know wait, their Bible wait. and know, know that those. 
but they don't think there can be any supernatural alterations, I guess. Well, does does he see the Mandela effect with the Bible? We haven't even asked him. I'm really curious, actually. Okay, listen, gentlemen, I am not here to go down this whole discussion. You guys are not responding to anything that I have to say. Um, well, it, it's all turning it into this like nitpick. We, we to, and... we, we're just rebooting. Have do you see <laughs> okay. the Mandela effect Bible uh, changes? Yes or no? Okay. Oh, oh. So now we're gonna do yes or no questions, but you guys can't answer anything I say. Yes or no? And, and the basic, just, basic just logic. Like flow? I, I mean, I, I, give me an example. Give me a direct example that you're referring to. Oh my god! Come on. Oh, no, give like me a direct Mandela example effect? of what. You're... Yeah. Yes. Give me a direct example. You're asking me if I if I know about. Go. Um, it's, people throw the verses in there. The the trespass and trespasses isn't in the um what you call it anymore. Okay, so uh, here, the lion me, and the me, lamb. Hang, hang on, are you are you are lamb. you asking? Hang on, are you asking me? Have there been different translations? Have there been things deleted, added, and swapped? Is that what you're asking? No, me? I'm talking about no, the Bible supernaturally changes changing in the Bible. All oh. versions. What have you heard of this supernatural you know of the supernatural change? I, I I know what the Mandela effect is, but supernatural changes in the Bible. What are you What are you referring to? I mean, you have it's like, are you? Are you need to give Isaiah specific 11, examples? Six. Isaiah eleven six. I'm talking, the lion shall lay down with the lamb. I, I know. I know the verse. Oh, I know oh, the oh, lion, the lamb, oh, wolf, oh, and the goat. All that stuff. I get all that. I'm saying, are you asking me if I? recognize that in various translations there are different versions of things yes no. but that's not what we're talking about the this change happened in the 1611 king james there I, is I no edition of that bible anywhere in existence in any museum going back hundreds of years that had the lion shall lay down with the lamb so where did we get that from okay. it doesn't exist okay. it never has in this current reality okay. we're in what the? F oh, okay. Go hang to on. Isaiah eleven six. I, I, I know, I, dude. I know God. the verse. I'm okay. Hang on, hang on, bro. You need to, you need to, like, slow this down. Okay. Are you saying that the lion has not laid down with the lamb? Therefore, this, okay. So. Number one, uh, whether we're, whether or not it was added in and uh, wasn't in previous versions is irrelevant to the context. It has it's, never been in it, there, it, ever, it, in the history oh. of any Bible going back to 1611. Uh, okay, again. So You have if, to understand the concept. Uh, oh, my. Dude, dude, you need to focus, okay? No, I'm I am, focused. Believe me. I am not. Okay. It's so a are supernatural you, change. We cannot explain how this is possible. Yeah, why are there really old Bible, hundred year old Bibles have changed? Why are there stained glass images of the lion laying down with the lamb throughout almost every church in the world? Ancient churches. Why were they? Why does Martin Luther King quote it? The lion shall lay down. It's quoted. It's in movies. It has now never existed in this reality the way everyone remembers it and the way the ancient artists depicted it. In the cathedrals, never existed. It supernaturally changed magically on the page in every Bible in existence at the same time. Okay, so I'm I'm not exactly following what your point is. Are you saying that this is evidence that the supernatural does exist or does not exist? I'm saying it could be it's well to us it's supernatural because we don't know how it's done. Okay. We have no is this technology doing it? Is it a supernatural being doing it? There are some Christians who think it's the uh, Satan doing it or getting setting the stage for the Antichrist. You know, they've interpreted the few that see it have interpreted it that way, and they have forums and videos and everything. You can go oh, okay. learn a lot. They'll document it. With okay, I, I, I get all this. But, I, I'm not okay. I, I get all that. I'm not following. What is your point? Uh, like, what is this? Like, okay, fine. I, I'm not. I'm not arguing about this with you. I'm not disagreeing what with you I'm, that it, it, it I'm exists. I, I'm asking you what this what, what the is the point, point, the point in relation is, to right, I'm telling you. Go ahead. The point is reality's not supposed to change like that. 
that tells me there's something wrong here. That makes me suspicious of what this is I'm in. That's so full of hell and suffering. What I was told was a natural organic reality should not be able to change that way. So to me, that's Toto pulling the curtain back and revealing some cosmic asshole standing behind it. Okay. 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 So, um, uh, all right. So if God created the universe, is it logical to follow that God can make modifications if necessary? <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm just, this is a basic question. I'm not saying that's, you know that, what, that's what you, happened. I'm you asking you God that's if, gonna make, oh okay, my God, dude, right, can you listen. answer questions? Can you ever if, answer questions, Nathan? If you, <laughs> can you ever answer a question? Yes or freaking no, dude? Yes or no? You ask the question. I'm about to answer it. So answer it yes or no first and then go with your, with your exposition. If you okay? have yes a God no. that can make modifications. Yes or no. It's not a yes or no question. If you have a creator, don't give me a binary choice. See, that's how they do you here. Republic. See, that's a tactic. I, no, no, that's dude, it's a not dark a tactic. Dude, it's, it's not tactic a tactic, dude. To get you dude. to choose one or the other. How no, about dude. I choose neither? Oh, and I tell Nathan, you what I feel. Is the, oh, my God, dude. Is the law of You're non You're telling me uh, does it exist? have a God who can make, oh. mo make changes and edits in a book but won't enter. I can't see it. Okay, dude. That, doesn't that make sense that we have a God that would make a change from lamb to wolf could literally make wow. a supernatural thing like that happen. But then his hands off with the rape and murder and torture of children. If your soul is immortal, there's never going to are you immortal? Be a reality, John, where that's going to make any sense oh, to me at God. all. Okay. All I'm right, sorry. Look, listen, I can't for, go there. Okay, dude. Let, let, let's 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 cancel the entire discussion of Christianity, okay? I was not here for that whole thing. We could be let's immortal just, in it, hell and never no, get God. out of this thing. Dude, I understand that. Every hypothetical is possibly true. Okay? Right? Well, you better, you know... Uh, is it is there Nathan? Is every hypothetical possibly true? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight, John. I, I mean, I've been bringing the laws of logic to the fight, and you're acting like they don't exist. So, like, I mean, I'm not really sure. Where any, you're I'm at this. the point now, to be honest, guys. Any person, any human being that tries to justify this, the suffering that's going on here, going on here as being some divine will from some higher intelligence that supposedly loves us, I cannot, that just, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. And if it's illogical, it has to be a deception. We are going to have to start using reason and our logic and our minds, because that we know okay, we so, have. Right. We don't so, know Nathan, we have do you a creator. We don't know for sure so, we so, have someone out there that do you cares know about us. Nathan, we hope that you know, there is, but we don't know Nathan, for sure. Nathan, do you know for sure that you have a mind? So we have... See you later, dude. Sorry, guys. I had a boot. I have a brain, and I, be, you know, I this is just too much. Sorry, guys. I, I kept them up too long. I just can't. I, I really can't. wanted to. I really wanted to get him with. He said, um, "With this, if the God created the universe, does he or have the right to make modifications?" First of all, what's dangerous is about about that is is that in these books you have you have it written where people are basing their very lives on these words. And it says in this word that he, he will never change. It will never change. And that his word is solid in his bond. And you have all these changes and you have people basing their lives on these lies and these systems of lies. And then he also, he also said something. This is what, this is the reason why I got up here other than the Mandela effect where he talked about <clears throat> where do we begin and when you were talking about programming and deprogramming, well, we start with um, the systems of belief and the systems of uh, manipulation and the systems of lies and the systems of bondage, which re all religions stem from. That's where we start. We start um, thinking for ourselves and like, and he was kind of, he was very condescending 
in his questioning as like, oh, you're looking in the man in the mirror. Yes, you need to look in the man in the mirror because all the reflections of everybody else and all the reflections of these systems that, that we've been told to lean upon and not lean on our own understanding have all failed us and ha have all been proving to keep us enslaved in this mentality. And then um, I'm not going to go there with the Mandela effect because he's already gone, but he was very condescending. I just wanted him to know that he said, does the God of the universe have the right to make modifications in a book that says um, anybody that changes any written word will be, you know, I'm paraphrasing for all those out there, but anybody who changes any word, yodel, whatever, will be um, in danger of the fire pits of hell. So you're being, he was being very condescending and Nathan, I, ha I hold my hat off to you, but um, that's all I have to say. Well, thank you, Sun Kissed. I appreciate the support. You know, I've just been through a lot. I'm coming off a really bad experience here medically and with a lot of pain. So I'm, I'm vulnerable and I'm raw. And that's what he heard. And I want to, and since, you know, every Christian I talk to now, I ask them these same questions and none of them can give me an answer on it because I don't think there is an answer to it. And I'm not saying, I, you know, I, I hope that, I hope that there is, that that is true. You know, I, I used to say, oh, I hope that they're right and that, you know, Jesus is coming. But the way I feel now, I, I don't want that to even be true because I don't want to go to that father of his. I'll go with the son. I trust him. I can, I can vibe with him, but his father, I don't want anything to do with. So if I can just go with Jesus, I'll do that. But I don't trust Yahweh or whoever that was that sent him to the cross. I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. I don't know for sure what's going on here. I try to keep an open mind, but I know what offends my soul and I know what feels true. And I feel that unless it's of love, we've got to be very careful. Yeah, I totally agree. Because and what if we're at the point where we're about to make this evolution? You know, we're going to make this jump into true divinity, which is beyond a human concept or a book or anything that they could. I think they did the best they could with what they knew at the time and what they were working with. They gave us their best version of what God was. Well, maybe that was a reflection, too, of their consciousness and where they were at the time. You know, but I'm just saying for the face of it, that's the issues I have. No, I, I feel where you're coming from. And, and I feel the same way about if you can, you know, like I say, and I'm not trying to be redundant, if everybody has their own path and their own way, and they're walking according to their time. This is my belief and my opinion. This is even earlier when it was stated that we're all on the same path. I strongly disagree with that because there are people who are on a path of destruction, people who are on a path of searching for knowledge, people who are who are on a path of being stagnant and being happy in, in whatever circumstances they are. And I don't agree that we're all on the same path. And so uh, to get back to what you were saying, Nathan, as far as like, God or the God of the Bible um, to send your son down to do I, as a parent, I would, I would, I would jump in front of a, uh, a crushing mountain. I would jump in front of a bullet. I would jump even not just as a parent, even if you see, I see a kid in the street and a car is coming, I'm going to put myself before that little one. Why would I send my son to do my work? And if I'm greater than my son, if I create and hold all power, why can't I fix it? Why do I have to send my child? And how can I watch my baby torch be tortured? You know, and so I totally, I totally get you there. I totally understand stand you there. And I'm sorry for everything that you're experiencing. And um, I'm sending love, hugs, and, and just beautiful vibes to you. I don't have much to say and Thank I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> go on and on, but I just wanted to come up there and, and actually say that to that man. Cause he was just, he was too much and he was very condescending. There's a way to go about um, expressing your beliefs or expressing how you feel or expressing, asking questions. If you're seriously wanting a conversation or wanting a debate, and then there's a way of just being condescending and acting like a know-it-all. So anyway, um, anyway, that's it.
I'm going to get off of here. I just wanted to come up here and, and say that. It's There's so much love and you're absolutely right. If it's not, um, if it's not dealing with love, you it's for me, in my opinion, then it's, it's, it's very, uh, and you just have to use your own discernment, you know, and you can't knock other people, right. people down because they have a different perspective than you. But anyway, thank you. <clears throat> I'm about to start coughing again. Thank you, Ian. And much love to everybody on the panel in the chat. Love you, Sunkiss. Thank you. Um, yeah, for me, I was just like kind of studying the situation, just kind of sitting back is pretty well, i'm glad you let it go ian i'm glad you let it go yeah. because i think what you know how we perceive what just went down i think is good you know we're people may have feel diff, conflicting feelings i we've got to talk about the uncomfortable stuff there can't be a sacred cow we have too much at stake and there's too much suffering going on here to take a chance on something that's a false uh, uh mm. a, a false concept you know, we can't afford that at this point with what they're doing in our reality. This is the real. We're in physical bodies. This is where we're experiencing this. So we 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 have to keep our eye on, on the day to day experience that all of us human beings are having, and fig. And it's important not to just. I just don't think we can afford to wait for help to come if it's us that has to do this. We're just wasting time. It's almost like it's the enemy tries to pull you off your course. So you, you know, we, I think, you know, did the human race get into trouble? Our ancestors, when they reached outside themselves for a higher power, oh, please save me. Was that the fatal mistake? And, and something heard that wasn't human and that came and thought, oh, I'll mess with these beings, you know, they're innocent. They're looking for an authority. They're looking for a creator. I'll pretend to be that very thing for them and put them in my world. You know, I like, we just don't know. So to me, there's enough bad here for me to question anything that would create this, that I'm being told is a divine being. And I mean, this experience here, there's a possibility that what, like you said, Ian, that what created us is not what created this reality where we're having this physical experience. Those could be two separate things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I really get that vibe lately. Um, not lately, but I guess I've always had that vibe, but recently pinpointed it. And um, it's definitely like I could feel it in my bones, you know, like something's just not right. Uh, with this world but you know I've, and a lot of us are just trying to make the best of it you know and i hate to be negative and stuff it's just at the same time a lot of people really feel like this and um we need a place to vent about it and a lot of us are alone we don't have people to talk to and we it's all internal and um, it's important that we um you know put this energy out there and if we're wrong, we're wrong. Whatever the truth is, is the truth. But you got to admit, you know, usually my instincts is right. My vibes is always right. It saved my life many times. Got me out of a lot of situations that I could have been, you know, in some really tough situations where I probably wouldn't have survived. But my intuition always led me on the right way. And my intuition is telling me, you know, exactly what I've been saying. So well, one we, thing we can see the vibe from... So that guy, that his vibe, you can feel the well, vibe. You know, I know you feel the energy you right, know, when different people come on. Let me give you on. an example. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can feel it. It's palpable. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. The one thing I didn't say to him, which most people wouldn't know by the he hearing me talk, there's only one deity I have photographs of in this entire house where I live, and one where the coffee maker is, and one upstairs framed on my wall. And it's Jesus laughing, the artist's rendition of Jesus laughing. So I'm very close to that essence. I don't understand it. I'm not people to follow that. But would I say I'm a Christian? No, but I have a connection to Jesus, whoever he was, who was murdered here. I see him as the, the sacrifice of the magical human child that they then put a religion around. 
-hmm. but I understand him and I'm close to him in a way people might not even imagine. And I feel that he's wanting us to ask these questions because what if that concept has acted like a virus in human consciousness and has done the opposite. Instead of pulling it, later, it's pushed us so much further away, we can't even find it now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you can fear something and it's your creator and your father. That seems, well, this is the being, you know, that had, you know, was going to have Abraham sacrifice his child. And then at the last minute, he steps and says, okay, you don't have to do it. I mean, come on, people. That consciousness of that, whether that's a real being or that's just the consciousness that those humans at that time who were trying to find God related to or you know, we, we just don't know. But I, I think if we continue to cling on to these ancient concepts, we're not going to make it. We just wait forever for a savior to come. Meanwhile, how bad is it going to get here while we wait? So I think you're doing this is this is important that we say we ask these questions and and and. You know, so for a, for a Christian, I would never debate them. I would just ask them that simple question. Please explain to me how that happened. And the ones I've asked, they have no answer. They can't explain it. I can't, I can't vibe with that consciousness. Now, I can, like I said, I see no fault in the sun. Because I have had a near-death experience. I've encountered a being that then tried to manipulate me in similar ways, I'll put it that way. Was I willing to sacrifice? You know, I can see how it happens. And when the being has supernatural powers like this Sam did and can intervene and send messages through music and synchron and all this, you know, you're going to think, wow, this must be God. And that's, in fact, that's who he told me he was. You know, wow. he, he was, uh, I am, he was, I am. Well, I don't like I am. If that's who I am is, he's a dick. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. That's Wait, he not said his a name is guy. I am, like my name is I am. Yeah, I said to I said, "Well, I said how I said who are you?" Now, these questions I would ask in my head. I didn't speak them out loud. I'd have my Pandora's, you know, music app open and I would hit open it to open so out of 200 stations it's going to randomly shuffle my stations and give me a song, right? And so I asked him, who are you? And the next song that played was Neil Diamond's I Am, I Said. Okay. Wow. And so that went on. So he was giving me all this information. And to be honest, where I finally was able to cut loose of this was in understanding that if you take when I was a little kid, when I was a baby, I had a little lamb in my crib that my mother put in there. And his name was Lamsey, L-A-M-S-I-E. Well, I talk about, about Lamsey a lot because I think we have to go back into our early childhood to find out the essence of what who we really are here and what we came with. And a friend of mine, I was talking to him, he said, Nathan, you know, Lamsey is a perfect anagram for Sam Lie. And it was in that moment that it, something snapped and I knew I couldn't trust this being, that he was a liar, a deceiver. Oh, and his plans were elaborate, what he wanted me to do. I refused. You wow. know, but the way they do it is I'm going to give, this is what he said to me, I'm going to give you the lottery so you can help your people. You can help them stop suffering. You will have the financial means to organize them, to fight this battle here. Take it to the front with that you have to have power here. You have to have a war chest or you'll never win this thing. You know, but then I realized, wait a minute. <laughs> because he proved to me he could give me the ticket anytime he chose to. I went through that for about a year with him where he would literally, I would go into four different locations to randomly buy a lottery ticket. And all four people that happened to sell me those tickets were named Sam. 
Wow, that's nuts. And I don't trust him. And if he has that kind of access to this reality and to us, this isn't good. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a being that, that has been described as an old serpent, a dragon. It's a dark, dark consciousness, but incredibly uh, intelligent. Mm -hmm. And has all the data and is going to make their moves based on the current data at all times. So we're dealing with something that knows what it can get away with as well at, at the right time. You know? And can seemingly veil people's <clears throat> consciousness so they can't see what's right in front of their face. That's a supernatural thing. That's either technology or supernatural power that's doing that, that can literally keep people from seeing what we're seeing. And we've seen that with Mandela effect. We've seen that with this whole thing that's happened the last couple of years. They are in a complete lie and delusion and can't get out of it. It's like something did that to them. Mm -hmm. Something doesn't will not want us questioning this reality. That's what I think. I think if we question it, it weakens its power. Just questioning it, just saying, hey, I don't know what's up here, but there's something off here. Just doing that, I think, starts the process. And maybe we have to disengage and detach from this thing so we can be retrieved our consciousness out of this and put into a reality that's going to be a beautiful joyous one where we can grow and reach our full potential and express ourselves without fear of uh, of some sort of violence going or, and then the ultimate which is the death and we don't know what happens then so we're always afraid here yeah it's pretty intense man it really is it's an intense experience for sure I'm with you, man. You said a lot of powerful stuff today. A lot of powerful stuff, man. It was. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm with you I'm on all Drop this. off the call here, but and I really, I really like it. your avatar too, man. I'm. Um, I think that's really cool. I'm getting, you know, good vibe, good energy from that. I really like that. It's yeah, cool. my now see, isn't this interesting? That's at an apartment building in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, probably around seventy, seventy-one. And my mother, my Mormon mother posed me in front of that little, I don't know, is that a Buddha? <laughs> when she took the picture, whatever that little Asian uh, deity yeah. is, I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, I, I have to keep looking at that because I, ha I have to get that little thing out of here. This place is not safe for mm. that Nathan. And that's my essence. So to me, we're fighting to... to and the Gnostic scriptures, the Gnostic writings talk about this, the Dead Sea Scroll, that it would be a mad, the magical human child would defeat the Lord Archon at the end, would be victorious over that, that being in its reality, and that it would be as if that being had never existed, that it would erase everything that it had done to us. And I think that's that's the key. And Jesus said, you have to be like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Maybe that's what he meant. You have to resurrect the, the murdered inner child. Who this reality, either they, ha they have to close up like I had to do and shut down and not feel the fullness of what I felt because it was too painful and too scary. I think that's what we have to resurrect within us, that magical human child that came to this earth, was born through a human mother, and as far as we know, is organic, that feels pain, but that is in a horrific, insane reality. And now that shifts and looks like it might not even be real. Hmm. So yeah, that's why I do that. I, I have to you know, to me, this is this is the time. I think it's coming. You know, when and I say, fill your heart with as much love as you can for yourself. Have empathy for you and what you've been through. Really, and I think it's like you know, catharsis is good. I've been doing a lot of tears, a lot of crying, a lot of 
an old grief. I don't even know where it's coming from, but it's because you weren't safe to even express grief here, especially if you're a little boy growing up in the seventies, you know, this, this, this place. I mean, I, I look at these babies coming in here and they're brilliant and they're beautiful. And then look what happens to us. I don't think we know what a true adult human would actually look like. Cause I don't think that's what we are. I think we're terribly psychology, uh, psychologically arrested development as a human animal. I think the human animal in another environment that was its own, that was safe, I think would look com would be completely different from the way we behave and act and feel and experience. I think if we're in some kind of bondage or captivity, that explains why we have Stockholm syndrome and why we're messed up like we are and all confused and, and conflicted and and aggressive and violent and all of that stuff. You know, this is this is something wrong. And, and I think we know that and that's why it's coming out in, in, mm. in the way that it is. You know, I think the Mandela effect, the changes, all of that have been a knock on the door to prepare. Whether it's to prepare to take over this reality and turn it into a beautiful experience for everybody or to exit the hell out of here. But be ready, whatever it's going to be, because something's coming. I feel it. Me too, man. Um, it has been so many synchronicities lately with different things too. That's like it just like, and what's going on here in the discussion? It's like, man, I feel it too, man, in my bones. I'm not joking. Something's been getting me ready for something big. I don't know what it is, or if it's a personal thing. I don't know, but. Um, at least we're asking the right questions. Sometimes not having the answers is okay, but the questions that we're asking, you know, are really important. And um, not enough people are asking these questions. And if we did, I think things will start falling into place for us. Just the questions, you know, the right questions is important. So. I agree. I think we have to ask these questions as hard as they are. I think we need to relook at what we believe that we've been told by other human beings who are in the same environment we're in. So they're going to be just as messed up as we are. And uh, we don't, we can't sit those, the people who've given us all of these holy books, we can't sit down in front of them and talk to them and test their intelligence or find out if they were insane or were they drunk at the time they wrote. We just don't know what the consciousness was that gave us our path to God. And so far, we it's we still die here. No one's come back and resurrected the dead yet. And so we, so we need to like try to figure out, you know, what's really going on here. Yeah. Well, Ian, yeah. thank you. Well, real thank, quick before you go, everybody. Nathan, I'm gonna um, sign off. You know, yeah. real, we've right before you go. Um, well thanks for coming up here you're always there's always a spot for you i really enjoy when you come up here um you're a great guy and you have great energy and um i really you know a lot of things you say really hits home with me and um but i see you have a stream coming up on your channel yeah i'm uh, All right. i'm gonna do a show with paula on thursday at six o'clock on the youtube channel it's called uh butterfly cluster splendors of the heavens and i'm gonna talk about having for me, just a actual physical location to where, and this is a backup plan. You know, if something were to happen and I die here and I'm in some astral thing and there's some manipulation going on or shady characters or whatever, I'm going to just try to GPS myself to those coordinates at that space and out in deep space. And like I said, even if isn't that isn't even real and there is no deep space and there is no butterfly cluster, at least it gives me an intention which is not mm. what they want for me. You see what I mean? I'm going to bypass them by knowing exactly where I'm going. That's just going to be a refuge point. That's just like a rendezvous. That's just a place to get out of you, to bypass whatever way they can trap you back in, which I think is you not knowing where you're going. I think they use your confusion and your ignorance about what this is to get you back in again. So I, I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to test it. So if that happens, I'm going to try that and just see if I can bypass this. I don't want to come back here again. That's that's a powerful uh, move right there. I really like it. 
I'll, I'll be so tuning what, in for that. So, so, and then again, if, if you if something happens and we all get hit by a meteorite or something in the middle of the night, an asteroid blows us up, and all of a sudden we're in a realm we don't know where we are, but we know we're you know not in our 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 bodies anymore. And if you you know just remember butterfly cluster, it can't hurt. I'm gonna be there. Maybe we'll find each other. You know, like meet up there and then figure out where we're going next. Because this place stinks on ice. I'm sorry. This is there, there's no justification for this whatsoever. It's gone so extreme beyond what is even reasonable into the truly demonic is what this place is. That's why when Sam told me, well, you're in hell. That's what Earth is. Earth, earth dirt, grave. Get it? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to question everything, especially the religions. I have to. And if there is a God, my God, he would have to understand why we have to do this. I think he would think we were idiots if we didn't question all this. And maybe exactly. that's what it is. Will you reject a false god or will you fall for the trick? Maybe that's the lesson we're supposed to learn here. Don't fall for a false god. Find it in yourself. Power yourself. It's you. You, you retain your consciousness throughout this experience. And like a uh, guy on Forever Conscious Research Channel says, three things liberation sovereignty and non-interference not to be interfered with to be able to be a human without all these forces and things you know coming and in our minds and we have to choose when and the devil on one shoulder i mean that's a mess we are a consciousness that is in turmoil here so i'll leave you with that but i am hopeful i am going to see abba voyage in march in london which i can't wait I'll report mm. back on that. I'm sure that's going to be a very interesting experience because we have uh, resurrected beings now performing on stage that aren't even there. <laughs> you <laughs> talk wow, about yeah. a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> How in the hell they've pulled that? It's, uh, it's mind-bending what they've done. I mean, they've literally immortalized that Swedish pop group as avatars who are projected on a stage and look as real as real people in there in front of you dancing and singing. And it's just, I mean, so we can see how we could be deceived thinking something was real and it's not right. That looks human and it's not. So I'm thinking of that too. That may be a clue, you know, what could be going on here, how technology be, could, could be used to, to, to make us think there are people here that aren't. That's on the table too. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Nathan. Thank you, Ian. Appreciate Love you, man. man. Thanks for having too, me bro. on, and I'll I'll join in on a ch chat. Uh, you know, I'm I'm following all your streams, even if I don't chat, I'm listening. I've been following all of them. And but I, I appreciate just wanted, that. You're all I, I called in. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. I understand. Thanks, Bud. Thanks, Nathan. Good night, appreciate everybody. It. Interesting. Um, <laughs> big shout out to Nathan. Um, everyone that joined, I think these guys are gone now, right? Um, that was interesting. Um, I don't really know what to say about today, but hey, you know, it it's just gonna be another classic stream. And, um, we love you, Nathan. Thanks, buddy. You were powerful today, man. I'm extremely powerful, so um yeah very interesting thanks to everyone that joined um lizzo christos um jay phillips nathan i forgot the other guy's name and uh who else joined flow state i don't remember if someone else joined yeah so and everybody in the chat i really appreciate it um yeah so we'll i guess the next thing will be the mandela effect um revolution I and mean, we're still going to be doing that um so we have a possible um interview with brian stavely in the next two weeks so i want to get this mandela effect thing done um you know or a big portion of it done so i want to be going live getting to work with you guys on making this list so uh, we got to get that done in the next like two weeks so we're gonna be working on that next i think we're gonna start just focusing on that now 
Um, aside from that, yeah, that's it. Big shout out to everyone. Thank you guys for being here. You know, we, I, I was really excited about this. I think it went really well. It wasn't what I planned necessarily at all. But, you know, sometimes it's just going to go the way it's supposed to go. And I thought it went well. Um, and uh, we missed some topics or some videos I really wanted to show. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I'm happy with it. And I appreciate everyone that, that was here uh, for this. And uh, we'll definitely keep this one up. And we're going to be backing up everything on Odyssey. <clears throat> Everything's going to be over there as well as my library. If anything ever happens to this channel or me, just know that in the Odyssey link and the bit shoot, I got everything backed up. All this stuff, even the streams I took down, the recent streams I took down, um, they're all over there right now, just so everybody knows. Um, and uh, big shout out to, well, it's not Joe's birthday anymore, but happy late birthday to Joe. Joe Martinez. So. Aside from that, guys, I'm going to shut it down. Thank you guys again. Um, let's see what we got. Yeah, it was a, definitely a big stream. Definitely a lot of a lot of people tuned in. 700, that's pretty good. So um, thanks to April, Lizzo, Bit of Venom, Lizzie, Not a Lizard, Sunkissed, much love. GT1982 and Astrocat. Astrocat. Star C, everyone. Call for Zero. Call for Zero, man. You've been, you got some powerful things um, you're saying in the chat. You always do. It's pretty cool. Flat Sabbath. Anna. JJ is in the house. Orphan Annie. So seven hours. That's cool. We're going to shut down before seven hours. That's a good thing. These long streams, you know. So. Much love, everyone. Shout out to un Unindoctrinated. Everyone sub to each other's channels and all that stuff. Post a link to your channels. And uh, we're out of here, guys. Thanks again. Emilios, man. Thank you, everyone. Much love. You guys have a good day. I'll see you guys on the next one. And um, I appreciate all of you. Much love. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone. Much love.